This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston Cops! Oh! Hello, beautiful people. It is Thursday, November 3rd, 2022, and this dumbass sports show starts right now. Football is happening this evening in the National Football League. Whoa. Yeah. What? The Whoa. Philadelphia Eagles are taking on the Houston Texans. Jeez. Hell yeah. In a Thursday night football matchup on Amazon Prime. What do you say? What's going on? What about the other Did you hear one? how much better that sound uh, as opposed to the Philadelphia birds taking on the Houston cows? Male cows, ones with the steers. Man. Could you have imagined how dumb that would have sounded if we would have had to do that the rest of the season? And we were set in our ways. We were going to do as such. But the good people at NFL Films. Took a conversation to the people at the NFL, went to bat for us, came back this morning with a phone call and said, hey, that little dust up that just happened just a couple days ago, mm -hmm. please move along. Understand that the NFL, the media, its partners what? are all going through an interesting time right now. We're on the Oregon Trail mm -hmm. for this digital age, this social media age, this sports gambling age, this independent show age, this new media age. Thank you, Draymond. Thank you, Draymond. And LeBron and everybody for showing us how to do it all. Thank you, but God. in this new age, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to have to happen. <laughs> we happen to be near the front of said Oregon Trail in which people are going. We are lucky to be here. We are not the first. We are certainly not the first, but we are in the earlier stages of a relationship between the NFL and a digital platform, a social media platform, an independent platform, but one that has enough uh, money. Shout out to all of our sponsors, including FanDuel, the right. largest, of course. But let's not forget about 5 Hour Energy, SeatGeek, right, Robin, right. and the beautiful people that watch every single day with our relationship with Google and WWE right, and right, ESPN. Right, right. And the Google deal with Google is literally with nobody there, just the algorithm. They just send us a Thank check. Thank you, algorithm. And, and we appreciate the algorithm and everything like that. So the NFL NFL having to navigate those waters for the first time, us being near the front of that entire thing having to happen with rights, with sports gambling, with who has what, who doesn't have what. Uh, I can understand now how there would be a confusion because you would expect that if you're thinking about just normal humans, but I think we all seem to think the highest of people that are put in positions of power in very powerful companies. So this is something that I've learned as I get a chance to peek behind a curtain in a lot of different companies, a lot of different categories of companies. You know, there's a lot of incredibly talented to people at a lot of positions in a lot of places. But there are also people who maybe don't understand the current world they're in that are in a powerful spot because of how good they were in the previous world of the media world. So they're trying to learn it just alongside everybody else. And if you think about your mom, your grandma, your grandpa, your grandpa, an uncle who's maybe a little bit out trying to figure out the whole world, they're trying to do the same thing while also trying to maintain a standard for all of their partners. I can understand that now that I was kind of explained that. I wish that there would be a little bit better, but now we're allowed to say the National Fucking Football League yeah. has a big fucking game this evening. And I saw a lot of people on the internet tell me, and not a lot of people, obviously a much smaller amount of people than the people that want to bat for us. And we appreciate you on the internet letting the NFL and old Commissioner Goodell understand, who I assume had no idea this was happening. No, <laughs> his mentions start getting flooded. He yeah. said, all right, I'm going to do my one once a day check of Twitter. You mm -hmm. know, They tell me I shouldn't do this. I'm taking a longer shit today. I am going to check in on Twitter to hear what our NFL fans are doing. He gets through one scroll. Oh, you handled this terribly. Oh, same old. It seems like Roger Goodell uh, looking at his Twitter yeah. account while taking a shit. Uh, Roger, I like peanut M&Ms too. Oh, like. Right. Love this All guy. Right. Love Let me scroll down. Why didn't you fucking fire Dan Snyder and what's your punishment? Oh, <laughs> tough day. All right. At Pat McAfee show, you are fucking him over. Pat McAfee, why are you doing this to Pat? You hate Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee is a nominee for your Hall of Fame, you fucking asshole. What did I, what did what I do? Happened? What the fuck did I do? And I appreciate it. And I even said, hey, Kamish, this is happening in your league. I may or may not have sent a couple of text messages to billionaires who might have a say or a stake in the league saying, hey, this is your league yeah. that this is happening in. So I have to be a little bit more understanding. I think we all do. But we are very appreciative and grateful that we're in a position that we're in to learn and go through these hurdles together with the NFL. We will adapt as they will adapt. And we'll go forward highlighting the best sport in the best league of all time in the way that we're doing it. 
literally for the last three and a half years yep. until mm -hmm. this week on a Monday, whenever that information got dropped out of nowhere, which miscommunication, I think the timing of that a little fucked up too. You would expect that'd be a little bit better if old media or new media. Nonetheless, we appreciate the NFL Films people for going to bat for us, and we appreciate the NFL letting us call them the NFL again. Thank you so Hell much. Hell yeah. Thank you, NFL. I'm happy we're able to put our swords aside. I? Yeah. Because I was on. ready. I mean, this has happened with the NFL social media department, who in... I'm not even getting into that whole game. Social media people right now are bamboozling these olds oh, who have yeah. no idea what social media is, but they're getting paid a lot of money to run these people's social media. And there's, they're literally their own bosses because there's no account. Of, they can do whatever the fuck they want because all the olds that are in positions of power that could potentially do something for it, they go, oh, you know better than I do. If they're, which is probably right. Yeah. But also. Is it right? Is, right. You, you know? So the social media department over there at NFL, we've got, obviously they blocked me and restricted me from their Instagram before. Yep. They said it was an accident. They said this. It happened so numerous times You said times dude. Ago. You can't yeah. say yeah, dude. Yeah, you can't say dude. Like it. all those things. So, I mean, there has been multiple little semi-battles here mm -hmm. with the NFL. I will assume there will be more, but the overall goodness of the relationship, I think, outweighs any of the little tiffs. So we appreciate being past this. But we'll be ready to fucking... Ten hut oh, yeah. if I have to. Oh, you know what right. I mean? Go ahead, Tone. Can I? I think he turned that helmet around one half of the hammer Hell down. Yeah. Done. Hell yeah. Cowboys, Tone Diggs. Wow. Show there that. You go, Tony. Show Love it. it. Show Woo. Seven and two the rest of the year. I doubt that. Uh, <laughs> the host of Everything DB is hanging out with us here. The host of Man to Man podcast. Nine year NFL vet played corner. Uh, nickel. Safety. Right. Right. Probably could have played any other position that he wanted to because he's so athletic, except for basketball yesterday yeah, or golf. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Darius Butler. Hey, 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 I'm glad you were able to rectify that in the league. It's big time. It was a big oh, call. Where's uh, Todd Law? I'm going to get Todd Law back up. Yeah. No, nah, I'm not ready yet. I just don't forgive him. No, I enjoyed the path fall, actually, but I'm not ready. <laughs> I'll do it later. Maybe tomorrow or next week. It did happen like 10.30 this morning. We're mm -hmm. live at noon Eastern, 10.30 mm -hmm. Eastern. Have the call. I'm going in that call not know it. You know, I'm, I'm going in that call. Not, there's been a lot of things said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just well, like that other call earlier it, in the week. Yeah, there's there was a lot. Of, there's been a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of a lot of reaction too. Yeah. You know, because the NFL is at the top of the mountain. So anything they do that is seemingly stupid, which this certainly was. Sure. Mm -hmm. Just why? Like I'm the only one that is allowed to say and do like. I'm not going to have somebody tell me, oh, you shouldn't say that. Like, you shouldn't say everything that is happening behind the scenes. I'm like, <laughs> well, if I don't, then what am I? It's not our show. Then it's not really what our show is. Like, I feel like being transparent is kind of a part of my thing. Like, mm -hmm. that's the only reason why the show, I think, kind of exists. So I'm going to have to talk about it, especially because we have a Monday Night Football game, and we have to cover it. If we didn't cover it, it would be very weird. And it's not good for you guys or the show. So I'm going to have to cover it. How am I supposed to have those hand drawings uh, and the graphics and not point out, oh, here, to celebrate Halloween, yeah. we dressed our graphics up as if we're in an elementary show. Like, oh, yeah. I, I don't know how I would have been able to do it. So just the, the decision to have that happen, I think, is very dumb. But anybody, anytime somebody sees the NFL do something dumb that is of a bigger publication, I mean, there's Sports Illustrated articles written yeah. about mm -hmm. which I did not expect. Cool. I appreciate Sports Illustrated, the author. I should know your name. I apologize. I only saw clips of it. My wife read it. Actually, I didn't even read it, but she read it. She was like, hey, Sports Illustrated just wrote about your whole thing. So, so I appreciate the author that went to bat. There was numerous publications around the world that wrote about it. So it was gaining a lot of steam that mm -hmm. I did not necessarily... Um, like call need don't need or expect. or expect or want you know it wasn't like i was just kind of talking through our show kind of handling our shit and i've had this happen with the wwe where i'm just doing our show reacting in real time yeah, yeah i'm just doing the show i'm saying something from my standpoint and then there's something written about what i said and then it all of a sudden it's like hey why'd you uh i'm like well if, if we think about at the time it happened an hour and a half i was like yeah right yeah. before the show i was told i can't do it <laughs> so our show is different in that avenue there was a lot of people that jumped on the story. We appreciate you going to bat for us. We appreciate you taking our side. And whether you're actually on our side or just like, ah, we can attack the NFL because of this, mm -hmm. either or we appreciate the kind words, and it feels like we're back on the right path, which is good news. But yeah. there was some dumb shit that I think happened. Well, and given the way the first call ended, I don't know if I necessarily expected you know things to be rectified so soon because, like you said, hey, you got your marching orders, and we've been ready to go. We've well, been ready to go that. for a while. I appreciate that. And we would have locked in. I think we're stubborn enough to have, you know, like Dan Snyder. You know, sure. like I, yeah. I think we would have been stubborn enough to not mention a team name. Like, I think we would have got Paffle over. Mm -hmm. I think the Paffle would have been how we would have discussed the 
uh, NFL. I think we would have been able to naturally do that. I don't think it would have been as fun of an existence. No. You know, no. Like, I, I don't think the shows would have been as fun. I mean, you like to bury people. Going you, to you, war you're is called the best. For like, yeah, you enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily love it. Sure. I, I, I'd rather just be good vibes, good times, have a good bu- have a blast, a little mental vacation in the mm-hmm. afternoon or the morning, wherever the hell, or I guess in the evening if Why? you're ever in Europe watching, mm-hmm. where just a little mental vacation. So I don't necessarily love the, like, let's go to war, but sometimes you got to fucking stay. Sometimes you got to be like, no, like that is not right, and I'm thankful we did it this time, and I'm happy it's over, and I'm happy they saw the same way. Especially when you're in the right. It'd be one thing if you're, you know, going to war for no reason, and you're maybe in the wrong, but when you are clearly in the right, and you have basically done nothing wrong, it's like, okay, well, I don't have a choice. This has kept me up a little bit at night, because I've been so confused about it all, and there's been a lot of conversations with myself about like, nah, you're right, though. You're right, though. You will rarely see me bring any negativity into my life or at, at all unless I am 100% in the belief that I'm right. Other people might think I'm wrong, but in my eyes, I have a reason, and I would be completely okay with explaining it, and I think my reason is good enough if you were to tell your reason to beat your reason. that If you're going to hear me get loud, ever, just for the future, if you're going to stick around with us for a while while we're a show, while I'm a human that's in the public eye before I disappear, which is going to be awesome, I'm going to become so good at golf, <laughs> oh, yeah. and my beard is going to be incredible. You might see me on that Champions Tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You might see Darius, too, if he learns how to make a putt, well, mm-hmm. if that ends up yeah. happening. Sure. But if you ever hear me really go, no, just no, you might think I'm wrong. I am very confident in why I feel the way I feel, and I assume everybody feels that way. But just judging me going forward, if you hear me get a little, there is a, I have a pretty good explanation. I think our people know that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people said that to Troy Vincent. You know, on mm-hmm. his Twitter account, too. Mm-hmm. He was catching them straight. Yeah. Because I added him in the original because he's former player that's there. Right. That too. Yeah, he's, get fo- it. he's former player there. It's like, hey, man, I'm trying, like, I feel like I'm part of the, am I not a part of the, mm-hmm. I'm paying you guys, and I'm a part of the, well, that's the big and thing. you're attacking me. Yeah. It's like. Hall of Fame nominee. Just a nominee. Come exactly. on. That's awesome. Forever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That, that can be said forever, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's not worthy. But remember. <laughs> Don't, not hey, warranted. You didn't I didn't. I didn't make no. the decision. I, I didn't make the decision. I got a text from um, Mike Cyphers, former punter of the Chargers. He beat the Indianapolis Colts in a playoffs game, and that got me drafted the next year. He had like ten punts, like maybe seven of them inside the ten or something like that. Oh, he had like a sixty-yard average or something. It was in a wild card or a divisional against Peyton and them. Yeah. And next year I got drafted. So they got rid of Hunter Smith. I get drafted the next year. Then we play the Chargers, I think, that year. And uh, in warm-ups, I'm watching him warm up. I'm standing next to him. And he's hitting a ball that I've never seen <laughs> come off of my foot before. <clears throat> so it was like one of those. And I think he was maybe – Justin Snow, our long sniper, said that this – Cyphers was doing that to me on purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't think he was. I think he was just hitting bombs like, hey, you just so happen to be here. But, like, watching that ball, like, motivated me, made me work because I felt like he had a fucking massive leg, which I thought I had. Then I see his, and it's a lot bigger. And he was with the Chargers when Andy Lee was with the Niners, and then Leckler was with the Raiders. So three California punters all probably worthy of the Hall of Fame all at the same time out there. So Cypher sent me a text congratulating me on being nominated, and I know – that while Cyphers was typing up that text, he was thinking, this is fucking bullshit. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so I like let Cyphers know that I, too, think it is absolute <laughs> bullshit. You should be in there long before me. You helped me by alphaing me in front of Indianapolis Colts fans. I'm just fucking watching this ball. I'm like, I've never seen a ball do that before. So while he texted me, I appreciate you for texting me, but we, but we know. Okay? You and I both know. You should be in there. Uh, you should get nominated. Not a lot of punters do get nominated. A punter went into the Hall of Fame recently, which is a big deal. He has since passed away. Mm, yeah. Rest in peace to Ray Guy. Uh, thank you for your contributions to the punting community. I think he was the first guy that really started turning balls over, like uh, spiraling balls and really on a consistent basis bombing them. So I think that changed the entire strategy of what people are looking for in punters going forward. He uh, obviously hit the uh, Jumbotron in the Superdome. Uh, that's a big... That's a hard thing to do back then. So he really uh, blazed the trail in the punting community. Rest in peace. Uh, I got to meet him, have a beer with him one time. We had good conversations, I thought. He picked me not to win his award. He mm-hmm. picked somebody else. Nonetheless, Hall of Famer passed away in the punting community. Not a good day. Where did he go to school? Uh, Southern Miss, I believe. Who else went there? 
Well, <laughs> yeah, good program down there. Brett yeah. Favre is all. Oh, yeah, that's exactly. right. Same. When I asked where he went to school, it was a genuine question. I did not know we were about to walk into this. Well, I, I had I, no I, idea. <laughs> he said Southern Miss. I had no clue where Ray Guy went to school. I mean, it's kind of crazy how everything comes back to Favre. Isn't Confirmed. It? I mean, we've been trying to ignore it trying to. ever since, <laughs> for a while. you know, but it's somehow, trying he, to. you know, he kind of just finds his way in whenever he wants. All but. right, let's talk about, um, let's talk about what's going on in the world. Bradley Chubb has signed an extension with the Miami Dolphins worth $119 million, 63.2 million of that guaranteed. Obviously, this is a conversation that had to have happened before the trade was made from the Broncos to the Dolphins. Remember, when he got traded from the Broncos to the Dolphins, Tyree Kill was playing Fortnite live on mm -hmm. Twitch. He was about to grab a big, fat, blow-up pig mm -hmm. yeah. to drop into an island <laughs> yep. to kill yep. other cartoon characters, I guess. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. I don't know. It sounds like a blast. Sounds like a good time. He did an evil laugh. Welcome to Miami Chubb. They pay Tyreek Hill. They have Waddle on the team. Those are two elite, elite players. They have Tua, who seemingly can make that team much better. Yeah. Now they're investing on the defensive side as well in a big way. Uh, Darius Butler, you are obviously a Miami Dolphins fan. Yep. Always have been, always mm -hmm. will be. Sure. Chubb coming down, what does that do for that defense? Extending him to a long-term deal before he's even played a single down for you. Much like what the Broncos did with Russell Wilson. Yeah. However, that's going to work out. Has happened, has happened in the past where it's worked. But this is an interesting move. I assume this was a part of Chubb's request. And what does this do for the Dolphins' defense, yeah, you think? They did it on offense with Tyreek. Brought him over, paid him. It had to do it with Chubb, too. This is a premium position. He's uh, obviously a young player going into his prime. And he helps. he's going to help the whole team help that defense tremendously, man. Tua's been doing his thing, obviously. But those receivers, Chubb, man. Wilson. Got Wilson, too, the running back. So, Making moves. Man. I think the Dolphins are moving. Oh, they yeah. are grooving. They're spending. Stephen Ross, what do he make? Fifty million or whatever on that uh, F one race he had dinner. He said he made more than he would have made off season from that one weekend. So probably quite a bit. So yeah. more than so that. Made yeah. more, more than more than fifty. 50 yeah, for sure. like Five hundred million. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Chris Greer, man, Jim, Woodland, and Dylan. He caught a lot of heat. Obviously, letting uh, B flow go. Um, and Kyle Van Noy. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they came. Mm -hmm. They came after that. But you know, he's turned these those three first round picks now into Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. That's pretty and good. Chubb, so. And yeah. that's what uh, Trey Lance was mm -hmm. drafted for yep. with the Niners. And who knows how that story ends? Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Who knows how the Trey Lance story ends, where it ends, how it ends. We don't have a clue. But the Dolphins have certainly flipped those picks into great moves. And in the great moves, they paid the money. I guess they paid Tyreek yeah. Hill, too, before mm -hmm. he even took her down. Yep. Yep. So this is the Dolphins saying, hey, we need a, we need a game wrecker on offense. We need a game record on defense. We're going to pay him. Mm -hmm. Stephen Ross says, here's the cash. You can use a little cash over cap, 60-some million. Stephen Ross is going to have to put that money into escrow. Who knows how much is in signing, how much is in salary. I'm happy for Chubb getting out of that Broncos organization, getting down to Miami, a team that seems to be a contender. And that AFC East better look out, huh? Yeah. 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 AFC Truly. East better look out. Yeah. Uh, so you think the Broncos were just never going to give him this money then? Like, it makes no sense. They just drafted him in, what, the top five a yep. couple years ago? Like, and they're this – I mean, so this is always the move, right? If it's a high draft pick going into the final year or in the final year of their contract, and they don't see a future with said player uh, in right now, the move has been, uh, we'll trade him because we're not going to pay him. It's like, well, you still don't get him for a year. Like, you're kind of just I, – I think that's not really being talked about. They're always like, well, we don't want to pay him. Like, Chase Claypool, I, there's going to be a conversation about money at some point. Who else? Somebody else got traded with one year left. Hawk. Ha Hawkinson just got traded with one year mm, left on yep. a contract after this year. And everybody's like, well, the Lions don't want to pay him. The Lions don't want to pay him. It's like, well, fucking, you still have him on your team. Like, yeah, he's, a very he's good. still on your team. I, I don't Young, think – Young, too, going into his prime. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm of the thought I'm paying those players. Yeah. Especially at certain positions. Thank like, you. pass rusher, you, you pay a pass rusher. Um, so you what know, do you think – you know, more of a little question there, but not. The, I don't think in the modern NFL. I think tight end's a good position. If you have a game changer, I think so. But pass rusher always going to be always, the deal. Yeah. Why do you think? Do you think just they have that much of a disagreement on their scouting on how effective or how important a player is? Like, how come one team won't pay a guy that isn't that good, and then another team that is good will pay the guy? Like, is it a know. difference in opinion? Is it pretty basic on who can play, who can't play, or why? Why do you think sometimes this it's happens? It's just situational, I guess, and they know as you know they don't have to make certain the highest paid corner in the league. They just made um, they just paid Justin Simmons uh, their safety, I believe, coming into this year maybe or last mm -hmm. year. So I just gave a shit ton of money to Russ. Um, so they've invested in other positions. Maybe they feel like they can draft another one. These pass rushers. It was a day where the Premium pass rushers didn't really leave 
they didn't hit free agency. Like they got franchise tag or they got paid. So it is surprising to see Chubb uh, be able to walk out of that building. Just team players going from a bad organization that mm -hmm. says we won't pay you. Yep. To like, a, not saying the Broncos. I'm saying this has happened. This is mm -hmm. like the Lions with right. Hawkinson, who's mm -hmm. young, trying to build, very good, very talented. Hasn't really said much at all. No. First thing he said with the Vikings, like, oh, I'm looking forward to win some games. Haven't been able to say that for a while. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. This guy yeah. probably would have been good. He's been very quiet, I think. But the Lions yes. are saying, like, no, we're not going to pay him a year from now, I guess, whenever we have to pay him. But the Vikings are saying, okay, we will. we got to pay Justin. <laughs> I just don't – and that's in the division. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the mindset of some of these people. I don't it, get it. Is it because – Do you win, like, general manager clout points I, if you make, like, a smart – like – you trade it, oh, you didn't have to pay him, and you got a third in return. Wow. Hey, that's good general manager clout sure. points. Like, are we trying to win a fucking Super Bowl, or are we trying to, are we trying to get some clout points amongst other general managers who are going to judge us? The only way I can wrap my head around it is um, that the Broncos think that paying him and keeping them on the roster isn't going to get them playoff wins or Super Bowl because they saw how bad Russ is, and they're stuck with him for the next five years. And the Lions are thinking the same exact thing. Oh, you with think their the Broncos team. are rebuilding? <laughs> five year rebuild. Yeah. All right, listen, we're going to take the next five years as an L. Mm -hmm. Fire this coach. Get Sertain out of here next. We would like him to be uh, le left to the Indianapolis Colts this offseason, well, please. Yeah. Please. Sertain probably won't. Like the Lions are like, oh, we got one win with Hawkinson. What are we going to have without him? Zero? Like, there's a big difference. Yeah, the Lions thing makes no sense, too, because the GM came out and was like, hey, if we were 6-1, and one, we would still trade T.J. Yeah. Hawkins, and this has yeah. nothing to do yeah, with yeah, our record. Hey, him coming out and saying that, Foxy, did, yeah. did you think to yourself, oh, we fucking stink. Yeah, oh, I mean, oh we, def we thought the culture was changing. Right. So we dumb. fucking stink whenever that guy said that. I knew he would say something like that, as he should <laughs> say something like that. And also, like, a lot of Lions fans are saying my take was bad, that we should keep Hawkinson. Like, yeah, at what point are you going to not – Pay player like you have to pay someone. Yeah. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Like when he's up, no, are we not going to pay him? Nope. No, Sewell, when he's up, are we not going to pay him? Nope. Like you got to start paying Hell red no. fucking no. players. No point. I don't understand Why it. We're you? always going to be bad. <laughs> Go win. Get uh -huh. the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, this Proud is of you. this is uh the GM Brad Holmes second year there. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, as, if I'm a GM. The more good players I get, like that's a and he's a Rams guy that's too. That's a top five guy, like potentially. He's, and he's a, position. he comes from the Rams uh, organization, yeah. and we know how they feel about. And that a lot of people drafted. are saying Hawkinson's numbers have been down. Yeah, no shit. We went from Stafford to Golf. Of course, they've been down. When we have oh, a good oh, quarterback, oh, oh, we're oh, good. Oh, he's a pro oh, bowl oh, player. Golf stinks. Yeah. Oh, 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 someone checks. Someone checks Stafford's numbers this, this season, please. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Goff broke Stafford's record of completion percentage last year. Goff's been playing unbelievable. Yeah, what are you talking about, Foxy? Your problem, I just don't, like, who are we going to pay? If we're not paying Hawk, who are we going to pay? Next no head one? coach. You're going to go all in on him. Yeah, that's not a part of salary cap. We know we know we're drafting a rookie <laughs> quarterback next year, and guess what rookie quarterbacks love? A nice big tight end to dump it down. Yep. Clyde, let's talk about um, – Trade deadline was interesting. There was like 12 trades made. Congrats yeah. to all the teams getting active. Yeah, awesome. Not all the teams, but all the teams that did get active. Mm -hmm. Congrats on getting active because that's a big-time decision, and we know that because of the inactivity from all the other teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The amount of decision and thought and I think like real – like you have to have real uh, – not commitment, but um, like whenever you're really confident with something, you have to have uh, – Conviction? Yeah, there it is. Fucking tie. Nice. Hey, Hell yeah. you are the word bank. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Whenever they say fill in the blank and then there's a word bu uh, bank right there, you are. You have to have real conviction to give mm -hmm. up one of your future picks to go ahead and get somebody. In the middle of a season when there's a lot of shit going on, a lot of conversations going on, I think some GMs are about it yep. and some GMs are not. And I think some people use the indecision as like an excuse to say we overthought it or, or we really thought it through and we turned over every, every stone and all this. And I think some GMs are like – we need this. Let's fucking go get it right now. And I like those people. I like the teams that are in this and trying to win it. And I do believe, you know, like the other teams that send a message, it's difficult to maintain motivation, I think, to be a fan of those teams. So fucking trade deadline's a big day, I think, yeah. whenever it talks about narratives being built. And we got half a season left or whatever. Yeah. But I fucking love the Vikings. I fucking love the Dolphins. Yeah. I fucking love the Niners. Mm -hmm. Like, I love these teams that are in the middle of it saying – we can go win it. I think that's a mentality from the whole culture. I Especially think. a season like this where it's so many teams kind of in the middle of the pack or haven't really, you know, separated themselves yet. Like that, that Niners move, I know it was early before the deadline, but that's still probably my favorite move made. You know, you bring in a guy like Christian McCaffrey who's so versatile. And you got guys on that team who have dealt with injuries, you know, Kittle, 
Uh, Debo, you know, he, he Debo's takes out last week. Yeah. yeah. He, but when he was out last week going into that game with everybody that's still out there, it's like, all right. So if C-Mac got to miss two, three games, all right, we still got these other guys. So you always talk about loading up on weapons, um, regardless of obviously who your quarterback, your point guard is. But the Niners and then what well, Miami did, you look at the team, you know, all right, we're putting up points. Tua is our guy. Let's go get a premier pass rusher so we don't have to line up in a zero look every snap. And, uh, you know, make the difference. I wonder if Vaughn Miller has any effect on this Bradley Chubb move. You know, because Vaughn showed up for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. And it's been just like an entire. Yeah. So maybe the Dolphins are thinking like, oh, what do we need? Uh, we get a pass rusher. Everything will fucking change, it seems like. And Chubb premier, right? Oh, yeah. We're talking Chubb's a guy. Yeah, guy. Mm-hmm. Very good. And the Dolphins, like, yeah, they're 5-3, and three, but they only lost those three games, you could argue, because Tua mm-hmm. got hurt. Like, they already beat the Bills, like Kyle Cathcart, beat Ravens. Ravens, the Dolphins, said yesterday. Yeah, they've beaten the Ravens. They've beaten good teams. They've come back against really good teams. But, it, like, the Vikings, I think, is the best just because they've never really been in this type of position, and they've never, I've at least in recent memory, have really taken advantage of where they are, how wide open the NFC feels yeah. like it is, and the only position on their offense offense that wasn't like oh this guy is an all pro is tight end like they justin jefferson thielen dalvin cook like you had a kirk 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 yeah. had a 20 yard scamper last week yeah, yeah. awesome tut they haven't mic'd up i watched the uh, the total access mic'd up as like 27 minute thing mm-hmm. kevin o'connell says fuck that's awesome yeah yeah so they bleeped it out but it clearly heard him say fuck mm-hmm. while he's talking on game day Makes me like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a human. Yo, yo. I like what he's doing. His interactions with Kirk are awesome. Like before the first play call, they go, "All right, Kirk, let's start this thing off. Let's get rolling or something like that with the boys." And then he gives the play call and something good. You get a baby, Kirk. And then Kirk starts scrambling on that one touch. I goes, "Throw it away! Throw it away! Throw it away! <laughs> throw it away! Throw it!" Okay. Yeah, and then whenever awesome. he gets back, it's like a full conversation. He outruns some people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kirk for 17 yards and a tut at the corner mm-hmm. against the Cardinals defense, who has some guys that can fly around and have some size. That yeah. offense from top to bottom has been so awesome to watch. Kirk Cousins seems to be having his best life. And I think the defense with Darius out of uh, yeah. Green Bay yeah. has really stepped up. Yeah. Patrick Peterson. Him around. Patrick's having like one of his best years, I think. He's coming on these last few weeks. Had a nice. So what happened to Miami. him? He had a little bit of a drop off, right? When he bit, went yeah. to the Vikings. Yeah. Why was that? You think? It's what happens. You play in this league long enough. He he was playing a lot of press man still out there. Because um, when he was in Arizona, we're talking fucking mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, yeah. Eight, eight Punt pro returner. bowls out of the gate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Punt returner, DB, freak athlete, yep. incredible golfer. Don't fuck with him. He goes to Minnesota. Then I remember some low lights happening, mm-hmm. and, and everybody was talking about it because of who he was. Oh, yeah. And then this season, I feel like it's really come back, right? Yeah. I've seen a lot more. I'm seeing a lot more PP like, good. Well, mm-hmm. you bring over a guy like <laughs> Zadarius Smith. That's going to yeah. help. Uh, you yeah, haven't even got Hunter really got in there, but uh, uh, Harrison Smith still playing well. Even um, Kendrick. Danzler, Cam Danzler, yeah. uh, he, he struggled kind of last year, but he's been playing better this year too. So that whole defense, playing a lot, lot of split safety where he can kind of use what's going on between the ears a lot more. He's been making plays, a lot of plays as of, uh, as of late. So that defense has come along. But that first year GM making that trade, going Quasi. to get, going yeah. to get hot. The, Quasi. The yeah. first Quasi. year coach too, like yeah, both KO, in yeah. Miami. Like it feels like the first year coaches are like, let's go. And then uh, for Patrick Peterson, I believe the beginning of the end until this year was when Cole Beasley crossed him up when, they, when he was still in Arizona. Do you remember that play? Was that – that was the non-vaccinated. I pool. believe right. that was that year, and he absolutely does. Yikes! Wow. Yeah. Cole Beasley was able to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wasn't able to get the jab though. Was no, he? he was not. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. How about him releasing an entire diss album? I was going to yeah. say he can draw on Oh yeah. yeah. Good. Very good. Mm-hmm. I've listened to it no less than a million times. Yeah. That's see. That's just a blatant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I lost, Tony has, I lost count, but... Yeah, he has said Cole Beasley is his kid rock. Yeah. Who's your kid rock? A.J. Hawk. Oh, okay. Who's... Is Nick, I guess, Kid Rock's Kid Rock? Is that who that is? I don't know. Bob Ritchie. Well, Bob was talking to Kid that one time about something yeah. terrible That's the kid right. said. Yeah, figure out his language like Papa John. No, I think he no, said I something he different. said, hey, that was Kid. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I think Bob said... The kid needs to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Bob is That's being right. forced to have conversations with friends yeah. mm-hmm. that Dash, are Bob offended Richie. by what kid's saying. Imagine him using that in real life. Hey, I'll talk I'll to talk kid. kid. I'll talk to kid. I'll try. <laughs> <man. laughs> Shit, you know kid. You know kid. He, he don't care. He's up on that stage. Yeah. 
What a wild time to be alive right now. That guy was running for government. Yeah. That guy was running for government. He was running for government. Mm -hmm. An elected official. Uh, the commanders, I guess, are going up for sale. Mm. Yesterday, we were wondering if it was going to be uh, just partially sold or entirely sold. And then it came out shortly after we got off the air that the U.S. District Attorney is filing charges against the Washington Commanders football team. And they think they engaged in financial im proprieties sources confirmed to ESPN. They've opened a criminal investigation. I'm sorry, not a uh, charge files charged criminal investigation into allegations that commanders engaged in financial improprieties sources confirmed to ESPN. Now it's tough to get that right, but I don't think they really said anything there. Investigating a uh, criminal investigation is obviously a problem. He's about to get audited. They're about to run through all yep. of his books. I assume they've already done that numerous times to Dan Snyder's commander's operation. I'm assuming they he's had people in his books for a long time. He's a billionaire. He's in the NFL. Now taxes with the NFL is interesting because I believe they're deemed a necessary Entertainment? So there's some filing that they have, that the NFL teams have, that other people do not have. They pay taxes, I believe, but it's not what we would all expect it to be, which seems to be a conversation a lot about a lot of people's taxes mm -hmm. these days. Yeah. So he's going to have somebody go through his books for criminal improprieties and how he's reporting his numbers. Now, it did come out last year that Dan Snyder was kind of playing a shell game with the other NFL owners. At $5.3 billion to sale, oh, this is about... This is about the, the sale numbers. He was playing a shell game. I thought we had the article from last year. He was playing a shell game with the other owners where he was reporting a certain amount of numbers uh, for tickets sold to the rest of the owners because they share that. Okay, So that's a pot. That old money goes into a pot. They're in a group. I'm sure the teams get to keep a bonus of their own individual money made, but I think that is a shared revenue as well that takes place that they have to report their numbers to. That happens with merch, I think. That happens with mm -hmm. tickets. It probably happens with everything that the NFL has. They have to report to each other because once again they're always like this they are a business even though they're each individual private businesses operating together so whenever he was allegedly hiding money from the owners and he was misreporting it to the owners he had one book for taxes one book for the owners mm -hmm. you immediately go somebody's running two fucking books for the yeah. washington commanders mm -hmm. right now so we asked cfo phil what that means sure. what cfo phil means is that is a lot of work if they're running two different books. If you do recall the Ponzi scheme, the big one from Bernie Madoff, mm -hmm. he had somebody running a different book, like two different books. It was a 24-7 job that yeah. they were taking place and doing. Miserable existence, but you can fuck people over. The government's wondering, you can fuck over your partners, we're wondering if you fucked over us. Now they're probably investigating because he did fuck over other billionaires and they're potentially telling people, hey, he fucked us over, we need to get in there and see what it is. But this seems to be the beginning of the actual end of the dance Snyder era, even though he's beaten so many different public, you know, allegations and causes, and everybody has deemed him an asshole. Now it's like an actual criminal investigation into the books, and it'll either be there or it won't. And if it's massive and it comes out that he fucked over the rest of the NFL, we can automatically assume that he's going to get voted out of the NFL owners group. And it seems like the writing's on the wall when they hire Bofa yesterday to handle maybe some potential interest in buying it. Yeah, we'll see cuz I still feel like like they we like we talked about it yesterday. There's just been so much stuff and I understand that like, you know, they're going to be looking into the books, but like they they've been trying to get shit to stick to this guy for so long now <laughs> and for whatever reason, it just never happens and it does kind of feel like a situation where it's just like, hey, one day it'll maybe catch up to him, but until that day actually gets here, like I just feel like he is somehow going to be able to skirt around it. This is one of those things where he just has to pay a fine, too, right? Probably. Yeah. Probably. And that's yeah. I mean, maybe go to jail, sure. I guess, mm. for tax but evasion. I, I, normally, they People of his stature, too, he's probably not worried about that, and that's why he People might. go to jail. They, they go to those, uh, like, yeah, they go the one month. Ones. They yeah. go to the yeah. one month, Playing like, in the cafeteria. And... Club fed, they call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? There it is. <laughs> But he could just sell part. That's why he could still sell part of the team and then just pay the fine and then still be there. Yeah. Unless they vote him up. But yeah, if there's criminal charges. Though. If they find out in their books auditing, which yeah. they will, that he was running two books, because all you need, and we should ask CFO, CFO Phil, they only need like what? One number off and they'll fucking go dive right in that thing, right? Phil? Yes. I think all he needs to have is one, one impropriety, yeah. and then that gives them like. Okay, now well, let's open this one up. And when you're talking about billions and billions 
of dollars. It's almost guaranteed to be some missed number somewhere. Yeah. And then if it comes yeah. out that he was, well, this number was actually the number he reported to his business partners, and this is the number that he reported to the government, like that's enough, I think, for the owners who are billionaires. Who cares, right, how everybody feels? Oh, the billionaires are getting fucked by another billionaire. Who cares? Well, the reason why we should care is because if billionaires get fucked by another billionaire, the mass billionaires can go, Fuck you yeah, get and get him out of there. So all roads here seem to lead lead to a Dan Snyder exit. Um, and I think Commanders fans are pumped about that. But the money thing with the government can't fuck with it. No, nope. can't fuck with it. Can't fuck them. with the money with the government. So can't do it. They, it they, they will find you. If, he, if they vote him out. And they take the team. Does he get money if they sell the yeah, team? Yeah, they vote him to sell it. Okay, I, I think okay. it's like, uh, yeah. okay. like we're forcing you out of owning this particular propriety yeah. that yeah. we is a part of our league. Right. You are no longer okay. the, the leader of something that's part of our business. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if they were. They're you, saying 10 bill. Yeah. 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 What was that? I didn't Dollar, which is kind of what. I didn't see it either. They told me literally as we, I, I walked in this morning, I think that is taking account for. The new property, yes. yep. the new stadium, mm -hmm. the new everything that they're going to have to build. Because I don't know, they're thinking that's the total cost or the total purchase. The commanders have been looking to build a $3 billion dome stadium in northern Virginia, although the team has been unable to secure public funding. A new owner, minus the specter of multiple investigations and other baggage, could, could have better luck with the effort. There's also a possibility that a change of ownership could lead to a renewed push into D.C. at the site of RFK Stadium, where the team called home for decades before moving into FedEx Field. That won't be an easy task since the site is controlled by the National Park Service. Rep. Eleanor Holmes uh, Norton, Democrat of D.C., introduced a bill that would transfer the land to the city, but the bill hasn't made it to the floor as Congress and the Attorney General Office for D.C. have opened investigations into Snyder and the Commanders. Minus public money, the new owner may have to spend upward mm. of 10 billion when the cost of a team and a new stadium are added together yeah and i was talking to um when we talked about Rappaport about this and he started giving projections of what the cost could be because the broncos go for like uh four billion or whatever it was yeah and whenever they go for four billion which we thought was low i mm -hmm. thought it was going to be a lot 4.65 mm -hmm. billion we thought it was going to be very much higher because of what the projection of what the NFL is doing. And if you're going to project like the next 10 years earnings, potentially whenever you sell something, which you can take into account for the NFL is an arrow straight up into the air. Whenever it talks about money because the ratings and content and streaming services in sports gambling mm -hmm. and literally everything mm -hmm. that is generating money right now, the NFL has. So the 4.65 billion was surprising to us, but then whenever you think about the commanders, somebody might want to overpay because of the, the location and how big it is and the fan base and the history and everything. But they're going to have to spend a lot of fucking money as soon as they get there. You're talking about either fixing an entire stadium, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars immediately. What, what if they change the name? Yeah. They could change the name. So that's a whole rebrand. Damn right. You spend $10 billion. I'm changing them. That's what well, <laughs> $10 billion would be if they were to do everything. Like yeah. Rebuild the stadium. But they're definitely changing the name. Yeah. So that's an entire new merch, logo, store, everything. The amount of money these mother... This is a re... Like, you're doing a... You're, this is like a home a HGTV type, yes. like fucking. This is a terrible house. Almost like buying an expansion team. Yes, it is. You got to you got to build a stadium. You got to yeah. change the name. You got to build a brand. You got to fucking find a team that's worthy of staying there. I mean, you got to rebuild the entire office that is just probably going to get let go just to kind of change the <laughs> turn the page. I mean, that is somebody will do it who has a lot of money because they want to get in the NFL, and the NFL is the NFL. But that is not that desirable of a fucking purchase, I don't think, if you're a billionaire and there's mm -hmm. potentially more NFL teams coming yeah, up. Yeah, and assuming that the stadium is only $3 billion is such a joke because look what happened with SoFi. It was supposed to be, you know, three or four, and it turned out to be eight. Like, you can't act like, hey, this is going to be $3 billion and construction is going to be on time and everything's going to happen right state, away. City. Like, this is going to well, be Especially that particular. More. There's a lot of red yeah. tape coming in that area. Yeah, but I think, didn't they say that there's a good chance that it will be publicly funded if it's not Daniel Dan Snyder, Snyder that's yeah. doing it? Because they, they were going to, and then they were basically like, actually, you know what? Fuck this guy. We're not doing shit for him. So if a new guy could, gets in here, like, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, we'll think about it. Mm -hmm. Now, they would have to tear down the RFA stadium to build a new stadium, right? Or is that already tor torn down and is already a, uh, a parking lot? Mm. It's already coming in right now. Yeah, what I is thought it? they were going to a different location in RFK is where they're at now. Or no, they they're at FedEx they Field. They, yeah. FedEx Field. What? They're at FedEx Field now. Is that what RFK Stadium was? RFK was the old baseball stadium, wasn't it? DC United Stadium, I think, right now. So the that's the Audi. Yeah, that's where the, what is it called? the XFL RF team played. 
Because if there's enough space that's already open in D.C., because D.C. is a small area, right? Yeah, that Thank you, sweet. Dirty, for that information. D.C. is a small area. If you already have an area that could be a stadium, now technically I think you would have to tear it down and build a new stadium as opposed to renovate that stadium yeah. so you can get the Super Bowl, which I think is in the yeah. I think is in the NFL Gotta rules, be. which is why Buffalo. It has to be a brand new stadium. I think it has to be a brand new stadium built from scratch. And if it's a new owner who is like there, wait, doesn't Bezos own the post? Post, yeah. He said Byron Allen, the guy who uh, tried to buy the Broncos yep. and would be the, the first black owner i think in the nfl like he's very interested and in, or they expect him to put together a group yeah to yeah. put together some money yep. rfk demolition uh is expected to begin in 2023 at the earliest so what is it just sitting there empty right now yeah it's uh multi-purpose stadium right now probably have a bunch of bombs in there yeah probably oh it's a house maybe mm -hmm. yeah like the greek <laughs> olympic stadiums so that's an easy stadium that they can go to with fedex field being an absolute shithole interesting maybe byron gets in this is going to turn into just like the fucking Denver one was, right? I think yep. Byron was the one that came out and said, um, well, we knew the Walton family was yeah. in. Yeah. So how high are we going to? It's like one of those auctions. I went to an auction one time, and uh, there was a Saturday Night Live VIP package that you could buy. You get a private plane to New York, uh, four tickets, I believe, to Saturday Night Live, stay at the Four Seasons, something else afterwards. Sweet. And I was drunk at this auction. I'm like, here we go. This sounds like a blast. I just got paid, too. I think I just signed one of my newer deals, so <laughs> I'm fucking <laughs> massive in this room. So they've been, uh, yep, somebody goes uh, like 10000 15000 I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Uh, plane's already that expensive anyway, so we'll do it. Boom, boom, boom. Once it got to a certain point, I set a number, and there was somebody like four or five tables behind me who was just adding like twenty grand on top of it, and the money was just going up <laughs> like by 1000 and I got like 40,000, like 60,000. I'm like 61,000, 81,000. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I think I'm out. And uh, somebody shows me a picture. That guy sold his company like fucking four weeks before that for $2 billion. Okay. So, yeah. so it's like whenever you get uh, into an burn auction. Burn a hole in his pocket. Yeah, whenever <laughs> you get into an auction, especially with how the NFL operates, everybody that's saying they're going to get into the commanders, I appreciate and respect and like RG3 said, hey, how yeah. about... Yeah, a couple fans. How about we get some fans right yeah. along? Oh, nice. That's how it works. Like, I, I love RG3. I, I enjoy following him on there. I enjoy the community he's built. I think he crushes it on TV. <laughs> that tweet had like 2,000 retweets with like people being like, yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. I'm like, is, that, is this how this works? I don't know if this is how this works because I, I think this how this is going to work. If we know anything about Dan Snyder, I don't think Dan Snyder's selling this just because he likes somebody or it's a good story. I think he's probably taking the most amount of sure. fucking money that you can get. Really? And to my point earlier, like <laughs> the NFL is just doing this with money. I think there's going to be some big money having motherfuckers that are going to be getting involved in that. That thing could go oh, yeah. for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I think there's only a few people, if they want to get involved, know that they're in it with them. So I hope that whoever is thinking about getting into it can get there. But I feel like there's going to be a big bank take little bank situation. Yeah. And uh, those big banks right now, there's a couple of them that just literally shit out billions. You know how we yeah. used to say, like, oh, he shits out hundreds or whatever. There's people that just shit out billions now. Mm -hmm. There's, like, venture capitalist funds that are all have their money together. Like, trillion. Like, they have so much fucking money, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's ever stopping. And if they go get that golden asteroid. That's right. You know, and they, about sure. that. they can make everybody a billionaire on Earth. Sure. He's aimed by a billionaire. If everybody's a billionaire. Well, there's a few billionaires who are billionaires amongst billionaires. They have thousands of billions. Mm -hmm. And those people <laughs> mm -hmm. are the people that are going to be in the fucking game buying the commanders. But good luck to everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Go get them. I luck. hope you guys go get it. Good luck, RG3. Hey, good luck, yeah. RG3. In the <laughs> Even the other guy, too. Like, realistically, when you just said it, like, if Bezos wants to get in the NFL, he will have this team. He has the commanders. Yeah. yeah. Like, that game, set, match. No He's not the only one. There's, there's probably some bazillionaire that we haven't even heard of or talk about that has kind of just drifted off into the ocean. I'm assuming they're very good people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, have to be. I'm assuming they're family. Uh -huh. Especially if you haven't heard of them. Uh -huh. yeah, especially, I'm assuming they're very good. If they just happen to, oh, I've become a fan yeah. of football. Yeah. Fuck you, it. If, boom. I mean. Here's a quick $10 billion. We yeah. still got another $50 billion mm -hmm. to use. It is, there's some money companies out there that are just very deep. Oh, and, yeah. To further that point, doesn't it seem like owning a sports franchise has now become the trendy thing to do among, like, super That's wealthy funny. people, and the NFL is the pinnacle of that if you can get an nfl team as a rich guy you're not just a rich guy anymore you're a rich guy with an nfl team yeah, it's tough to get in there too difficult you know? mm -hmm. yeah so that's definitely even that show our billions that was one of the things oh they um, pissed on a the guy the first yeah. scene yep. Paul Paul Jay 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 Jay. great mm -hmm. job yeah 
Yeah, you did. You watched the show. Damn yeah, right. you love it. First episode, guy got pissed on and got wax on, and he's all tied up. He's That's big money, baby. Booty yeah, right. Axe Capital. Yeah, I was going to say Elon. United States estimated net worth of 20 richest people, $219 billion. $219 billion. Okay? That's just if he's alone with his money, mm-hmm. let alone if they add in other people yeah. and their money together. Bezos lost like $20 billion the other day. Zuckerberg is getting crushed right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. you don't say. Yeah, he's getting well, killed. Why Balmer we, why has Why they been... just plug him back in? Balmer's been talked about about how he wants to join the NFL. How Warren Buffett hasn't gotten involved is interesting to me. Yeah. Because he's been a part of American conversation, American mm-hmm. rich, be Warren Buffett, the NFL, big American business. I'm surprised Warren... He's a college basketball guy. Is he? Yeah, so he yeah. likes sports, though. He tries to give a billion dollars away every year for a perfect bracket. That's a pretty good bet. And that's what he's been doing his entire uh, career, just making very it, good bets. Yeah, I, don't yeah. know if, I don't know if he likes college basketball or they just do that every year for fun. To he, make him look relatable? Maybe. He's a big stats and analytics guy, so I don't want him in the NFL, but it would be sweet to have that type of money in there. He <laughs> apparently uh, gave an interview where he said he dreamed of owning the Washington franchise growing up as a kid. So, like, that's if he wants that's it, just one person How that we him? just – we pulled up one graphic here, and that's $118 billion. let alone the other people down here that have, like, 50, 60 – that's – Imagine having fifty billion. So, that is so, so much money. Sue so will probably be in his ownership group. Well, I've too. never heard of There's Larry, and, like, Larry and Sergey. Sergey Brin and Larry. Those Google guys. They keep their names. They're fucking just behind those behind the you scenes. You don't know about Sergey? What are you talking about? Yeah. This guy's created Google. Everyone well, knows him. Come on, Tony Larry. <laughs> well, the thing about the people at Google <laughs> is people. I've never seen heard either of you use his, their names. So uh, <laughs> we'll start talking about Sergey Brin a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll start bringing in Sergey Brin, but um. The one documentary I watched about like Google and stuff, some of the high up people, you ask them how Google works, and they'll like give an answer, and then somebody who used to work at Google, who's a high exec, comes on next, and they're like, they don't know, yeah. they have no idea. The algorithm <laughs> yeah, is doing it. The algorithm's mm-hmm. doing everything. It's like, well, congrats to Larry and Sergey, just creating, Genius. yeah, <laughs> creating the algorithm, baby. Algorithm. <laughs> that is up YouTube. We appreciate Larry Ellison, Oracle. He owns uh, Lanai. I believe he oh, owns the resort, the Bronco buy, an, an island in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. No, not the resort. He owns the entire, oh the actual island. He itself. bought the entire island itself. Yeah, Larry Ellison of Beast. Oracle just bought the whole island. That's pretty sweet. Hey, yeah. Thank you for letting me go to your island here once in a while. It is <laughs> fucking, it's off the grid. It is great. Larry Ellison owns that. How could you not do that type of stuff though? Mm-hmm. If you have two hundred ninety, gotta get an island. How could you not get a country? Yeah. Uh, well, that's hey, a lot of work. Island, make what? the name of the country. Make the country. Like What's a rebuild, like process? a startup. Startup, yeah. startup country. Then we go to the Olympics. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. How then, much money do we need to apply to summer. be a country to go to the Olympics? Both. Why We're not? doing whatever, yeah. dude. Yeah. You should see our curling team we put together. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. I know a Handball. Guy, I know a guy who's really good snowboarding. He's going to have to live in our country for at least like a yeah. week, I think. Five years. We'll well, give not, him citizenship. We he, got, we got he retired a few years ago. He's not so. He's not doing Highly intelligent as well. Retired? Who is this? He's on right. Uh, well read. They're making John cracks Tsunami? about Andrew Luck. What? what they're uh, doing. That's helping a sub to make. I thought you were talking about Mitt. He can, <laughs> that's what I thought. No, yeah, Mitt, Mitt's going to have to earn a, a spot. He's going to earn citizenship. <laughs> I think he, no, no, not citizenship, but <laughs> I thought uh, okay. a snowboard team. No, okay. skateboarding I, is in the Olympics now. What they are, yeah, but I've, the only thing I've seen from him skateboarding yeah. is a fracture in his shin four times or whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we Mitt's need that. Mitt's going to pass our... Citizenship test with flying colors. Well, I'm not talking. I'm just talking about making the team, dude. I'm, ta- I'm talking about making oh, competition. Team. He's really good. We might not even put a skateboard team out there if he's the only. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we don't need our country getting represented by somebody that just shatters their leg. True. Well, was, last run though. I mean, he was probably uh, nasty 50-50 grinds all day, and then last run. Anyways, what we're saying is <laughs> a lot of billions out there. So many. Okay, Zito just told me. I don't know if you guys heard him as well okay. there. So to buy the United States, it would cost $23 trillion. Well, who's doing the okay. math? Well, let's, let's get a group together, see what we can come up with. That's probably the most expensive one, right? I we don't need that much See, land. I thought it was more like, was it a $23 quadrillion trillion $4? Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. How much is, like, Ecuador? Are we in debt? A few, yeah. <laughs> a few trillion. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I th- we pick up the debts as well. When you, buy the, when you purchase the mm-hmm. property, yep. you're also picking up the liens and the debt that That's are right. coming alongside of it. Yeah, the NFL.com literally posted an article. Warren Buffett dreamed of owning Washington Beeps. Wow. wow. That's the name of the so article. The Cancel one. him. Well, we don't know what he's going to do, but... That's what we're saying. When it, All the feel-good stories of who's going to buy it and what the NFL should think about doing. And I think, you know, representation. 
to your point of Byron being the black owner yeah. is probably a good thing. You've heard Dion talk about it. You've heard any per Stephen A. I think he's talked about it. Literally any person that has a platform that is black has shouted from the rooftop like, hey, if we can maybe get an owner in there too, that'd be like GMs, coaches, and owner would be cool because then maybe in those one per club meetings, a voice could be heard whenever some decisions are made. It might make the league even better. You know, it might make might make everything more inclusive and even better. And it's, you know, I, I think a lot of people, as soon as they hear that, some people are naturally going to be like we're not just picking an owner because of the color of their mm -hmm. skin or whatever well you're only picking an owner because of how much money they have right and that's the reality yeah. and we just need to uh -huh. mm -hmm. we just need to understand that going in right that's just something we need to understand going for in. sure for sure especially if it's going to take like you said you know 10 billion like snyder's not just gonna if they're talking about this team being sold for 10 billion he's not gonna be like you know what I like the cut of your jib. I'll, I'll you give me four billion. And we'll call it good. Yeah, he's not the guy that's going to make the right. Uh, if this if this decision. number go, and it wouldn't be ten billion to buy it. Ten billion would be the entire total cost entire after cost right. to kind of go in build the stadium that somebody else designed, not the new owner. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. So I'm sure that would be their exact yeah, design. Those plans will probably get scrapped. Yep. Shout out to you. Got to yeah redo entire. You got to pay architects. You should have had a cool mm -hmm. group up like you, The Rock, Ryan right. Reynolds. Well, he's buying the he Ottawa Center. Yeah, yeah. yeah but if you, fuck, if you dangle the football team out there, I think he might switch. Yeah. Yeah. RG3. RG3, oh, the 20 fans yeah. he's bringing along I with him. Could, could RG3's got money. Number Joe two pick. Gibbs. You get Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs. I mean, Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs could sell his NASCAR team and fucking jump in on. You need so much. I don't. So much money. Yeah. yeah so, 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 so much money. Just make one call to Favre, and he'll take it all from Mississippi for you. Core relationships too. <laughs> Magic, Magic trying to—he was trying to yep. get in the Raiders, so it'd be interesting. And but, Denver um, too. I think he was with Denver too. Yeah, Denver yeah. has some uh, has some diverse Hayton. representation. Lou Hamilton, group. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. In there. I think that's selected after the purchase is made. Though. Yeah, yeah. Lewis Hamilton. Melody Hobson. Sir, it's Sir Lewis he Hamilton too, by the way. Sir, Sir is knighted. Correct. Excuse Correct. me. Hello, knight. Hello, hello, Lou. Got good oh, teeth. But Driving think, pretty fast. I think that was all selected after the pick. So after the, the Waltons bought I it, think so. Know. I'm not 100% sure, but those got announced afterwards. I think That's when Lou got hit. I know Lou, yeah. After. Sorry, Lewis, for sure. I don't know about Melody. I wonder if you buy it and then you're like, all right, I'm going to sell off some percentages now. Who wants to yeah. be partners if that's like the next round of... Ooh, also, with Bezos, have we heard, is there any type of conflict of interest that wouldn't allow him to buy a team since he has the media rights deal with the mm. league or no? That's really interesting. And how does those meteorites so, work? Patriots have Kraft Productions, right? Yes. And next Kraft year. Productions owns the local <laughs> streaming rights of the game, or no? Oh, I believe so. So, but there's it's not, probably precedent there. That's yeah. probably what. But but the Amazon thing is league wide, right? That's yeah. every single team, not just the team that you own. Yeah, they don't have the prime time ones. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. That would be precedent, though. There'd be pre because somebody that's coming in in the next ten years to buy a team probably going to have. Some sort of network, yeah. right? Some yeah. sort of mm -hmm. like if Apple wants to get involved, right. however they do, they're going to have games. If anybody in Google wants to get involved, they're probably going to have games. Yeah, because yeah, what's so the this is at a much smaller scale. What we are going through with the NFL right now with the streaming and figuring <laughs> out who has mm -hmm. rights to what that might happen at the ownership level. Like, can Bezos buy a team when he owns the network that is broadcasting? exclusive games i don't see why not personally mm -hmm. i don't see why not i think the nfl would appreciate that they're already in business with the person yeah so they already kind of know the person he has so much money seems like he's invested in the nfl he's been at a few of the games i think on thursday yep. nights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably pay a fee can we put that graphic up again of how much money everybody has can we do that one more time 219 <laughs> billion dollars elon has now, is that plus or minus the 40 they just did right. for Twitter? Yeah, probably go down to 180 something. Nah, it'll probably go up once you start getting our eight bucks. Man. I also thought that. Eight bucks is next to nothing. <laughs> and it seems like the easiest. I would have thought like 499 because it's a lot more forgettable for everybody to put it on auto pay. He went with eight bucks. Turns out the guy who has $219 billion was probably right. I'll pay eight bucks to Twitter and not give, not even fucking bad enough. Yeah, I'll never remember it. Nobody will. It's, I, I think I saw KFC do the math. It's like twenty five cents a day or something. You're paying for Twitter, is if you do the math. Oh yeah. Do you have to pay it to be on Twitter or just be no. verified? No, just be verified. But I think your experience probably a little different is going to be much worse. I think there's going to be a lot of ads mm -hmm. and yeah. everything because like of, that is it because of eight buck productions. <laughs> Seven, I think. Is it seven? seven? It is seven. Yeah, seven. 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 Seven bucks. I think this is after Twitter, too, because I thought he was 262. Well, 
219 billion dollars is where Elon's at. If he wants a team, yeah. he can get a he team. He will have a yeah. team. Jeff Bezos 171 billion to only growing as Amazon's mm-hmm. grown. I got Jordans on Amazon. Really? The day. They arrived Real in two days. Yeah. The ones were, I had on yesterday. Those, were those are sweet. Yeah. Thank you. The Aqua or whatever. Yeah. Those are sweet. Two days they showed up. I had to pay like I think 300 and something total after all the fees came in two days. Mm-hmm. It was like, if they're going to start selling Jordans on here, I mean, yeah. Amazon's just going to start selling if, everything. That number's only going to yodel, yodel, yodel. one of these yodel. teams is on a potato farm or something like that, watch out. Bill's, Bill Gates is going to buy it. Well, that's, that's why Bill is actually on here pretty high up, you see. $129 yeah. billion. Yeah. Dollars yeah. Land. $129 fucking billion dollars Bill Gates has. That guy hasn't done anything in years. Microsoft is so old. He's gotten. A, he's become a doctor since then. He's in a vaccination mm-hmm. game. I yep. heard. He's fucking had pool parties. I've heard mm-hmm. about. He's buying up all the farmland. Yeah, he's, he's trying to save food. He says. Well, yeah. maybe. Mm-hmm. Got divorced. Got a big chunk of that taken away as well. Mm-hmm. Had a bunch of cool stripper parties with Steve Ballmer again. Yeah. After his divorce. That was the pool parties we're talking about. Pool mm-hmm. parties. Excuse Already me. Mentioned, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's how I mean. Just want to make sure we hammer that home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to spread any misinformation at all. Uh, well, you want to twice if it is misinformation. Yeah, yeah, you maybe. To hammer it home. Yeah, yeah, definitely have today. Uh, Who is that? Bloomberg. Oh yeah, Bloomberg's that he's New York guy, too, right? right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. New York, yeah. I didn't know who the fuck he was, and then oh. he's very rich. Yeah, he's he's very is that the article His publication? Yes. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. He made a terminal that everyone trades on. All the stock brokers. He did. Stock. He er, yeah, Bloomberg, genius. Bloomberg terminal. Smart. Yeah. I got. I was asked to do an interview with somebody that was writing for Bloomberg, and I started the call with saying, "So, what are you guys?" And this writer had to explain to me what Bloomberg was. And then I did a quick little Google. Shout out to Larry and uh, Sergey. Sergey Grin. Uh, I did a quick little Google afterwards. It's like, oh, they're like the authority on business. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should have I should have known who this was. I thought it was a compliment. Thank you for writing about me and Bloomberg. Thank you. But the head Bloomberg was running. I do remember learning a lot of terrible things about him because he was running for president. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. They just, anytime you run for president, you've accrued $82 billion. The stock market thing's named after you. All the businesses basically referred to as your name, uh, but you're not good enough to run our fucking country. No, we're no. going to fucking kill you. We're yeah. going to kill you. Walt, we Walt. don't want you running our <laughs> country. <laughs> hey, you've had success. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck off. We don't need you in here. Damn it. Okay. All right, that makes good sense. Good place to uh, get your political news, though. You know, you don't, I don't, I'm not a CNN fan, not a Fox News fan, but if you watch Bloomberg, so I just think folks around it's the money. It's a channel, too? I thought it was just. Oh, yeah, no, it's a channel that's 24, 24-7. Yeah, but pushing his agendas. No, oh, they, no I mean, they, I mean, they, they, they lean a little bit to the left, I would say, but, I mean, it's a, you get you get pretty fair news because it's about the money. How does this affect yeah. the money? Whatever, yeah. you know, each side is doing, how does it affect money, So money, I, money, I was money, thinking about money. this yesterday because I saw something, I guess the stock went down yesterday. I guess because Amazon's my, been crashing too. My phone, um, my phone updated. Mm-hmm. So now when I scroll left, you the gimmick stocks. is a stock. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, I don't have any fucking. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. Why, why is this on my phone? On the smartphone, fucking pretty dumb. Put this on my phone. I can't get an update. All of a sudden, <laughs> I got fucking stocks. It's just red, 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 mm-hmm. red. And uh, I started thinking to myself, I don't care. I, I grew up around nobody that had money in the stock market. I guess it's a big deal. It, that's an indicator of where our entire country is, I guess. Is that what everybody says? Or is there only a certain amount of, like, there's only one class that uses the stock market? I don't think I'm educated enough about the stock market to know why it matters. Feels like you are in this game now, pretty big. No, not enough. I would say there are a lot of people who, Bruce are probably. Yeah, Bruce and Blue Jeans yeah, yeah. Yeah. has the stock market he'll on act lockdown. Like it. Yeah, he'll give me some answer that was told to him. Yeah, I actually said that Amazon's way down because Bruce came up to me the other day and said, hey, our Amazon stock's down. And he's down. hearing it from Jim Cramer when he's watching Mad Money. Bye, bye, bye. And then I also heard that well, anything he's Cramer. on yeah. go the other way. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. fade Cramer season. Yeah, he, well, yeah he, he cried the other day because one of his uh, bye, bye, bye. Yeah, his blue, one of well, his blue well, well. chip stocks. It was meta. It was meta. Bruce, <laughs> so when the stock market's down, that's an indicator of how our entire country is financially? Is that what they say? Um, It is like a... a Correlation and a reflection of how companies are all doing, basically. Don't like, use your big words. Like, if they have an earnings report, Netflix is losing subscribers, Netflix goes down like 20%. So, if the day. entire thing is down, that means most companies are doing bad, which means the overall state of business in the United States not great. Yep, Recession another down. another massive thing is like what, especially nowadays, it's like what the Federal Reserve is doing mm. with interest rates on, on kind of loans and stuff. They basically keep on raising interest Wait, rates. Wait, wasn't that 2007 problem, 2006 problem? Because then 2008 came and everybody lost their shit and everybody mm-hmm. was like, well, who did it? It was the guy drumming. 
in his uh, yeah, Michael Barry. Yeah. He figured it. He called it. Howling yep. market right now is the yeah. one I'm beating. Pokemon. I assume there's there's somebody like him right now, right, sitting in an uh, office going, "Oh, this is all going to happen again." Like 2008, everything's kind of pointing in that direction. Is that is that what we're thinking? I don't. I don't put my money in any of these fucking people. The, the yeah. indexes are the easiest things to pay attention to. So yeah, like S and P five hundred. That's like yeah. five hundred of the. Uh, that's the Fortune companies. five. That's Fortune well, five hundred. No, that's, so that's, that's five hundred companies from all eleven different sectors: so agriculture, tech, everything, whatever. So if that's going down, okay, the whole yeah. thing is going down. That, but historically, that goes up every. You know, if you got your money invested every ten years, it's going to be going up. Yeah, so that's uh, if you have your, you know. Your peaks and valleys. Down uh, 10, 10 points, dude. No, Eight. no, no. Shit. Down no. 10 points, dude. Down. Jesus Christ. S&P Thought this was going to be a good Down day. Down 29%. <laughs> Fuck. Sorry, 0.29%. What's the fucking Dow Jones at? Jesus. <laughs> S&P 500. Who cares? I mean, I'm with the Dow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's our six-month projections looking like? I can't be like this forever. I think that's a problem, though. I grew up with nobody that had their money in there. So never ha- have zero information or knowledge about it. Get in the NFL 2009. Oh, that's good. Everybody that I'm around that has money just told me they lost it all. <laughs> Jesus in Christ. The fucking stock market. I'm like, yeah. cool. Never going to fucking do that. And then as I grow older, everybody has all the right answers. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, oh, I'll do Oh, Dow. So Dow, nine red. points. Oh, the Dow's down. So Dow. 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 Oh, no. no. All right, we will continue to do financial <laughs> updates on this program as uh, we deem fit here. Cash out, cash out, cash out. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hold, hold, hold. What are you, what are you waiting in the soup and bread lines again like 1939, Z? Can't have it. I do love soup. 1929. <laughs> Whatever. We don't know that world well yeah. enough. No. Seems really? like everybody's... Uh, Buy Panera stock now. Everybody's kind of done. <laughs> yeah, the only reason... Soup. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason it's fun was because of the being able to just yell hold yeah, when, yeah. when Bitcoin and Dogecoin were happening. And when people were doing AMC. the AMC yeah. and all that. Oh, hold on, we had a few experts in here then. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, everybody was a stock market yeah. expert at that point. That was awesome. Not just in this building. Well, we weren't in this building. In the last building. Uh-huh. Yeah. But not just in our particular office. I think everybody's friends all of a sudden became fucking stock market <laughs> oh, experts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then the crypto experts were the best. Oh, man. They were the best. I love crypto. So who, yeah, I know. You You actually, I think, did invest your time. You didn't just read two tweets and then come into all, work. And there's a lot or, of people got taken advantage of. Though. You don't say. You, <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't say. <laughs> How's Bitcoin doing now? Bitcoin it's, or just uh, crypto as a whole? Both. Over. Yeah. I think it's been up, on, up a little bit. Thank you. Up a little You're bit. You're a big Ethereum guy, aren't you, d Ethereum. That is that crushing still? No, nothing's crushing. <laughs> Here we go. Bitcoin, Bitcoin. we're up 142 look, we're, we're, points we're today. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's nothing. Yeah. Oh, we're at 20,000. Oh, my God. It was oh. at 39 or something whenever we were talking about it just like a year ago. So yeah. The top was 60s. like 60s, yeah. mid-60s. So, so if you have, what, 10 Bitcoin, you lost like only so like on $400,000? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's nothing. You know? That's the more. Jesus that's Christ. The, Oh! 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 So I am bummed that I didn't get in involved in a lot of these things that people make a lot of money off of and mm-hmm. seemingly know mm-hmm. a lot about. But also, like the more this type of shit happens, I think forever. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just gonna the, stay away from yeah, it. More which is not. Did. We're never gonna be able to own a team this way. Never gonna be able to get to the point of owning a team, operating the way I operate. Mm-hmm. Have to be able to utilize your money to make more money. And other things, a lot of people do it in the stocks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have our money and our company invest in things that are real. Hell yeah, mega millions. Still has not been won. One and a half billion. <laughs> We're winning on Saturday. That's right. Yep. Yes. So I boom. forgot about everything. Yeah, you start there, and then you <laughs> fucking evaluate after we win that. All you financial folks, come to me and come to. Actually, you'll be able to sit right here, mm-hmm. be like Shark Tank. That's yeah, right. Let us know what you think we should do with our 1.5 billion like after that. we won the. Powerball. Need mm-hmm. Gary V in here. Yeah. No, I don't need Gary. Receipts, motherfuckers. Let's get to a break. Receipts will be checked for Dan Snyder. That's why he's probably going to be selling the team. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. A lot of receipts. Random person, mm-hmm. no. Phil Knight. You think Phil Knight would ever own a team? Maybe. Mm. Well, like, Where's he at? Is he on that list? Yeah, he was. Uh, f- well, look at it. Yeah, let's pull it up. He's even higher. But like, what? What about like Brady and Jordan? He probably sold like a, so much of his company. It's it's all about like how much you own. 47? That's enough, oh, Bill. Sure. Oh, yeah. Fucking Mikey Dell. Dale. Oh, uh. the Cock Brothers. They could get in. Are those What's com- Cock Are those the comedians? No. That's gas and... Uh, thinking of the Sklar Brothers. Okay. Mackenzie Scott. 
It's Coke, yeah, I believe. It is Coke. What? Uh, Mackenzie Scott actually Bob just filed for divorce from her uh, second, yeah, second husband as yeah. well. So he's about to be on here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to a break. Let's take five with uh, AJ Hawk on the other side. D, but do you want to attempt to make a shot here or no? Let's do it. Hell yeah. Hey, here we go. Go. Don't think about your Bitcoin. Don't think Which about the Bitcoin one? or Ethereum or no. Dow or yeah, S&P. Right. That. Not today. Today, the only thing you're thinking about is how you put those basketballs into that hoop or those golf balls mm -hmm. into that hole let's go here, here we go, D -Butt. D -Butt, let's here we go. go. Here you go. yeah hell yeah this is the day. if d butt makes one of these shots from the stage call it the money shot we'll give 10 people who retweet this video five hundred dollars you also got to say something nice to somebody put your cash tag in there got it Boom. Good. Head the distance yeah, though. Go. good trajectory good yep. path line a little softer oh d butt do with a second that's I like what. All right. I like what Phil's done to the air in here. Look at it. Eight. I hope he did something to the air. Does it look the same to you or no? Is it flying the same to you or did Phil do something? He might have did something on mine. I don't know if I've been rattled like this before. Whoa. That's fucking CFO Phil, dude. I'll do that. Hmm. It's all right. You'll be back next time. Hey, here we go, go dude. Buddy. Go. All right, everybody, take five. Hour two on the other side. We got an incredible video coming that Foxy put together. Uh, we did a little local news segment to explain because a lot of people ask about our giveaways. Eyewitness news. Nick mm -hmm. and Foxy <laughs> want boots on the ground to figure it out. Yeah, uh, we'll be back with hour two with AJ Hawk in five. Take five. 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 Hello and welcome to the special investigative report. Much has been made in the media world on the life and charitable donations of the man Pat McAfee. Especially lately, with the rise of the ever popular Pat McAfee Show. A show that in his own words, stinks. We thought it privy to dive into the inner workings and machinations of this tiny business, this small regional show that has reached international discourse. We sat down with the suit himself, Bruce Brown, to figure out what, where, when, why, and how they're able to give away so much money, so much money to the viewers of this incredible program. So yeah, when you enter a Pat McAfee Show giveaway or win a FanDuel merch picks contest on Sunday, essentially, um, you know, the entire hashtag will be downloaded into an Excel file and the winners will be randomized within that. Um, and then we do a quick scumbag check, basically click on the profile and, and make sure, you know, you aren't a robot or blocked by Pat. And then it'll be transferred over to Dirty Gertie, who creates the Winner Wednesday graphic, which then runs on the show each Wednesday in a commercial break. Um, if you win over $599, um, we're going to need your email, or you can email giveaways at patmacafeeshow.com. If it's under $599, all we need is your cash tag. And if you win merch, obviously we need your size, address, and what you want from the store. Usually I'll just reply to you on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions about any giveaway, whether it's cash that you either are, are waiting on or, or merch, yeah, you can just reach out to me on Twitter or email giveaways at patmacfeeshow.com. Please give us about one to two weeks to sort out your prize. That's typically how, how long it, it, um, it takes. But again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. We reached out to PMI's money man himself, CFO Phil, for an on-camera interview. Regretfully, he declined the segment, but he did give us the salacious, juicy details. In an email correspondence, CFO Phil replied, $2.6 million year to date. Too much money. There you have it. $2.6 million given away, a pissed off CFO, and a show that quote unquote, stinks good night good morrow good luck and good fortune
Tommy, you want to start second and 14, second and 15? Hell no. No. He's coach. not here, Coach. No, he is. <laughs> oh. I am here today. Oh. Oh, thank you. No problem. Appreciate you. We need 45 you. 45 years old. Good to see you, Tom. I haven't seen you. How's everything I'm, going, Tom? Tommy. Tom, how you been? Tom, you okay? Tommy, I, I, I what's understand. Going on? I respect. Where are you playing? I respect everything Tom, that's going on. Ready to go war with you, Tom. I respect yeah. everything hey. that's going on. We ship out at 0800. Sorry, Sorry about AB, talking. Tom. Family matters to me. Listen up. <laughs> care about you guys. I care about your family and your situation at home. Quit bringing that bullshit in here. Yeah. Time, you can talk to me about it. It's okay. Coach, the guy's fucking Leave it at home. Leave it at home. His kids hate him, Coach. Well, I have no. a building. Thanks. Thanks. What, what hotel you I'm living in a fucking hotel. That's yeah. on you, Coach. Hotel California. We're paying room for service. your room, and maybe that football camera will switch up on you. Okay, let's go. Oh, 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 oh. Todd came with the Check heat it today. Out. <laughs> He's going to relay East outside. you got to cover me. You don't block me. You cover me. Let's go. Okay? Jesus. Right. Come on. Did you play some things? Are you trying to move your feet? I'm the corner of the athlete. safety. Dude. You're the one who's going to cut this guy? And then move your feet. You got it, man. It's the highest level. I'd call somebody else up here, but it's too much. Okay, so the bunch is here, right? That guy outside release. You got me man to man. Back up. Picture the, Hit him the, balls picture the nickel back here. This guy, we outside release our point man. Three's going to the flat. Yeah. Start coming to the flat. He's going to be looking like he's running around. <laughs> a short week. You got you to help me. You got a short me. week. A dead body on him. Oh, oh no. no. Come on. I'll be the running back. Running backs. Leonard, you guys, we got hey, three points of pressure. You know what they are? Hell Coach. yeah. Fingertip right over the nip, tip, tip of the ball. Nip. Two fingers, all right? Nip. Inside the forearm and the rib cage. So when they come to try to peanut punch this thing out, mm. and he does a great job of it. Because what he's going to do, he's going to run down the trouble, right. eat up the grass, right. come to balance, right. come to balance, start to secure the tackle, uh -huh. and then punch boom, the ball boom. in. Okay? Boom. If we've got the three points of pressure on there, forearm, rib cage, tip of the ball, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You follow me? Yes, but he does a great job. If we're coming loose, or, we, or we're running down the field, run it, uh, stay, hold up now. <laughs> come on, now <laughs> that ball's coming here, they're going to come over. Fake like they're, they're gonna act like they gotta secure the tackle here and then punch it. Who's got it? AJ, it's over. Love the enthusiasm, guys. There's me holding for you. Okay, I'm one of the greatest holders in the history of the NFL. You can go look at stats and percentages of made kits. I also enjoy seeing other people shine. You'll pull it back just like you're golfing or just like a shooting game with your thumb. The wind in the top right corner is something you will have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And as you get rolling, the more kicks you make in a row, the more money and the higher the score gets generated. There's obviously things you'd like to hit. There's a lack of a fan, lower left. There's a golden ball there, top left, in which you can put in if you're gonna miss and make. The game has so many different pieces to it. We're incredibly proud, and then that's a miss, obviously. Mm, jumped, dude. That's a terrible kick. Nah, not a good ball. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. Lights are on. Made it, listen. made it. No, I actually told 60? him. 60? Uh, Listen, Ty could go put a 20,000 piece on this if he wanted to right now. Uh, Ty and none of the boys at the office are up for any of the prizes, especially the week one prize. Um, so there's a reason they've been playing for three weeks. Yeah. There will be up, uh, up and coming contests with this though next year or next week or maybe the week after that that you'll have to beat or try to beat the highest score of the office and there'll be a lot of money on the line. This is from 80 yards. Oh, oh, man. man, he hits the no win game. Hey, why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! What the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fucking. Oh! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the FanDuel Thunderdome. Hour two, Thursday, November 3rd, starts right now. Football! It happens this evening in the National Football League. Oh, the lied. Philadelphia Eagles will travel to Texas to take on the Houston Texans in a game that is going to be so damn 
riveting. The Eagles are favored by 14, traveling into Dougie Davis Mills and Lovey Smith's house. Houston, if their fan base shows up, which I think they will, Ooh. that's a loud stadium. Okay? Yep. That's an intense stadium. Now, at the same exact time as this particular game is being played on Prime in Houston, there is World Series Game 5 taking place in Philadelphia where the Houston Astros had a no-no last night yeah. and re-even the series, the World Series, with the Philadelphia Phillies who couldn't find the baseball no, no, just couldn't. one night removed from a fucking dinger derby. Mm -hmm. So what were the... Ratings be for this Eagles Texans game. Mm. What will the crowd look like at the Texans stadium if they're there? They're loud. I hope that's the case because we've played there on a couple Thursday Ooh, yeah. nights and it has been absolutely electrifying. Sensing it might be a little bit different this particular evening. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt Connor. Great shirt. Thank you. Yeah, can you digs it? It's Tony. Someone sent it in. I don't know who did. I probably should have checked, but yeah, I love this thing. Don't think that shirt's for sale. No, it's not. I, I don't know who made it. Yeah. One of one. Well, but we appreciate whoever. Hey, thank yeah. you for yeah. that. Can you dig it? Brother. Sucker. Yeah. Sucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys. Uh, can you dig it? Tone digs. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's a great shirt. Tony. Tony, you look, so, you look I super cool. On I, ha I saw that shirt yesterday. I had simple instructions. I said, burn that fucking thing. It should never see the light of day. And where is it I at now? I said, sure. It's right on the main stage, isn't it? Boom. Right Boom. on the main stage. How am I supposed to burn something that should be in MoMA? You know? Come on. Whoever made that shirt, I appreciate you, but fuck you as well. Jeez. Whoever made that shirt, we appreciate you, and we'll be attempting to... Uh, split some revenue with you so we can sell that yeah, shirt. Mass producer. Because everybody should be wearing Can yes. You Dig It Sucker <laughs> shirts. Love you, Tone. Uh, Darius J. Butler is here on the stage every Wednesday, yes, Thursday. Yeah, season. Much. Yesterday's Everything DB was awesome. We appreciate you for it. A lot of fun. You haven't made 10 putts. Not fun. Five basketball shots in what? the last two days. But this hour could be different. You know why? Because this hour we're bringing in a good luck charm. Mm -hmm. This hour we're bringing in one of the most toxic humans in the history of toxic humans. Oh, yeah. He's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion. COVID survivor, which is big news, was in a building earlier today. Mask required. I said, whoa, am I A.J. Hawk? I thought this is America. What is going on? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Yeah! Yeah! Oh! A.J., how you doing? Diggs, why do you not like that shirt? It's that, awesome. Yeah. I yeah, guess I, I fucking knew that was. Can cool. we all get Why? one of those? You think you make one Just of those in a it. tank top? Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I'll probably. Oh, yeah. Be able to go, I could go to a t-shirt shop, maybe even after today, and just make have them make ten of them, fifteen. 20. Maybe stickers for laptops. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And water bottles. You know, kids put them on those water Ooh. bottles. Ooh, yes. Oh, Joe Denardo. Jokes on you, Zito. I threw away that sticker. We'll find it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Oh, there was stickers. Tony, we. Tony, we have that's our photo actually. Yeah, we can make. This we game. have that in a higher quality photo than the guy who made that. <laughs> yeah. Has we can make that much. I don't want to say we can make it better because that's an incredible piece of merch right there. But we can certainly mass produce the can you dig zits. And, you know, shout out to the person that made that. Give them a little rev share. Yeah, there. Tony, yeah. you look like fucking Chris Stapleton on that team. Oh. Oh. I don't know yeah. if anybody's ever said that's a good thing. Whoa! Oh, compliment. The guy can oh, sing his sing real. Yeah, I mean, he's Tennessee awesome. whiskey. Yeah, you said he can sing well. Okay. You know what, did he, Ty, what did Ty say? You know who he looks like what? a little bit? Who? Remember what that comedian? <laughs> oh, Bowser? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Bowers comedy? Oh, Bowers. Oh. There it is. Kind no, of you're like thinking of. Nice. You would put a beard on him? Kind of like Bowers. Just like yeah, yeah put, a, put a fifth of crown. Right? Shut crown, shut yeah. crown. Yeah, you need All right, let's move crown. on. Let's talk about football. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are playing the Houston Texans this evening. We're allowed to say that. Welcome back, Paffle. Hell yeah. Back, Hell yeah! I was made. I, I saw that earlier. That's good. I'm glad you got things worked out. Yeah, it was a good conversation. I'm, I'm appreciative of the people from Paffle Films talking to Paffle about the situation that Paffle Films has to explain to us whenever Paffle Films is on our side. You know, I feel it really did feel like Paffle Films, who we have a partnership with, was on our side in this entire thing. So we appreciate you, and we apologize for any ricochet shots that you potentially caught in the whole, the whole battle. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Paffle. That happens. A lot of people started covering that, AJ. Sports Illustrated, some other fucking people started writing about it. I'm like, oh, no, oh, no this ain't great. I mean, it's worthy of a conversation. And I don't know if people are actually on our side. A lot of people are saying a lot of good things. We appreciate them for that. But it was also an opportunity to bury the NFL, which I think a lot of people are uh, potentially taking advantage of, you know? Yeah, I think people are okay doing that. They have uh, – anytime you open up the door for that, people will jump on in, I think. 
So we're being used as a vessel for some people to point out other inadequacies of the NFL because the NFL is at the top of the – so I want to let everybody know, thank you for saying all the nice things and being on our side. And to the NFL, we didn't say all the other stuff, which is what we had been saying the entire time. Why are you fighting us? Yeah. Exactly. So happy we're moving on. Happy we got the Eagles and Texans tonight. Two score spread. 14 points on a primetime game. Kirk and Al traveling to Texas on Thursday night football. How do you see this one going, AJ? This could get ugly. We got Coach Pease Keys coming up here. He'll be the Philadelphia Eagles head coach, Nick Sirianni, in about 30 minutes or so right here on this stage. Excited to hear how he thinks the Philadelphia Eagles are going to attack the Houston Texans in all three phases. Texans have not looked – they've looked worse this year than they did last year, which makes no sense because the quarterback is coming into another year. Lovey Smith's been around. They're building a new culture. It seems like they have it under control a lot more than they had it last Last year, what are you expecting for this evening, and how pumped are Kirk and Al? You think? Oh, I bet <laughs> Al is just beside himself. He's so excited. Kirk as well. They will be juiced. I can't wait to watch the open. I want. I, let's see if uh, maybe we'll get some high flying like a first quarter, really get them going. But I don't know. Fourteen points seems like so much, but also the Eagles could win by forty. So I don't yeah, know. And anytime we talk about these primetime games and there's big spreads, it happened with the Packers and the Bills. Yeah. We're like, yeah. 10 and a half is a lot of points. That's a lot of points for a primetime game. Monday night, that's a lot of points for a primetime game. This night, we're like, that's yeah. a lot of points for a primetime game. Like, primetime games are different because all eyes are on. Everybody's trying to have their best game. Even the teams that stink, the players are trying to show out. Maybe they can get somewhere else, or maybe they can show the other teams that are certainly watching. Like, hey, I'm a pretty good player. If I become a free agent, go ahead and get me. I just – primetime games are a little bit different. It's harder for me to accept that big of a spread. Yeah. 14 points is so much, though. What have the Texans put on film that warrants the 14-point spread in your eyes, Darius? I mean, it's more so what – Phillies put on film thus far and then they're coming off a, t a game where they pulled their starters out with like nine minutes left and the guys are getting active recovery after the game so they'll be prepared for this game and then Houston they won't be missing their best weapon uh Brandon Cooks yeah. he won't be out there either so this this one should get ugly tonight yeah but, I mean nothing makes sense in the NFL this year so who knows we may get Texans up 10-0 well, in the first quarter. I, I think Kirk might potentially be watching the show every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Kirk, if you want to send a quote on your thoughts going into tonight's game via text message, yeah. I will certainly mm -hmm. read it into this microphone. <laughs> I assume Kirk and Al are very excited, you know, to continue this, you know, <laughs> blueprint of what they're going to be going forward on Thursday night. <laughs> they we deserve gotta, better. I think the interesting – what's that? They deserve better. Bro. The it's interesting thing – it's, it's, it's our first year being NFL commentators together. But Kirk yeah. is the guy. Yes. Yeah. Al is the guy. Oh, yeah. And then now they're getting – and Troy kind of talked about this. Troy Aikman, whenever he was broached by, with the subject of Thursday Night Football before he goes to Monday night, he said uh, – they asked him if the ratings matter, you know, and your decision of where you're going to go, Troy, because he was a free agent. Do the ratings matter? Like Thursday night's ratings aren't as good, and who knows what the uh, streaming – at the time they didn't know the streaming numbers were going to be able to be 11, 12, 13 million. They thought it was going to be much left, less because it was an exclusive platform and everything like that. And he said the ratings are indicative of the games. He said, so the ratings go hand in hand with how good the games are, and that is certainly something that is of interest for me whenever I talk. And I found it to be fascinating because, it, you know, because Kirk – or Troy – you know, he didn't say no. He didn't say, like, the ratings are going to be low. He didn't say – he didn't bury anybody. But he did say, like, I've been doing this a long time. My life's a lot better when the games are fucking good yeah. than when the games are bad. And it feels like a lot of these Thursday night games started out hot, right? Started out banger, banger. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to project out into a season, we haven't been able to – how are you doing gambling on the NFL yeah. right now? They are kicking my ass right now. So Darius, incredibly heady football player, one of the smartest football players, knows people, basically every single team. He's getting his ass kicked gambling. I'm getting my ass kicked gambling. I think AJ's getting his ass kicked gambling. I think everybody's basically taking yeah. it on the shins when it comes. So the schedule makers that have to predict what teams are going to be good eight weeks into the season, ten weeks into the season, with <laughs> zero chance of flexing because it's on a Thursday or mm, a Sunday. You, yeah. can't, you, won't, oh. you can't move a Sunday team to a Thursday team because of fairness and competitive balance and everything like that. So it's almost set up for failure. But the schedule makers, especially with how this season has gone, have not gotten it right. And who could blame them? You know, who could fucking... How do, you got to get lucky. You got to... The schedule makers, yeah, I'm sure they put a ton of time into it trying to figure out when to have these matchups, whatever, but it's a guess, too. They, they absolutely have to get lucky and hope... Like the Texans, we thought they'd be better than they were. We didn't think Cooks is going to be out tonight for, what, personal reasons because he didn't get traded? Is yeah. that what's going on? Yeah, and don't yeah. take my kindness for weakness. I'm fucking sick of this bullshit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, what Cooks said is, dude, 19 million guaranteed or 18 million guaranteed yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. So him missing a game is a massive check... 
and it probably gets rid of some guarantees. There's some, you know, detrimental to the club type shit oh, that they can man. definitely put Damn. in there. He's supposed to get 18 million. He's missing a game, missed the practice. Who knows how that'll all end up? We're not on that business. Kirk Herbstreit has replied. Okay. He said, elated about this nice. matchup. Damn right. No. Right. Expect the unexpected. Yeah. I've called a lot <laughs> of games on Saturdays where the average margin was 30 to 35. <laughs> mm. He said, tonight will be awesome. Okay, so, hey, we like that, Herbie. Yeah. Thanks, Kirk. And you're right. Expect the unexpected. This NFL season has been bananas, but these Thursday night games, I do wish we could somehow figure out how to kick off each NFL week in a much more explosive fashion. Because if it was a celebration every Thursday night, like a showcase, like Sunday Night Football is on Thursdays, it would be awesome for all parties involved. NFL, prime, fans, teams, you get a long weekend afterwards, you almost earn the Thursday night game. Like, hey, if you get there. But then on the flip side, if one team has five Thursday night games, another team has two Thursday night games, or one Thursday night game, it's like, where's the competitive balance? And it's just, I don't know how you fix it. I don't know how you fix the Thursday night thing. I honestly have no idea. Well, especially when you're pro trying to like project what teams are going to be. Like on paper, before the season, the Colts-Broncos game should have been a great Thursday night game. And then like, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, exactly. yeah. the way a lot the, of money. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor. I mean, the, whole, the entire thing. And then injuries happen and stuff like that. But every team gets one primetime game, right? So like even these teams like the Texans, who automatically get a primetime game, it feels like Thursday is the one that they get. Like, oh, yeah. It, Lions are the same thing. Like, the Lions, they'll be on Thursday night. It feels like that's kind of the scapegoat for the primetime teams that just stink, that have to be on, you know, national television, and they just throw them on Thursdays instead of doing, like, the Sunday night football hey, or the Monday night. Can you pull that graphic up again of how many billions everybody has? <laughs> Can you, can you please pull These that Thursday up? games used to be all divisional, too, right? They used, used to, be, to be. Remember, they used to do the uniform. It yeah, used to be like a rush. rush. Yeah. It used course. to be yeah. a thing. But then I think teams got pissed off that they were having such important games on three days of rest. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of teams were like, you can't be giving us the fucking, like, our division title game, basically, yeah. Yeah. on three days rest. So there's, like, so many people that are not happy about the Thursday games while the schedule person is trying to project and has to live by codes. It's kind of a setup for failure. Bezos, though, he obviously, he has $171 billion. <laughs> Let's assume that these Thursday night games are going to get figured out if Prime is going to be the exclusive uh, distributor of those games. Well, forward. and like you mentioned, like they kind of duped everyone because the first one they had was Chiefs Chargers. So it's oh, yeah. like, hey, we're, we're starting this thing with a bang. These games are going to be unbelievable. And also to your point, like, in a weird year where basically it's like there are six or seven good teams and everyone else has kind of stunk or just not been very entertaining, like there's no way they would have been able to project that. You know, I mean, you even look at like I think awesome. next week's Thursday night game is Packers-Titans maybe, and it's like same deal. At the start of the season, you're looking at that, and uh -huh. it's like, oh, this is going to be unbelievable. And then the Packers are what they are right now. It's just like you – there, there's six or seven teams who are entertaining to watch every single week, and then you really don't know what you're getting kind of with everyone else. I just got a text from somebody else that said all primetime games have kind of stunk, haven't they? They have. Basically. That's a, that's a with pretty, the exception. Point. Well, that's yeah, a pretty, that's a pretty good point. I don't want to say that person's name because that person is hilarious and tied into the NFL a little bit. But that person said all primetime. What are, we, what are you yeah. even talking about? <laughs> yeah. All primetime games have been bad <laughs> yeah. for the NFL. Right? But I think Thursday nights have had an extension of – not even being able to be good. I think Monday they're going to work a flex in. Yeah, that's right. I think they're talking mm -hmm. about working a Monday flex in either next year or the season after that because ESPN wanted some sort of ability to make it a much better game because how Monday Night Football games had become. Thursday, I don't think they'll ever be able to flex. You can't. Well, is, I don't think Thursday you'll ever be able no. to flex. Is it sure next week. year with the streaming services where every game is up? Like it doesn't matter which uh, – Markets those are, are, I think, afternoon games, right? Or those yeah, I think it's just that's CB, CBS and, and Fox. Fox. So it's strictly the 1 4 and 4 o'clock. I think the 4 o'clock games. I think it's the... Uh, but then how would flexing work? Flexing is just how Sunday Night Football does it. Sunday Night Football, after week 7, I think, or after week 6, so in this time, they can flex out a game yeah. and flex in that another game. Cool, so if CBS too. or Fox... It used to be that a big be deal. Cool, hey, you I got flex. We prime got flex time. in the prime time. Yeah, yeah that means, oh, we're having a good season. Mm -hmm. Then if you're on the flip side of that... Hey, you guys got flexed to fucking one o'clock. Oh, we fucking Duh, suck. God. Shit. Damn. We are bad. Stink. <laughs> we are so bad. There's a couple teams that they never flex out if they have a big fan base. You know, the Cowboys are always going to be on prime yep. time, yep. no matter how good they Great. are or whatever. And I don't know if NBC uses that flex as much as I would. 
if yeah. I was this year. Probably a lot of work. I would imagine there's a lot of logistics involved. <laughs> trying to flex yeah. a game, just even to do that, it's got to be a lot of work for and a this, lot of people. This might be ignorant of me to say because I see this fucking game day crew do what the game day crew does. Where they're tra- each, they find out like four days or five days beforehand mm-hmm. where they're headed to, and they take an entire setup and get there, and the amount That's of trucks crazy. and all the work that they have to do. You're talking about that type of thing, right? Like setting up the stadium and getting everything. Yeah, ready. just everything of like the all the logistics of changing the game time. Like, yeah, all of it. I don't know. It just all seems overwhelming to me. But when guess what? When each team is worth billions and billions of dollars, mm-hmm. I get why it happens. It seems by and large that NBC typically, at least over the last like probably seven to ten years. Sunday Night Football usually has the best slate because it's the number one show in America, too. Like, I feel like they have done, like... The flexing is a big deal. Yeah. For sure. Flexing is a massive deal. Yeah. I, I don't know how you do that with Thursdays. I don't know how you do it with Thursdays. Yeah, people it's, blame it's really, the short rest for the bad games. Are people saying, oh, these guys are still banged up from the week before? They only have three, four days rest? It's a more basic system yeah. that's being run on Thursdays, right? Once you start to get run, I don't know, though. Once you get rolling and you're in the season, yeah, you gameplay might be a little bit condensed but it's still for people so you think that's blown out of proportion aj saying that the games are somewhat duds because players may not be as healthy as they would be three days later or whatever that's i don't i think that's like do you think it's an easy much easier strategy going into those thursday night games than sunday games do you think that's our game plan wise yeah uh not at this point in the season i think you kind of got what you do what you do well you can still add your yeah you can still add your wrinkles in with walkthrough like walkthrough pace or um (laughs) or meetings and shit like that obviously you're not getting those full practice times but week nine like you don't need to you know be getting your inside run like you can go a couple days not good for the nfl that this is our conversation about tonight's game yeah Yeah. tonight's (laughs) game our conversation about tonight's game is how can we make these thursday night games better so we don't have to have tonight's game ever again kind of disrespectful to the texans we do apologize you are what your record says you are and kind of disrespectful to the eagles that are electrifying to watch Mm -hmm. can't wait to watch the eagles do what the eagles do tonight offensive side they fly around defensive side we saw some clips from darius where they're fucking untouchable in special teams they got good team so this is not a knock on these teams but it is a it would be much better if our week started off can you go to that uh, flex 101 that was just pulled up here so begins sunday of week five in effect during weeks five through 18 up to two games may be flexed into sunday night between weeks five and ten only sunday afternoon games are subject to being moved into the sunday night window the game that has been tentatively scheduled for sunday night during flex weeks will be listed at 8 15. the majority of games on sunday will be listed at 1 p.m during flex weeks except for games placed in pacific or mountain time zones which will be listed at 405 4 15. no impact on thursday or monday night games the nfl will decide and announce as early as possible the game being played at 8 15 the announcement will come no later than 12 days mm. prior to the game the nfl may also announce moving to 405 and 425 week 18 start time changes could be decided on six days notice nbc sunday night time slot flex weeks will list the game that has been tentatively scheduled for sunday night fans and ticket holders must be aware that the games might be flex nfl schedules all games teams will be informed as soon as they are no longer under consideration or eligible for a move sunday night so that's quite a weapon for Sunday Night Football to have. Yeah, yeah. that's Huge. A, they had to do. Huge. They had to do all of that. They had to create all of these rules so that Sunday Night Football wouldn't be smart. a fucking Eagles versus Texans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that feels like the smart decision. I assume they had to pay for all this shit to be created too. Oh, yeah. NBC to get this particular right. So do you think like today or like earlier this week they're calling the Lions and the Texans and be like, you guys are never going to fuck <laughs> on Sunday night? <laughs> Sorry. You guys going to be listening to one. Do you think they have yeah. to call Forever. them? I don't even know if they have to call them. Well, well they probably they probably know. assume at this point. Lions actually don't have a prime time game this year. We just play at 12:30 on Thanksgiving. So, you guys steal That's prime time. You guys steal Thanksgiving joy from yes. everybody Every in America. Every family in America. <laughs> Every year. And that counts as you know, a primetime game for you guys. Which I love. Hey, way to go. Bye, I guys. love the Thanksgiving game. It's best. Who did I hated the year? Thanksgiving game. We played on New Year's Eve that year, or Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve that year as well. A lot. Every holiday we played on. Thanksgiving when we lost by a lot. Well, that Christmas year you had Eve, to play we were in London. Way in Cali, too. Raiders, yeah. Or was that New Year's Eve? No, Christmas Eve. Because Christmas I was supposed to get a touchdown. I remember I got tackled. A guy hit my leg so hard it went into my other leg, gave me a That's bruise. That's the game mm-hmm. I got. <laughs> and acted like you weren't? Yeah, right? I took a little, Gosh, a little nap, nap. I'm good, I'm good. It was also the game, and I don't want to bring this up for Raiders oh. fans. Oh, yeah. Derek Carr. MVP year. Kind of was yeah, great. and then they lost to the Texans in the playoffs, right? Kind of hasn't been the same since. Yeah. It was gruesome. Yeah. We won, though. I mean, I think we won that game. Pretty sure. The quarterbacks in that Texans Raiders, Raiders game were fucking awesome. Yeah. Who were they? Michigan Con- State legend Connor Cook. Connor Cook. And yeah. 
I can't remember who played for the Tom Savage. See, that's one of those games we'd be Savage. looking to flex out of right there. Yeah. But it was a playoff game, so I had to do it. Uh, let's pivot a little bit to what's happening this weekend that's <laughs> massive in the horse world. So I don't know everything about the horse world, but from what I learned about this weekend's races, I think the horse people have been doing it fucking ass backwards <laughs> since 1910. Yep. This weekend is the Breeders' Cup. These are the fastest horses on fucking earth that are racing. Mm -hmm. These are four- and five-year-olds that are fully mature and faster than every other horse in the world. Fast any Kentucky Derby horses? Yes. Yeah. Kentucky Derby horses have to be under the age of three. That rule was instated in 1910 to make it more fan, uh, fair to gamble on. Oh. So the fastest horses, the year four, year five horses, all race in the Breeders' Cup. They do not race in the Triple Crown. Feels like that should be flipped. The name is Breeders' Cup. They just got bred. They're young fucking horses. They're not as fast as the older horses. Put them in this. Have the Triple Crown be the fastest fucking horses on earth. Nonetheless, I digress. I don't know enough to make that opinion. The person joining us now does. A man has been around horses his entire life. He has given us zero winners, but always gives us great information. Ladies and gentlemen, TVG Mike. Yeah, Mike. Mike. What's up, man? Hello, everyone. How you doing? Hey. And yeah, you got it right. The best horses in the world are running this weekend. Uh, the Derby is great. It's novelty. It's three-year-olds, but... We've got freaks running this weekend, and there's 50, there's 14 races. There's nine on Saturday, five on 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 Friday. It's going to be awesome. Okay, so everything I said there is right. Like the people that we've heard about, the horses that we've heard about from the Triple Crown, like a couple years ago, all the favorites. Like, hey, this horse is this. This is going to be the best horse. They then get to a point where they're better, faster, stronger, more mature, more race ready, and they race in the Breeders' Cup, not the one that's on every single television three times a year. Right, so what you're Why? talking about is the Breeders' Cup. Because, oh. well, because here's the thing: the Derby has just been a tradition. The Derby winner's actually running in the Breeders' Cup, but even though he won the Derby, he's going to be twenty to one. He's so far up against it against the horses he's running in the Breeders' Cup Classic. The again. fastest That's horse in the Derby can't fucking sniff the ass of the horses that are racing <laughs> yeah. in Breeders' Cup this year. Right. That's exactly right. And I'll tell you what: there's there's one horse in particular that you guys need to know should be a household name. This is, you know, Wilt Chamberlain-level talent of a horse named Flightline. Once in a generation, once in a lifetime animal. You're not going to get great odds, but the race is going to be over in two minutes. So if you want a fast return, he's probably going to be three to five come post time. He'll be one of the shortest priced favorites in Breeders' Cup history, but he's an absolute freak. He's only run five times. He's won five times. Wow. He won his last race by almost 20 lengths. I mean, literally, there wasn't another horse on the screen. They couldn't zoom the cameras out far enough to see how badly he was beating everybody else. And the horse that finished second won the Dubai World Cup, which is a $12 million race they run in the desert over on the Arabian Peninsula. Whoa. So it was no slouch there, but he's an absolute freak. Seven and if there's million. one name you're going to remember in the sport of horse racing, it's Flightline. He's, he's up there with American Pharaoh. He's up there with Spectacular Bid. There's some people that have been making comparisons to Secretariat. Whoa. He's that kind of animal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but all those horses we heard about from the Triple Crown, they're all little babies. Yeah. They couldn't fucking be on the same track as Fr Flightline. Who's a five-year-old, four-year-old? How old's Flightline? Yes, he is He is a four-year-old now. He didn't make his debut until late in his three-year-old year. And he oh, look, look at, at the legs. that pony. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, oh, fucking oh, oh. TVG, Mike. That's Boom. one horsepower. Those are good haunches. Yeah, it is. How many hands How many hands is Flightline here? I think he's 16 hands. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> his identifying mark on his back right hip, he's got a scar right on his ass. When he was a yearling, he was in the paddock, and he ran into a fence. And so he's got this really gnarly scar. It's kind of like the, 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 the little quirkism about him. So he's not totally perfect, but he moves perfect. He's all these things that could bore you out with biomechanics and all the clockers in the morning. But Gritty. the fact of the matter Great is hooves. he's faster than everybody else. He can run farther than anybody else, and he just gets better and better with each start. I, seriously, I've never seen a horse that was this good. The only horses I put in that category, maybe Zenyatta, maybe American Pharaoh who won the Triple Crown, maybe a horse named Arrowgate, but other than that, I mean, he is just Zendaya. a freak. Got a baby flight line? I'm going to put TPG House Mike, so if flight line goes on and dominates the Breeders' Cup, where does he go from there? Just stud him out and make millions, or is there yeah. more races for him now? He can't go to the Derby, obviously. Glue. Well, here's the deal. So usually when a horse is this talented and accomplished this much, there's a lot of temptation to – Put him out to breeding a little bit early, right? Say, okay, we've done more than we can do. The connections have committed to running him after the Breeders' Cup. So this race is worth $6 million. There's the Pegasus in January, which is worth $3 million. There's a race in Saudi Arabia worth $20 million. Whoa. And then there's another race in Dubai a month okay, after Saudi? that worth $12 million. We'll go to Saudi. 
I twenty mil. I think they're going to run in two of those three races. Yeah, they might go to Saudi. They're, they're either going to run in the Saudi Cup or run Pegasus oh, and then horse. Dubai World Cup. So I think we'll see this horse run a couple more times. They could retire this horse right now and make $60, $70, 80000000 million breeding them Jesus. per year. I mean, he's that. Per good. year. So This uh, motherfucker yeah. isn't in the Derby. Why do, I get, keep, why do I keep getting told that the Derby matters? And uh, the one over there in Baltimore, the Preak Nasty, mm -hmm. and that other one in Belmont. New York, Belmont. Jeez. How come I'm told that those are the big ones when Flightline, too old for those races, but he would lap those, like if he was in the Derby, he would be finished and they'd still be on the other side, like on the uh, 200 four by two type situation, you'd be all the way back there on the corner. Is that is that the type of separation we're talking about from the Kentucky Derby type races? You'll yes, and you'll see that separation on Saturday because he's running against the Derby winner. Rich Strike who won the Derby is gonna go post and take strike. him off. Yeah. But he, he'll he'll, he'll he be a hundred lengths behind him. <laughs> So how come you horse people aren't marketing this breed? Hey, this is the biggest weekend in horse racing. Let's move this to the spring yeah. so that we don't have to w compete with football. Let's get this thing in. Let's get the derby into the spring. Yeah. Let these little young horses, okay, see if they can make it to the fucking adult league in the Breeders' Cup. How come it's not marketed more? Is it is just more young horses to bet on? There's better, like, why is it the Breeders' Cup not talked about in the same fashion? I, it's, it's newer. It didn't start until 1984. And... In the 80s, horse racing was pretty big, but every other sport has surpassed what racing was back in the heyday. I mean, 100 years ago, it was boxing, baseball, and horse racing, and that was it. No one watched football, basketball, or, or, or the NHL. It's just been passed up. But the Breeders' Cup, it's, you know, it's two days of racing. You have two-year-olds. You have horses running short. You have horses running long. You have horses running on the grass. You have all divisions, right? So it's two days of championship racing. It's, it's a marathon of just the best sport you could possibly see and the best wagering. I mean, you want to talk about gambling opportunities? Oh, yeah. I could spend. I've just spent a week of doing shows, just talking about horses in their last works and the horses you know you're going to bet on and gambling strategies. You'll you'll sit there and study like exams in law school, trying to figure out who's going to win. It's that good. But the money, I mean, there's there's tens of millions of dollars bet on every single race. It's just obscene the amount of going amount of money going back and forth. Hell yeah! I just think Breeders' Cup deserves a little bit more respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are the horses yeah. that we are looking yeah. to have. Whenever we inevitably go to war, these are the horses Bingo. that we want to be right. These are the biggest, the strongest, the fastest, the most mature. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, how can you bet on these derby ones? These little yearlings, they, say, they, they don't suck. know. They don't know. We don't know what they're going to do. No. These four and five year old bull fillies. No. There's a right fourth race. The fillies are just going to be wide open. Mine. We know everything about them. This is where we take money from FanDuel. <laughs> this is where we take money from TVG. This is when we know. What horses are going to show up? Sounds like flight lines, the mortgage. I think Bruce is going to have a question for you on another horse. Yeah, Mike. So are you giving Epicenter no chance at all in the Classic? We're just crowning flight line? So apparently oh, Epicenter apparently. is another race, mm -hmm. uh, another horse that is in the race mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that against Bruce, that Bruce flight liked, line. Okay. Yeah, Bruce liked and wanted to bet on. Well, here's, he, here's the thing about Epicenter. He is an excellent horse, right? I can oh, give you some other horses. Like, like Epicenter... Um, you know, Hot Rod Charlie, all these rich strike. And any other year, these would be horses that would get top billing. Taba is a horse that Taba? You know, Taba. Bob Baffert was. Taba. Yeah, Taba was a horse that Bob Baffert un yeah, unleashed that and is an absolute freak. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Taba could be a favorite in the Breeders' Cup Classic any other year. Same with Epicenter. But they're just, they're running into a buzzsaw, right? They're running into perhaps the best horse we've seen in the last 50 years. It's it's unbelievable the kind of talent. The, the, the way he beat the field in his last race, the TVG Thanks Pacific so Classic, the way he won the race prior to that, the Manhattan, he did it against the best horses in the world. I mean, these were horses that we thought were going to be, you know, as as good as any on the race. And he made them look like cheap, cheap horses. Life is good is another one he's taken on. He was a horse that at the beginning of the year, we were like, well, he's going to have a championship campaign. But Whoa. then here comes, then here comes flight line and everything. He's, he's only raced three times. This will be the shortest campaign. He's going to win. He's going to win horse of the year. And this will be the shortest campaign he's raced. Three times in this this to come up. He's only raced twice this year. It'll be his third start. His start prior to that was December 26th. He's just so much better than everybody else. It's not that these horses aren't good. It's not that life is good isn't an excellent racehorse and he's very fast and he wouldn't be favored in a race like this under normal circumstances. It's just that he's this horse is so superior. He's freakishly talented and he's he has effortless speed. He can go faster than anybody else without blowing hard at all. He doesn't even take a deep breath. Oh. And then when they get to the, they come around the turn, they, he turns on the afterburners. He just, he pulls away from them. Uh, no the chance. best quote after, after the TVG, after the TVG Pacific Classic, Bob Baffert had a horse named 
uh, Country Grammar, who's made about $10 million this year in earnings for these dads. He was second in Saudi. Ah, he won the Dubai World Cup. He was 20 lengths in behind flight line, and Baffert comes down and laughing. He goes, hey, my horse thinks he won. <laughs> there was nobody in front of him. They were separated. He was separated by, by a football field. It was unbelievable. Yeah, you said flight lines last win was by 20 lengths. Jesus. Uh, that's against the other fastest horses in the world, all of which would win the Kentucky Derby, the Preak Nasty. What? And the Belmont. This is the weekend we need to be paying attention. The Breeders' Cup tie. I think you have a question for TVG, Mike. Yeah, I do. You mentioned him a couple times there, Mike. Uh, does that cheating son of a bitch, Bob Baffert, have a uh, horse <laughs> in the race this weekend, or what? Absolutely. He's got he's got Taba. Um, so Taba is not only does he have Taba in the um, Friday, he's got Cave Rock in a two year old race, the the Fanduel Juvenile, and Cave the the shortest prices of the weekend as well. Um, yeah, he's got Taba, and Taba is he's freakishly fast, right? Like where he will run a race that is just eye popping. He won the Santa Anita Derby in his second career start, which is just an unheard of thing. It's like winning Olympic gold in your second competition on you know the, on the uneven bars in gymnastics. It just you don't see it happen to jump that kind of a level. And he's been very good all year, but he's another one that's lightly raced. He's just any other year he would be a horse like yeah i'm looking forward to this one but baffert's coming fully loaded he's got that he's got another horse called laurel river in the dirt mile he's gonna have um like i said cave rocket and, and another one in the in the vanduul juvenile it's just he's got a he's always has a ton of good horses and what happens in this industry is when you have a good horse and you want to win the derby you want to win a breeder's cup race you have the highest out an owner is going to be prone to send it to a bob baffert because he has such great success and as far as the cheating thing I mean, it's it's our fault as an industry. Well, he had a legal medication overage. He it was adjudicated. He was suspended the ninety days. The Derby went and was vacated. But he's in good standing in this, right? As far as any governing body, he's okay. There's still Churchill Downs as a private property saying you're not allowed to run in the Derby for two years. He's already served one year of that. But in the rest of the game, he's in good standing. It's like anything else. Any whether a player gets a suspension for you know unknowingly having a, a banned substance in one of their tests or if there's something along those lines but he didn't have you know it wasn't like they found him with snail venom that makes horses run 100 miles an Ooh. hour it was it was a legal medicinal you know it was beta methazone <laughs> which if it was in if oh, the wait. derby was run in california oh, wait, it would have been a 500 dollars fine and no suspension <laughs> get me the snail venom my game. way clean suit ball time is my <laughs> Hey, Mike, how do they get the horses over to Dubai or Saudi Arabia? Has an American horse ever won over there, too? Great great question, AJ. Uh, the, Amer the, the American horses dominate in Dubai on the dirt races. Hell <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! yeah Saudi That's money. what I thought! Sorry about it. Sorry about it. And, and by the way, they, get, they, they, they send the horses there over by FedEx. That's true. They'll, they'll FedEx them over there. Like what FedEx had a plane, plane? plane? Golf the horse on underneath. Thank you, and one yep. of those planes? Yep. FedEx. Underneath? Yep. Probably comes out of Indianapolis. This is the. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if they've got to fly to the hub in Atlanta first, but yeah, they'll make it. They'll fly them over the North Pole right to Dubai. Wow! What? The oh, North shit. Pole. Yep. Thank you All right, that. TVG Mike, we appreciate you every time. How do we bet on this this weekend? Fanduel has horse racing. Is it linked up with my sports book? Fan. Or? Yeah, it's Fanduel Racing. They have a Fanduel Racing app. It's a separate app. You can download it. Good Real app. easy. They got a promotion going on. It's like a hundred dollar free first. That's called a no sweat bet. Or something like that. Just take the hundred bucks and bet it on flight line. Watch the race, and then you increase your bankroll to one fifty, one sixty in in two minutes. It's better than the stock market. Oh, well, whoa, slow down. Hey, Dow yeah. and S and P down right now. Flight lines up, just like the Breeders' Cup. We can't thank you enough, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> from Fanduel TV in the Fanduel Racing app. TVG, my. Yeah, All right, let's take a break. Okay, let's take a break, and you know what's coming on the other side. I don't let's understand go. why the best horses aren't racing in the biggest races. I don't. Uh, yeah, I had no clue. That's how, like before I was so went to the mad back in the day too. I assume they were all, I don't know, I was like, are they all ages? I didn't know anything about that. But now that you say this with the Breeders' Cup, it, yeah, none of it makes sense. I guess so. Remember, we talked to him about this, I think, one of the last races where he was like, can't wait to join you again for the Breeders' Cup. And I said, what's the Breeders' Cup? And he explained it. And my first thought was, <laughs> That's so those are, the, those are the professionals. <laughs> yeah. Boy, this is like college ball. Those are the pros? <laughs> I don't think I, why are you guys, what's the whole I think horses, just because it's not as old. It's not the Breeders' Cup is not as old as those other races. I guess that's yeah. all. That's the only reason. I guess I think it they is. have it backwards though. I think they have it back like that Kentucky Feels Derby. Like Flight line should be in the fucking Kentucky Derby. Yes, right. Yes. That's our biggest race. That's our uh -huh. most heralded race. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got a winner though. We got a lock. 
This thing can't lose. TVG Mike has never got one right on this show. Never has it. Sounds like he wasn't. He's the first one. He wasn't very straying. confident. He, he wasn't at all. He no. wasn't. He, the last couple times he came on the show, he started fucking around with other races. Mm -hmm. Race seven, horse six, good number, good odds. Blah, 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 blah. None of those have ever hit. Ever. Ever. So like him just going, I got, a, I got a plan. Flight line won by 20 lengths the last time. Mm -hmm. Flight, not good odds. You're, this is not good odds. I'm giving you a fucking, it's a long one. Flight line's the winner. TVG Mike is trying to get a one in that first column yeah. on this show. I respect it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. they're making 70 to $80 million a year off flight lines goo, he better fucking, you know, lap the field this weekend. No reason to even watch the race, actually. That's how you get your NFL team. Get one of these fucking horses. Get flight line. Get five, five flight line. You get yeah, five of those horses? Yep. That's investing in something real. Yeah. What is it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Semen. Boom. From horses. That's right. Good investment. Good you go stud them out. You get a Have gallon of cum. Think about 30, that. 40 times a day. Two gallons of cum. That's 250. Three gallons of cum. What? <laughs> it's 250 <laughs> million dollars a year. Ten years from now, you could own two teams. Bruce. Right. Bruce owned the horse. He Max did. player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's all down. Well, let's let, all down. Let the owners down. It's and now a, it's, it's well, know. the owners mishandled it. Yeah. Actually, yeah. is how people are talking about Max Player. It's in a fourth grade classroom right exactly. now. A big old bottle of Elmer's glue, helping out <laughs> arts and crafts. That's right. Yeah, I like that moment of silence for Max Player <laughs> for sure. But before we get there, Bruce. Yep. How come Flightline didn't race in his first two years? Is it because he ran into a fence and has that big scar, so he didn't develop until he was later? Why would they not want him in the biggest races? Why is that rule the way it is? You think, Bruce? Um, it, it's for Parodi in the actual Kentucky Derby for for <laughs> betting on it. They want it no, to no. be... Parody. Parody. Yes, yes. <laughs> Parity. You got to yes. say it with Parity. an English accent. Parody. Parody is the law. Yeah. Bruce, yeah. when you bought Max Player, did you know we're going to kill this thing and make it a bunch of glue <laughs> right no. away? So actually, um, it, it ran super well at Aqueduct, which is like uh, the, the winter New York course, which kind of stinks. Um, is that Max Player? Yeah, yeah that's Max Player. Why is, the it, why is it so yeah. dirty? And Did then, you ever clean your horse <laughs> in the middle of a race? <laughs> it's, it's, mud. Mud. it's a mudder. It's a yeah, mudder, it's mud. dude. Oh, it's a dirt mile? Yeah, it's dirt. <laughs> dirt probably more than a mile. Um, Idiot. But it, <laughs> Max, <laughs> Max, I mean, look, I like baseball more than I like this shit, and I hate baseball. But I think if we would see <laughs> horse races. the greatest horse of all time, Flightline, yeah. yeah. Chamberlain. if it would have been marketed like the Kentucky Dirt, that motherfucker would have been on Sunday Night Football. Yeah. Hey, wait till you mm -hmm. see. Like, the way they would have marketed it would have been. Bruce should take you to Keeneland this weekend. It's a quick drive. Uh, you thinking I'm about okay. going? Aren't you thinking about going, Bruce? I, I was, yeah. Kind I of, was. Kind was. of fell through. Who owns Flightline? Do we know? Uh, I can check. Better not be those no. Saudi Dubai no. horse races. No, it's American no, no. horse. American crazy. Those yeah. races are wild. I've stayed up to watch the, the ones Let's out in scar. Saudi. They are crazy. Do they shoot the loser in the head? No, it's <laughs> just like all. Oh, no. For no. other <laughs> No, but but the prince is like for sure there, and they like show him. They allegedly, like cut to allegedly, him. allegedly, sharp allegedly. blade, and they slice the head allegedly, right allegedly, off. Allegedly, oh, allegedly, allegedly, me. allegedly. That's on me. Let's get to a break. Allegedly, uh, a lot of alleged today. We have to say that because these are all, I mean, documented. But yeah, yeah, we'll say alleged. We'll just continue to say that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. An attack is imminent on Saudi Arabia. Allegedly, Whoa. this is what some headline I saw. WWE Crown Jewel tomorrow. Oh, in nice. Saudi Arabia. That's why. Nice. That's why it came up into some of the uh, nice. some of the things that I saw because WWE is still going even though there is a threat level of whatever. And I assume this is a normal thing. It's just being talked about now because this is happening. Like whenever we went over to Japan, the threat level was very high, very, very, very high. Whenever we got there, I did not know before going that it was very <laughs> high. Then as soon as I get there, they're like, "Oh uh, yeah, we're not going to go to a couple different spots." And I go like, "Why? It was part of the plan." <laughs> I was going to be pretty good. Can't go there right now. Why is that? Threat level. Jeez. We're high right now, but they're much higher or whatever. I'm like, is this an act of fucking, are we in the middle of war right now? Any moment with the way tensions <laughs> are. Wow. Man, they don't speak my language at all here. I'm stuck. We're in the Ooh. middle of a war. I'm in, uh, I'm in Japan. Yeah. Nothing happened. Had a great time. Everybody was very nice. But I wonder if threat levels are always just kind of kept. Like COVID. Up there. Remember COVID had threat levels too in different colors we were in. Threat level different midnight. times. Zero just broke uh, some news in my ear. Not about this. Changing subject, going back. Jay-Z and Jeff Bezos both uh, interested in 
buying the commanders. Ooh. I wonder if that's together or against each other. Here we go. Because Jay-Z, I fucking love everything you're about. You're a good businessman. The way you want about doing everything, hmm. 4040 Club, uh, the business, the way you handled it, but owning Make your own business, shit, yeah. doing everything you've you've done financially. You've been an incredible businessman. He's tied in with the NFL too. He is. He's uh, one of the executives there. With that being said, if he ain't with the guy that's on the other side of the screen right there, he ain't going to be able to outbid him. No. So if they're together, that'd be a good move by Bezos and by Jay-Z. And that's all Jay-Z has really done since I've seen him. True. Uh, do business moves and make good ones. That'd be a hell of a little team to start the fucking DC team back over from scratch, which I think is what they're going to inevitably have to do. Yeah, that is, that, that'd be sweet. They I should do that. And he's owned, because he, he's a part owner of the Brooklyn Nets, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So he's already um, been in that. Yep, selling rocks near the bricks a couple blocks down, selling yeah. right there. I'm still had trying had to throw too. around. Yeah, could go for 80. Something like that. Oh, rock Nation. Agency. But yeah, didn't he have an agency? Yeah, he might still have that. It might be why he had to get out of uh, ownership. The article says they're both interested and we're told, as in TMZ is told, a partnership between the men is on the table. That, oh, that nice. seems Here to be go. the Move. only way Jay-Z could get in in this particular case if it's just a money thing. But with that being said, Jay-Z, incredible businessman. Let's assume he knows that as well. Yeah. Okay, that's the winner, it sounds yep. like. Mm -hmm. Haven't even got into the auction <laughs> or into any of the bidding. <laughs> nope. Congrats to Bezos and Jay-Z on the Washington Congrats. team. Yeah. All right, let's take five on the other side. Let's learn about two teams that we don't know enough about yet. On the other side of this break, we will go inside the Philadelphia Eagles team meeting room on Monday morning with Coach Sirianni. That's right, Coach B's keys is in five. Take five. Take five. Hey! Not be around the bush, right, Ty? That's what we say. Hey, Ty, what do we say usually? No more beating around the bush. Can't be around the bush, Ty, can we? That's right, no beating around the bush. Oh, I'm sorry, Coach Lou Holtz, is that what we say? <laughs> no more beating around the bush. That's right, AJ. <laughs> and joining you, Coach, is who? Uh, U.S. Army Captain Nathan Algren Pata, the last samurai, Tom Cruise. Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. Yeah! Damn. Cowboys dressed as? Formerly known as Anthony John Soprano. You Tony's. know him as Tony Soprano. Oh! 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 Oh. Middle of court, obviously dirty, who is the exact replica of Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Hey, appreciate you, Russ. Good win in London. Hey, Russ. 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 Foxy, what are you? Just a lion fan. Just say it with me real quick. <laughs> Three words. Same, Same old lions. lions. Peacemaker, John Cena. Pleasure to help you out. <laughs> is that who I think it is? Hey, AJ, it's good to see you again. I haven't seen you since rookie year. I brought you a gift. Uh, I got this briefcase full of money here. The governor told me it was something about welfare. I told him, just tell them farewell to all those pores and their money. This is ours now. AJ Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Who's that? What's up, guys? Sorry, I've had to kind of move this mouth a little bit. Kind of <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm no one in particular. I'm just a random Chuck Berry fan. But this <laughs> Very, very claustrophobic already, but I'm going to make it ride for the next two or three hours. Uh, hey, wow. Hey, that was goofy. Hey. Good to see you guys again. We love you, Gump. Bruce dressed up as a uh, little latte Jordan Schultz. <laughs> hey, Pat, it's so awesome to finally be here. All right. Oh, whoa. All right. Mid is uh, Nyjah Houston, skateboard. Oh, nice. It's, Hi, baby. They have a broken foot, too. Yeah, they had a torn ACL. Uh -huh. And AJ has some final parting words for you. Chef, are you going trick-or-treating tonight? <laughs> I, I wish I could, you know. I wish I could take my daughter trick or treating, but we have Monday night countdown, and Monday night countdown falls on Halloween. I thought you, I thought you might be doing night. something cool around the stadium or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, AJ. I wish. Hey, you do a great job yeah. on there. Can't wait to watch. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Schefter. Yes, yeah, Adi. Thank you, buddy. I hope you're happy. What kind of partying words do I ever have for anyone we talk about? I, I didn't realize, maybe just because I'm older, I get claustrophobic wearing this damn mask. Uh, I fucking hate wearing this thing. Let's, <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at the clock right now, and it's, oh boy, I got another hour and a half in here. Uh, to be honest, I can't really turn my head sideways. I can't really see much because I do have my headphones on underneath here. And then I tried to take a sip out of my drink here. Can't do that either. It gets caught up in the in the thing here. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> happy Halloween, everybody. Okay. Happy Halloween. Everybody. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Hope everybody's happy. AJ. <laughs> what is <laughs> you? What is AJ? I am so sweaty. Look like a bleached cereal coat. <laughs> I'm very pale. This is much paler than I am. Even, I feel like. I guess Zito just told me in my ear here. People are saying you look like the Wayans brothers with the white chicks. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I thought I thought Z was going to say Todd Chrisley. 
Oh boy, maybe that's who I am. <laughs> When you picked that mask to be purchased, what was it? Why was it, you think? No, I was trying to go on and look up like legit masks. You know, when like Chris Long was wearing a mask of like Edelman, they had those. I wanted something like that that was really good. I didn't pay too much money for this. It's not as nearly as realistic as it showed on the website. Oh, you don't say. You got duped, pal. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's terrible. Well, what was you're... the description? Like when you bought it, what was the description? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't say it was like a specific person. It's just like, hey, this is a sweet mask that someone spent a lot of time on, I guess. And they had, a lot, they had old man masks, but I didn't want to, you know, step on loose, loose toes. And we didn't like one bad Halloween, you know, creep into two bad Halloweens. Can't do that. We're in costume, no. show still working. Breaking news. Whoa. Holy shit. The Detroit Lions are trading TJ Hawkinson to the Minnesota Vikings what? from Adam Schefter per sources. Holy TJ shit. Hawkinson, obviously tight end out of Iowa, an absolute stallion for the Lions. Our only fucking good player. Uh, Minnesota sends a 2023 second round pick and a 2024 third round pick to Detroit for Hawkinson, a 2023 fourth round pick and a 2024 conditional fourth round pick. Same old lines. The Bears trade Roquan Smith to the Ravens for a second and a fifth. Roquan Smith leading the NFL in tackles. Oh, yep. yeah. Did you know that? I did not know that until I watched this morning where they had his entire stat line up on ESPN. The Pittsburgh Steelers have traded Chase Claypool, wide receiver who had a lot of promise just a couple <laughs> years ago as a rookie. He will now be a member of the Chicago Bears with Justin Fields, whose <laughs> offense Bird seems on. to be much better than it was at the beginning of the season or last year. So they get Claypool, one and a half years left on his contract. For Smith, half a year left on his contract and a five. Probably fifth rounder. Fifth somebody. rounder from both of them. Chicago still has its own second round. For the Bears, if you're looking for a big wide receiver who will jump uh, as high as possible and then try to catch it down at his knees, you've got the right guy. The Dolphins also got Jeff Wilson from the San Francisco 49ers. He was the starter before Christian McCaffrey got to town. Calvin Ridley, who I believe is from the Florida area, he has been traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Falcons are trading wide receiver Calvin Ridley to the Jaguars, sources say, in exchange for a complex draft compensation that could be worth a max 2023 fifth rounder and a 2024 second rounder. Ridley is suspended through at least the 2022 season. He was suspended indefinitely with at least a season, I guess, is where we're at. Naeem Hines is going to the Buffalo Bills. Wow. wow. With a Jeez. shot clock expiring trade on the books wow. made official in the PAFL. Adam Schefter is reporting that the Colts are trading Naeem Hines to the Buffalo Bills. Sources tell ESPN. He's fucking explosive. He actually says before he returns punts, if I die, I die. Hey, why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and fuck. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode known as the FanDuel Thunderdome. On this hour three on Thursday, November 3rd, 2022, we shall start right now. Football! It is mid-season of entertainment. Some action kicked off the last couple evenings. Oh, no. There's been some World Series baseball to watch. The NBA has all its drama that it can handle. And tonight, the NFL has the Philadelphia Eagles, who are the only undefeated team left in the NFL, flying to Texas to take on the Houston Texans. They are 14-point favorites. We are not expecting a great game, but Kirk Herbstreet and Al Michaels are, and they're going to make it fantastic. Mm -hmm. To my left, your right is A.J. Hawk. On the stage, every Wednesday, Thursday, all season long as a nine-year NFL vet, a man who played uh, corner, nickel, and safety. Host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB. Also hosts NFL matchups on ESPN, yeah. ESPN Plus, and ESPN2, Darius Butler. Yeah. Your schedule this season has been um, impressive and awesome. Keep fun. killing it, man. It's been fun, man. Keep killing it. Woo. You're killing it. Uh, the Toxic Table's here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. Great to see you, boys. Hey, Good great to see you, too, Pat. I see you're wearing a plum uh, football hat. Yeah, go Stangs. <laughs> Stangs roll, baby. The plum 
Mustang's football Twitter account, tweeted a picture of Connor thanking him for his support of the Plum Mustangs. They don't have to thank me for anything. I need to thank them. Hey, Plum, listen, here's the deal. <laughs> yeah, we know. Roll Stangs. Stangs up. This guy, too. We don't need stangs it. Stangs up. We're all Mustangs here. <laughs> Roll that. Definitely that's, not. Yeah. You're not. Smell that stang. This That is not the culture <laughs> that we're trying to bring into the football locker room. Okay, show that face again, Foxy, please. That is not. Okay, we appreciate his that's fandom. That's right there. Smell that stang. All right. <laughs> Big stang. Right, stangs see? up. Everybody needs to relax. Okay, let's ride into, that thing. in a new conversation. Anyways. The running back who broke a bunch of records at our high school, yeah. mm -hmm. I uh, retweeted a tweet that had it in there. This kid's a stud. Eric, I think his name is. Uh, he's a guy, I think. Uh, do you know more about him than uh, I do? I know we met him when we went back. Uh, what Good dude. Broke a bunch of records. We're doing it right now, okay? I, they tweet him. I click on his profile. Doesn't follow me. I go, oh, this kid, uh, fuck me. All right, I appreciate it. I don't follow you either, I guess. It's the same thing. Follows Connor. Fucking loves. I think this guy is potentially <laughs> a little Mustang legend around okay. there. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing for Plum at all. I'm that's the problem to, with today's youth. That's man. what I'm saying, Nick. I don't know if that's well. a good thing at all. That th this is an this is a role. Plum football. We also like to thank our number one supporter of the program, Boston Connor, for repping Mustangs yes. all season. Roll, stays, roll. <laughs> Boom. I don't know if this is the culture we're trying to set in there, but I do appreciate the fact that you guys see this man's support of a great high school in the East Hills of Pittsburgh. Yeah, and I've been mentoring Eric all year, especially since you know when he was a kid growing up wanting to play running back. I said, look, Eric, I'll show you the way. Oh, and shut the fuck he's up. Thinking about, he's thinking about going to BC. I said, hey, you know, it's a great school academically, but it doesn't set you up to go to the league because that's what we're trying to do here. I pr you know what? If that's what you're doing for all the Plum Mustangs, if you're being that type of mentor to get them to the NFL, mm -hmm. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, just trying to get him up into the path. Yeah, we appreciate it. Tone Diggs, also a Mustang uh, alum like myself. Tone, your thoughts on Boston Connor and his plum Mustang support? I hate him. Smell that stank. That is very plum of us, though, to hate this man who is supporting the high school. So it's kind of a cyclical conversation. He's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is supporting. I, I mean, am. No, he's not. He, right now it's Nike. The camera can't see it. But right on the side of his head right now, boom. Boom. Plum football. Right there. It's good for people to hear about Plum Football, yeah. Yeah. the Mustangs, the school that you need to attend if you're in the East Hills or in the Pittsburgh yeah. area at all. Move into town. Everything's going up. Mm -hmm. Invest in the community. That's Plum. That's what you've been saying this whole time with that exactly. hat, right? If you want to be a real player, you want to come on into the Mustang stable and get your right hooves to ride into the future of your football career. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yep. Nailed it. That's where the ballers ball and the players play. Bingo. And maybe one day you'll be able to don the same helmet that Connor donned a couple times in the parking lot when he was trying to run his head <laughs> into a car. Oh, shit. It's, I don't think this was mine. I think I, I got mine at my house hanging up. <laughs> Is that yeah. somebody's real helmet? I don't think so. Jeez, oh, it's got the little baby head. It's got to be youth size, right? Sheesh. This thing is so small. Ah! Oh, jeez. You know, you're gonna bruise a, your ears. No, I used to get bruised on my ears when I when that happened. The ear is a massive problem, but also how about when your nose, like my nose, big nose. I had a big nose. Yeah. My nose is pretty close to the uh, mask every Face time. Mask? But there are some of those old school films, like NFL films, <laughs> where like a D lineman's mask will be a centimeter away from the oh. nose. I'm like, oh, you just gotta bust your nose <laughs> yeah. every single time. And look, I mean, look at this guy. This guy's fucking oh, face yeah. literally just I beat. wanted my face mask closer to my face. Like Patrick Mahomes, you look at him, his his face mask, like how it sits is real close to his face. I think that gives you better like striking potential when it's close, you know, that space. That's why Patrick Mahomes yeah, that's has what it, he's right? thinking about. That's what Patrick yep. Mahomes is thinking. Yeah. I think it, it, it helps you. I really do. So for you, the reason why you potentially have a little bit flatter nose in the middle is because you scheduled your helmet to be as small and tight as possible and heavy at the same no, time. My helmet my helmet was actually very, very loose. That's why I've had uh, I, my whole high school career, I had a bruise on my nose right here because when I, I wear it low and then when I hit people, it would come down and blast Ooh. my nose. But I hated it being really tight. Look how happy this man is. Could yeah, you imagine man. accidentally just being this person on the other side? <laughs> yeah. You're fucked. <laughs> I'm looking in your eyes right now, AJ. What are those? No, no current players even know what that is with that chin strap I'm per wearing. With perfect. The yeah, linebacker perfect drops. linebacker Who face mask, bright chin strap. The triple T, yeah, the, the triple T's awesome. The screw, screw in, size. Screw yeah. ins up top. That's a vet move yeah. right there. Who so gave AJ the compliment last week? Was it Marcus Freeman or was it someone yeah. who said toughness when he was? Yeah, Marcus Freeman gave you a shout out when he was talking about one of his players hey, who comparable. Yeah. He said uh, I think it was toughness, which. Hmm. 
I'm sure that's why you, you haven't brought it up. Oh, yeah, thank you. Of thank course. You. It is. Uh, you put it in the group oh, chat. Yeah. You guys put it in the group yeah. chat. I saw yeah. that. Yeah, Marcus. Shout out Marcus Freeman. Shout yeah. out. Hey, Good old Rydell. Hey, he's got a team, huh? He's figuring out his team, you think, Love in Notre me. Dame? I hope so. They better give him some time to get some of those big time recruits in there. Feels like the good can be really good. It's like they're just trying to figure out how to be consistent right now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Is that coaching? Yeah. Court, quarterback situation, quarterback. right? Aren't they trying yeah. to figure that out still? It, he'll be able to recruit, you think? I think so, right? Yeah. Notre he Dame, that's kind of right? been the problem, right? Notre Dame's been a problem. You can't recruit the you can't recruit the type of people that you need to actually win a national championship at Notre Dame. Isn't that been the knock mm -hmm. all the time? Yeah. Notre Dame got good classes. Recruiting class. Yeah. Marcus has got a good Brian one Kelly, already. right? Didn't Brian Kelly or Brian Kelly's people were like, "Good, not great for him." Never, never going to be able to win. Uh, yeah, he said you can't get him into school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. academics to. Yeah. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. he said the the type of human that you potentially need to win a natty, not going to be able to get in academically to Notre Dame. With that being said, I would not have got into Notre Dame academically if they were to check my fucking transcripts. I don't think now sports. Obviously, you think there's a little bit of a slip, but is that the issue with Notre Dame? And you've been a Notre Dame fan, I think, because. Mm -hmm. You went to Catholic schools. Mm -hmm. Catholic schools, I didn't know this. You taught me this. Yeah, like Notre Dame is where we're trying to. Notre Dame is like the uh, Catholic college. Like you go to yeah. Catholic high school Catholic in town, school. then you go to the Catholic, all the Catholic high schools try to go to the Catholic college, which is Notre Dame. So it is, I, I remember it being very successful because it was the only place that had a television network, right? Mm -hmm. Notre yeah. Dame had their own NBC. television network. Right. So they were able to market and recruit. No, they just said every game was on national TV. It wasn't their own network, was it? Way no. back. Before the no, national. Way back. They be, oh. I think they had their own network. I think nice. Notre Dame had its own network. They did their own things. So they were able to market their program mm -hmm. very big in saying, hey, we got exposure. We got this. We got good education. And then the rest of the world kind of caught up to that type of thing. So it's like, was yep. Marcus Freeman able to compete in the modern world where there's a lot of exposure in a lot of places? NIL, will the Catholics kick in for NIL? I assume they will. It's an interesting little story there for Marcus Freeman, who has a lot of respect for AJ, but also seems to be a pretty good coach. But will it work? I don't know. I don't yeah, know. we'll see. Yeah, I mean, the big thing with Notre Dame, too, is because they're independent and because they make so much money from NBC, like, they, they don't really ever need to. I mean, like, maybe they'll join the Big Ten one day, but they, it would have to be a massive money, you know, proposition. Like, they're always going to have an opportunity to go play in the college football playoff. Cause they Especially don't, if it's growing. Exactly, because they don't ever have to worry about winning, you know, a conference championship. Like, really, you know, in the uh, several years ago, it was like, hey, you – you play all the military academies usually, and then you got to beat like USC and maybe one other team. And it's like you do that, you're you're going to be undefeated and you're going to have a chance. AJ, that's a massive compliment that Marcus Freeman paid you, and I think it's really cool whenever a teammate of yours says something like that, unannounced, unprovoked, and puts you over. With that being said, you know Marcus well. He knows you very well. Do you think he'll be able to be a super successful Division One college football coach? Do you think he'll be able to get it going up there? Not yeah, game. I mean, I do. I mean, I, I'm probably too close to even give a real opinion because I am biased. I'm not going to kill him even if I thought, but I don't think that. Like, Marcus, when he became a coach after like, – I played against Marcus in high school, absolute freak, by the way, and then played with, with him in college. He came in with Laronitis, their best man in each other's weddings, all that stuff. Like, bo like awesome dude. Now James works on the staff there at Notre Dame. But, yeah, Marcus, first off, if you want to coach in college, you got to recruit your ass off. And I guess from – if you read the reports, like, he's got – great recruiting class coming in i think before that he had some good players coming in so if anyone can win there it's going to be marcus but i don't know if anyone can win the national championship there right now it definitely does depend on if their people step up in the nil and give the money that it takes to get these big recruits i think that's going to be a story for a little bit it'll probably water will find its level i think when it comes to the money and recruits I think it will settle, but here at the yeah. beginning, you know, I think it's going to continue. I think the players should continue to ride this wave because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people that are maybe missing out on only four slots in the college football playoff are going to be willing to do whatever, which is great for recruiting. And Darius, I'd love to get your opinions on this. Notre Dame should definitely use the fact that whenever the ratings come out for the college football playoff, which I guess I assume is going to be – I assume they're going to be massive, the oh, yeah. semifinal games. Those ratings can sway people, I think, in recruiting, right? Like, hey, we're going to be in the college football playoffs. We're independent. We're a good team. It, whenever it gets to 12 teams, we're going to be in there. This is what the ratings are. This is what the exposure is. And if they have the NIL, people could go. Notre Dame could do it, right? Yeah, Don't you especially. Think? We just talked about the money. They, so they should have the connections and the money to be able to pay these, uh, pay these players what they want. And you're going to have the exposure. You're going to be playing against other top-notch competition. So that's everything you want when you're recruiting a, a, a top-notch recruit. 
recruit. So um, they should be able to do it. You would think so. I would hope so. Yes, right. you have this. If, Go ahead. If, if like that, if letting kids in, at, if they don't drop that ac- academic level, do you still think that they can? I don't know. That's, that's a, never because like happen. the NIL and everything. Sure, but not like saying that Notre Dame thing. would ever want me. I would not have got in. I don't think. I, they would. I don't think I would have been able to get in academically. Then there's also a lot of guys that have to go through JUCO, and then are the JUCO exactly. scores anywhere near enough to get in there? Like, and that's why I think the question is, Stanford's success that they had when they had that run, unbelievable. Wild. They're not. They're not good right now. Because I think they had a very incredible crew that came yeah. through. Yeah, there. you have a guy that who's was the number one. You know, you have generation. a generational quarterback prospect, and then Christian Could McCaffrey, right, yeah. Toby <laughs> Gerhardt almost won a Heisman. Like they had yeah. Sherman. Like Sherman. they had Toby Flaner, was it Bryce Hall. Yeah. Doug Baldwin was Bryce who came after Christian. Yeah. Jeez. It was um, he was a stud. Love. Anyways, love. Be- Anyways, Bryce love. Yeah. Marcus Freeman thing was awesome. We, we appreciate Martin the fact that everybody's saying you're a tough bastard. You yeah. know what Stanford, I mean? yeah, Stanford had a crackdown because of the side door, back door, right? Oh, they, they were in that uh, documentary. Yes. The uh, academic in fo- Not in football, though, right, though? They no, have that's with football? I think Stanford Athletics as a whole, Just maybe? as a whole, yeah. I figured they were kind of mm. making sure everybody yep. was legit. I read uh, something on the internet that Notre Dame's recruiting class is so high because their main pitch is that you get to hear Jack Collinsworth call your name every Saturday. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Hell yeah. Good exposure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good exposure. Jack holds his microphone in maybe one of the coolest fashions of all oh, time. Oh, yeah. So cash. I don't like know. I don't, I don't know what everybody else What's is saying do? about Jack, and I don't know what Diggs is I trying to say it. about Jack. I right I there. But I would like to say to Jack, keep going, man. I'm a fan. You seem like one of the coolest dudes on air. Mm-hmm. You're getting dropped into a spot where there's going to be a lot of people with a lot of opinions. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially because of who your dad is. Like you naturally are going to have to fight that, mm-hmm. even if you're incredible, like the greatest phenom of all time. Keep going, Jack. Hey, oh, yeah, Jack. keep going, Jack. Keep going, this, Jack. Jack. Love you, Jack. Cheering for you, Jack. Keep going, Jack. We appreciate you, Jack. I think Jack watches the show, which we appreciate Love as well. Love you, Jack. And his dad. J A C, right? Is that yeah. how he spells it? That's yeah. Right? Jacques. Jacques. Nasty. Overseas. Jacques. Uh, let's move. Notre to Dame should get pretty clean. Can we move to uh, high school football real quick? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So there's some high school football in Boulder, Colorado that we've been hearing about. There is a school named Fairview High School. Okay. Fairfield High School. Fairfield, Fairview, 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 Fairview. It's one of those two. Okay. Fairfield High School. They're the Knights. Okay. Okay. The Knights. They had a player on their team back in 1942. Wow. That used to bring the fucking Fairview, 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 Fairview. Fairview Knights. There, there is a player back in 1921 mm-hmm. okay. that Jeez. wore the number five that brought the absolute fucking. Hammer. He'll be a strong safety coming here on the near side of the film. And right now, this this quarterback that you see on the film in very clear picture here in 1914, yeah. maybe, yep. mm-hmm. thinks that he's going to go score. Yeah. Thinks he's got pay dirt on the other side here in Boulder, Colorado. The air's a little thinner. Uh-huh. The ball feels a little lighter. What? And on this particular play, God damn it, I feel a little bit faster. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. What he didn't know was boom! <laughs> There was going to be a blur like it was a fucking UFO or an alien or a Bigfoot Whoa. coming into the screen, lowering Ooh. the helmet, hitting the ball out, knocking it loose, Ooh. and celebrating. Hey. Hell yeah. This man right here that just got CTE while getting the ball out Why? from that quarterback is Chuck Pagano. What? what? Oh. With the hit? Let's go. That's not Whoa. all, folks. Check out this I had a pads. feeling that was Chuck. That is Excuse not me? all, folks. Looks like Jack Tatum out there. Yeah. In Fairview High School, there is also a hit that is talked about still to this day. You see, obviously, they're running a sophisticated offensive scheme mm-hmm. that keeps people in motion and people guessing. Yeah, mm-hmm. not triple the, option. Not the type of play that you can get a full 20-yard yeah. run up and understand what's going to happen mm-hmm. on the defensive side. No, no. no. Great pitch. Oh, you no. can see discipline. What is about to take place here? Eyes from five on a blur mm-hmm. that is about to be remembered as a boom. 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 Charles, you got pitch this week. Oh, boom. Balls out. Ball out. Balls out again, dude. You're damn I'm right it is. Right L on the chin, <laughs> forearm on the ball. From Fairview High School in Boulder, Colorado, a man who coached after this incredible playing career for 75 years, most of which 
in college and the NFL. Our coach, the people's coach, taking us inside the Philadelphia Eagles meeting room on Monday morning as Coach Sirianni for tonight's Thursday Night Football matchup. It's time for Coach P's Keys with Chuck Pagano. Yeah, Coach! Howdy, baby, Coach. Hey, good morning, man. Good morning, 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 Coach. Morning. Winning's great, isn't it? Hell Love yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Hell seven yeah. and oh. be a winner. Hell yeah. Seven and oh. Just beat Pittsburgh's ass. Yeah, yeah. they're so right? bad. Seven and oh. Hell yeah. You know what the only thing that derails us? Oh. Us. What's that? It's us. That's right. It's us. It's always us. Because we can sit around, listen to, you know, talk radio, get on social media, awesome. read the papers. If anybody reads <laughs> a paper anymore, everybody's throwing all these flowers at us, right? Yeah, and then we just start us. let the little things go. Not this year, Coach. We want the manure, Coach, not the flowers. Lane? Danger. I walked through the locker, your locker? Yeah. Frickin' pigsty. What? Uh-oh. No. What's that? Go in the shower after everybody leaves, uh -oh. go in the washcloths all over oh, the floor. Shit. I tried Guys, to it's, a little, it's a little things. This is real. Let me just tell you. It's a little thing. Walk through the lunch hall. Told you guys. After you guys left. Shit everywhere. Plates not put away. Oh, Jordan uh, Davis taking, had eight. Taking all this stuff for granted. Yeah, you can laugh, Kelsey. I'm laughing. Okay. <laughs> I saw a frickin' snicker. I did too. Look, yeah, this in is Jordan a, Davis's this locker. This ain't look. Exactly. Oh, come on. <laughs> Stop it. Lane, he's on IR. Okay. okay, so listen. That's the problem. The only thing that derails us is us. That. It's the little things. Because right now it don't catch. Listen up. Sorry, Coach. <laughs> it don't catch up till it catches up. Damn right. So let's mind our P's and Q's. We got a huge game coming up in four days. Quick. Quick ass turnaround. We got to travel. They're at home. Let's not bullshit ourselves. Let's do the little things. This is the kind. This is the get kind of shit. You guys. I'm telling you. AJ, get this this is the cool, kind of man. shit, AJ. I got it. Writing it down, coach. Be so where your selfish. feet are. What, what does that mean, AJ? I'm team? trying to. I know. What does be, it mean? Be Explain present. it to these guys down here that yeah. are jacking around. I'm drawing the penises hooligans. up there. Whoa. No, those what little are you're throwing their tape roll. Be present. Be where you are. Don't be thinking about exactly. all this stupid stuff. And Get your pads out. Else Tom's doing. Exactly. I'm not doing Thank it. You. At least I'm in the meeting room, AJ. Get your pads out. I'm here. Way more Get than your you. pencils out. Let's lock in. we got, got a huge COVID. game, like I said, all right? Okay, let's look at Houston. Let's take a peek at these guys. Okay, okay we know they're 1-5-1. One, and one. They stink. Jeez, who they tie? Stop it. I'm sorry. Sorry. Stop <laughs> it. Listen up. Again, again. If we don't lock in... I know it's a, qu a short week. It's walkthroughs, right? And if, we, if, if this is the kind of bullshit, all right, that we're going to approach this game with, watch what happens. Just go. Watch what happens. Just go down, you know, look in history what happens on these things. Hell yeah. Yeah. Dal <laughs> Dallas, you're over there giggling ass, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I'm lucky to be part of this team. Yeah. Like you're damn thankful, right. Thankful to be Drop part of another team. ball and your ass won't be part of it. Whoa. 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 See you. Oh. I don't care if it's <laughs> behind you or not. Boy. Jalen, runner's balls. You can't throw behind them going this way. That's right. Give Amen. them runner's ball. Okay. One, five, and one. Let's look at the keys, guys. Offensive keys to victory. Okay, defensively, Lovey Smith. He went there. Two years ago, right? He runs a 4 3, the Tampa 2 defense. Everybody understand yes, sir. Tampa Go. 2 defense is? All right, not a complicated system, not a complicated scheme. All right, they're going to play cover one, two, and three. Okay, might do a little bit uh, split safety stuff, maybe some, some quarters, uh, maybe splash in some quarter, quarter halves here and there, but that's who they are. Okay, that's what they hang their hat on. Total defense right now, they're ranked 30th. What? Jeez. 30th, guys. Again, it's one game at a time. That's right. One mm -hmm. week at a time. That's yeah. a bad one here. Okay? Yeah. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Against the rush. 30 seconds. Oh, boy. Okay. Jeez. 30 Jeez. seconds. They, they give up, they they give up, up. They give up 186 good. yards a game. What? Last week, all right, King Henry ran through them like shit through a goose. Mm -hmm. 214 yards. They had total 300 14 yards, something like that, all right? And the score was only 17 to 10. But they're struggling to stop the run. Let's talk about some of their players. 
Hell yeah. Again, you've got to prepare and you've got to study. Jerry Hughes, why do we have him highlighted? He's a dude. Mm -hmm. There are not many dudes over there, but he is the dude. Mm -hmm. All right, he leads them right now with five sacks. Kirksey in the middle, he's their signal caller. He's going to get them lined up. He's their guy in the middle. All right, he's got 50, 50 tackles on the air. In the back end, part of the rushing deal, part, part, 58 tackles for that dude right there. All right, Owens. Safety Owens Who? and and Petrie, he's got 48. Yeesh. He's a rookie. He's he's playing really good. This good Petrie dude, he, he's a, he's a ball player. Petrie Stingley, dish. he's a Great. rookie as well. He's their number one pick. All right, he's their number two. They took him in the second round. They took him in the first round. This is a talented, talented kid right here. All right, Nelson, Stevie Nelson, been around. You know Stevie Nelson. Yep. He's a good player. All right, Green, Rasheen Green, good player. The their text? best defensive lineman, their best defensive lineman, Lee Collins, has been out. He's missed some games. I don't think he's going to play. They, they're hopeful, but uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to see him. So you're going to see maybe number 90 in there a little bit, um, uh, a couple other dudes. But, but again, it's going to come down to our preparation. What? Mm -hmm. What? Go ahead. What? Execution. What? what? And taking care of this cat. What? Okay, we can't let him dominate our game. So here's the big thing. When they're going to play this Tampa 2 stuff, all right, they're an over front, 4-3 front. That means we go tight end over here, all right, you're going to get a 3 technique and a 6 technique. That's head up on a tight end to the call side, to the tight end side. And then you'll have a shade or a 2-eye and a 5 technique away. You guys writing this down? Hell yes, yeah. Yes, okay, so when you play split safety, part of playing split safety defense, you have what? Two safeties high. Two safeties high. So you heavy in the box or light in the box? Light in the box. So you're light in the box. Now last week, all right, versus the Titans, they tried to play some single high. It's not them. Okay, and they tried to load the box and it didn't work out. So they're probably going to get back to this Tampa scheme. They ran that as well in that game. But the whole thing is you got to expect when you see the two high safeties and that four-man front, this pirate stunt. You guys remember us talking about a yeah. pirate stunt oh, yeah. back in training camp? Hell yeah. We talked about it during the bye. Remember during the bye, we had a great bye week. We got a lot of things accomplished, and we actually did some stuff on these in preparation for this. Your coaches did some stuff on these guys in preparation because we knew it was going to be a short week. So game plan-wise, we're set. We're set, but we have to do the prep part. And they stink. Okay, yeah. we yeah. have to do the prep part, and we That's have it. to understand this pirate stunt. That means the three technique. Okay, Can, hey, Lynn, are you paying attention? Yes, coach. I'm writing this shit down. Let's stay with me. Four, three, four. Be where your feet, feet are. Okay. Yes, coach. So a pirate stunt. What does the what does the three technique do on a pirate stunt? Do you have any idea? It's lined up outside of the tackle, coach. Yeah, that's the guard. You're exactly right. It's the Shh. offensive guard. Is a, is a three technique. And on a pirate stunt, maybe help him out, AJ. What does he do on cross a pirate? Face. He cross crosses face. face. Oh, yeah. So he's Let's stunting into try. the A gap. Don't chase the booty. Stunning, and then a long stick by the defensive end, AJ. What's a long stick by that? Cross face as well, right with them. They work in tandem. Then we're going to wrap so if we, right? Yep. So if we had that three technique here and we had that six technique here, it was a closed left oh, call. Yeah. That means that three technique is going in the A gap. All right. And that means that <clears throat> defensive end is closing. He's going right at the face mass of the offensive tackle. If the tackle blocks out, come here for a second. Have a tackle. Okay. Short corner over oh, there. Oh, can you get it? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so if this is the offensive tackle on the tight end, I'm on a ghost tight end right here. Hey, As I start to set. go to the face mess, if he goes there, I'm underneath. All right, if he blocks down, I'm right off his ass and I'm breaking glass. Mm. You hear me? Right <laughs> off his ass <laughs> and I'm breaking <laughs> what? Glass. 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 Like Stone Thank Cold you. Steve Thank Austin. You. What? What? <laughs> so, if we're not, so if we're not on our P, P's and Q's, all they're trying to do is change the mass and, math and disrupt, uh, disrupt stuff. So if we get the ball coming this way, Understand, okay, if the ball, if we run the ball this way, all right, with Miles, where's Miles at? Yep. Okay, we run the ball this way, what's going to happen is that ball's going to have to bounce. Yep, got it. It's going to bounce, and those linebackers, all right, 43, 48, 57, right, 58, all right, those guys, right. Kirk's 58, they're going to be scraping downhill, okay? Now, the Mike Backer's responsible for middle paint, so he's going to be last, but that front side linebacker, he is going to come like hell. And whoever climbs up to him, mm. the tight end probably climbs up to him, he's going to cross your face and spill this damn thing. So let's be alert to that. All right, cover oh, yeah, one, nice coach. cover two, and cover, cover three. three. It's simple, simple, simple. It's about our preparation, and it's about execution, and it's about making sure we take care of the guys that can wreck the game. All right, and this is one guy that can wreck the game. Jerry's been around for a long, long time. 
Initially started with the Colts, went up to Buffalo and had a, had a bunch of you know sacks up there and a great career with those guys. A couple years there, and now he's in Houston. Good dude, right? too, I heard, Coach. Great dude. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable dude. Feel bad that yeah. he's not in Buffalo now, though, right? Kind of went up there the wrong time. <laughs> Lane, relax. Sorry, sorry. You're right. Do you want to? No, I got no, it, Coach. No, yeah. I got it. I'm, I'm locked in. 4-3 front. You should, you're a leader, remember. He's a leader on this football team. That's right. I honored the C on my chest. Okay. That's why we renamed the offensive line room after you, the Laniacs. Mm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Brother. Because how you freaking play <laughs> and how you lead. It's Coach. And not all this. Is he high, God Goddamn jocularity. <laughs> hey, we got to <laughs> let him go. on. We got to let him I understand. Hey, look, I got to right refocus on. right now. Hey, hey, dog mentality. Hey, dog mentality. Hey, hey, hey. Soon as, hey, win or lose, we booze. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. What? You must have boozed a little bit too much. So let's. Hey, yeah, I'm me, coach. Short week, Lane. No, it's a short week. It's all walkthrough. Boomer soon. Okay, let's go on. Defensive keys. All right. Def- uh, offensively for these guys. Pep Hamilton. Okay, he's the offensive coordinator. He's slow, this, right? This is a run, run, run first offense. All right? And it's tight end driven. This goes all the way back to Stanford with Pep. Okay, when he was there with Harbaugh. All right, back in the day, he had Andrew Luck back there. Run, run, multiple tight ends, right? Heavy mm-hmm. personnel. That's who these guys are. Run first, tight end driven. All right? We can X him. Yeah. Can we X him? Yeah. Let's coach. Okay, so apparently he's been, he's been, you know, had his issues. Yep. He's been hitting the Twitter world. I love you guys. I don't ever see. I got people following you, too. We watching. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right? Oh, yeah. This is, why, this is why we win, because it's us. It's what does us stand for? Team, you Unite. unity Me. over self. self. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Us, U S, unity over self. We got a group of guys nobody, that don't care who gets the credit. All you want to do is win. Keep that mindset. So he's out. All right. They got more and Dorsett. Okay. Uh, Nico Collins. Okay. Number twelve played earlier in the year. He's out mm-hmm. with an injury. He's oh. not going to play. So they're down wide receivers. So if they're down wideouts, what do they got to bring up? Gonna probably be heavy with tight ends, right? We'll get to him. Oh. We will get to him. But I'm just talking about the personnel that you're gonna see, all right? 21 exactly. personnel. They got a fullback they signed from Central Michigan, I think his his name is. Uh, 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 he went to Central Michigan. He's number 34. He's six foot. He's 245 pounds. His last <laughs> name is Hairston. He, he was a linebacker in D line, all right, in college. Damn. And he was an All Mac player. Hell yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, All Mac. Didn't get drafted. These guys brought him in as a free, uh, as a uh, college free agent. Made the team. They moved him to fullback, and he's a short neck son of a gun. Okay, and he'll come after you. Lead blocks. Okay, off the edge, kick out blocks. Every now and then they may slip him out into a flat for a late check out, or you know we call it throw throw a dog a bone because he does all that heavy lifting, all that block 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 block. Every now and then you'll get a little play action pass, fullback in the flat. Especially in the goal line. Six foot two forty. Six foot two forty five. Oh, he's Write a, it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brick he's shit a hammer. Mm-hmm. Fire up he's chips. a hammer. Okay. This Fire is the up guy. Chips. Fire Pierce. up. Okay. Fourth. Uh, it was their fourth round pick. Another rookie. Mm-hmm. All right. This year, Damian Pierce. No. Florida. Yep. Yep. Uh, guys, correct me. Right. right? Florida. Oh yeah. Coach, I got a lot of, this is hard to carry all this info. Right. Florida dude. Well, especially with assholes. Like this this guy yeah. can yeah. run. Fucking. This guy's. I mean, he is a player. He's got, I think, almost 600 yards rushing, three touchdowns on the year. He's a dude, okay? He's a dude. What do you, so what are these guys going to do to us? Run the football. Run, run the ball. The football, yep. Okay, because you don't have Nico. Mm-hmm. Cook's your number one wideout. You don't have Nico, right? So that's two wideouts, right? Okay, you got Phil, who start, was a first-round draft, former first-rounder for uh, the Colts, I believe. Speed, speed, speed guy, deep guy. So all they're going to do is probably throw shots to him. And they run these like hard play action stuff because they run it so much. And they run these deep curls, these deep outs. Dougie Mills, good player. He can sling it. Yeah, yeah. He's got a talent. He's got he's got arm talent. Black belt. Too. So he can throw it deep, and he oh, can throw yeah. all those he's outside the numbers throws, those 15, 18, 20 yard comeback. He can make those throws. Yep. All right, those deep curl routes that, that run to 20, come back to 18. He can make those throws. We got to be disciplined, huh? We guys? have to be Damn disciplined, right. guys. Oh, yeah. Okay, Pick we have six. to gang tackle Always. multiple hats on this guy. Multiple firm edges, penetration, square up front. All right, no vertical run lanes. Let's do a great job on that. But, uh, but, I'm, but I'm guessing 
All right, so from a tight end standpoint, okay, they've got uh, number, number nine. Help me with number nine's name. Um, of course. Yeah, Jordan. Ake, uh, yeah, Jordan, right? Brevin, is it Brevin? Yeah. Yeah, Brevin. Right. yeah Brevin. Yeah, Brevin. Brevin. Yeah. Oh, there's Jordan's name yeah. right there. Brevin. Huh? BJ. Just make sure you're staying awake on me, okay? Oh, yeah. So oh, we got test. Jordan. All right, they've got 88 Akins. Okay, they've got 83 O.J. Howard. Who oh, was yeah. where? He was at Buffalo too, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Let him go, right? They waved around. him and brought him in. He's a good player. And then they've got a guy they, that uh, was on IR that they designated for return. Mm -hmm. His name is Deegan Quiteriano. Oh! oh. I, I don't know. Rise on. Quiteriano. I did some research. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if on Quiteriano. Yeah. Somebody Eating said maybe pasta, Eastern like. Europe. Type guy, but this guy's six six. He's from Oregon State. I think he was their fifth or sixth round pick. Heard they were high on this kid. All right, he's a good player. He's been on IR. They brought him back. So four tight ends up. Yeah. Okay. We know Pep. His history. Okay. He can do the two back, twenty two personnel, twenty three personnel. If it's one back, thirty four is out of the game. You can get twelve personnel. He loves twelve personnel. Loves thirteen, 13 personnel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see fourteen. Jesus. Yeah. 14 personnel. What is that, Kels? Fucking how many? How many backs? One 14, back. And how many tight ends? Fucking four of them. Four of them. Boom. How many wideouts does that leave? <laughs> uh, fucking none. Oh! Are you sure? One wideout. Uh. <laughs> hold on. One wideout. Okay. We'll get back to that. How about 13 personnel? Fucking one back and three tight ends, Coach. And then how many wideouts with that? It'd be two of them, Okay, Coach. 22 personnel. Fucking two backs, two tight ends. How many wideouts? JB. <laughs> why would they? Why would you go light on wideouts tonight and just try to hammer it and run it down uh, our throats? Because they fucking stink. They gotta figure something. No, out. They, yeah. tell you, come on now. <laughs> keep we got wideouts. a bunch of young guys in this room that I'm having a hard time, you know, from not blowing up and getting complacent, and reading all the stuff Seven I just talked all. about. Seven and all. Yeah. Hey, boy, we're the shit. Super Bowl. Hey, these guys can't do anything. We go uh, down there and, and lay an egg. We're not doing that. Can't do. Don't that. let it happen. Gadgets. It's in his history. It's in his DNA. Just study the coordinators. It, I mean, against um, last week against Tennessee, opened the game with a flea flicker. Smart. Hand it to 31, right? Because they're thinking the same thing I'm telling you guys. They're going to run it, run it, run. Hand it to 31, turn around, throw it here. Everything's covered down. Phil had to check it down. Then they also tried a little Y hide play. They did a sprint, sprint out deal where this guy's block, block, and tried to throw back and get mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. you know, platoon down the left sideline. None of it worked, but they love that. It's and after all those runs, what's going to come? Shot. Shot. Play action stuff. Play action. And we got to get after Dougie. Hell yeah. He, he's, a, he's a talented kid. He's a, good, he's a good player. I don't think with the people they have in the front office now, Nick and, and those guys. Easterby. He wouldn't be there. No, I think they let they Jack go. Oh, I think they let no. Jack go. Oh. Moment of silence. Hmm. Please, please. Okay, let's go. go. Dougie's a good player. All right, special teams. So... <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you know this. First of all, no sins. What does the sins mean? Self-inflicted negatives. Yep. Self-inflicted negatives. Amen. That just means let's just go execute. Easter let's prepare. All right. Let's put the time in and let's go just not beat ourselves. Don't hand them, a, you know, a muff kick. Put the ball on the ground. You know, screw up some protection. All right, and let some guy that's trying to make a name for himself come through and, and block one of our kicks. All right. Bill Burr, all right, hell of, <laughs> hell of a comedian, all right, he doubles as a punt. You guys didn't even know that. He does that comedian shit on the weekend. No, we, well, no, no, we know the White Tiger. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We wow. know the White Tiger. All right, Johnston, he's a good, he's a, he looks just like him. You guys will look in your program, but um, <laughs> our media guys are, see, this is the same shit that I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> yeah, you. You know, yeah. no. Us. No. We. No, even, <laughs> even guys. the guys in, in, you know, that put these slides together. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know they're gonna slip this shit in there on me, because everything's so high. Seven oh. and zero. Oh. Seven and zero. Oh. Hey, let's have some fun. Oh. Hey, let's have some fun. Oh. Hey, let's have some fun. You know, let's grab ass. You know, oh, yeah. hee hee ha ha. Guys, don't wow. pick up the towels. Don't pick up your plates. It's a rat poison. Yep. Yeah. We got guys yep. parking and handicap. What? what is that? Who the fuck did that, coach? I mean, I'm telling we, you, we, it's we, a we, little things. Is that Fletcher? It's a little things. There's guys that in there. This goddamn meeting room been on some shit teams. Yeah. And understand Amen. what I'm talking about. I came from Detroit, Coach. Fairbairn, three Slay? for three from 50. All right. This, this, this guy, uh, 
Smith, Tremont Smith, he's a, he's a backup corner for them, nickelback. He's a hell of a special teamer. He plays gunner. He runs down on kickoffs. I think he forced a fumble already this season, you know, on a, on a kickoff return. He's a, he's a really good player. He's averaging 21 on kickoff return. Uh, they're nickelback king. He's averaging nine and a half. All right, on punt returns. Good point. Any questions as far as special good teams point. go? All right, let's get to the tape. Hell yeah. Let's roll some tape. Okay, so before you run this thing, uh, can I call you by your first name? Yeah, sure. Is it Pat or Dallas? Jake. Jake. Okay, Jake, my video guy. Hell yeah. All right. Oh, gotcha. What we're looking at here. <laughs> miles in. Okay, there are four down front, right? We talked about four, three front, right? Okay. Right now, what are, we, what are they trying to show right here? They're trying to show single high. Excellent. Excellent. Way to be on it. Slay, you, I mean, money. Yeah, I'm locking shit up right now. I mean, locked Let's in. Go. Playing, playing best ball of your career right oh, now. Yeah. Who'd right you now. lock down like a couple weeks ago? I mean, just shut Jefferson. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was yeah, the just, the Pittsburgh doesn't guys matter, right? Out. Yeah, it was it's like. Great job. So, and you trying to show Detroit. middle close, right? Got this safety down right here, Jalen. Got him down the nickel. All right, the nickel's going to come up here if you run it just a little bit. <clears throat> you run it a little bit. Okay, he's, he's acting. He's sugarfooting a little bit, mm -hmm. trying to get it, get you guys to think he's coming. All right, and then what do, what do we – this is a uh, – Lovey Smith's calling this defense. What are they known for? Tampa 2. Tampa 2. All right, so what do they end up rotating to here? Split safety. Two. two. Go to split safety. Pause. Perfect. Deep half. Deep half. Rolled up corner. This guy's out of it. This guy's the middle paint, so if this guy keeps running, he's got to carry him through the train tracks as deep as the deepest. All right, you got a curl window player here, curl window player, and this uh, Sting, Stingley, the uh, rookie corner right there. So watch the quarterback. Carr looks, 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 holds it. What does that buy time for? Pass, pass rush. Pass rush. Okay. Hughes coming off the left side. Green coming off the right side. You got to know this is coming. Wow. They, do, they do a nice job with that. That's good disguise. They do, they do a, no, they nice. do a nice job with it. They'll give you some – they'll even have this kind of deal where they'll show middle closed, and they'll have Kirksey right up over the center. And when a linebacker walks up over that center, what kind of call are they trying to get? Five down. Trying to get a five down, right, Lane? Yes, with coach. Us? Yes, coach. Right. Kels, Jace? Yeah. You with right. me? Yeah. Yes. Five down, that means right singles right. everywhere. And then he'll run to the middle paint from there. They do a nice job of that. Let's go on. Yeah, Jalen's 100 oh, times better right. than Carr, coach. Good point. That's a good point. Okay, let's take a peek here. Our jet motion. Okay, when we, we run all the jet motions and all the RPOs, we, we're going to make some hay with that. Because they don't bump. A lot of times they don't. In base with three linebackers on the field, I've seen them bump. But a lot of times when they're nickel, Slay, when they're nickel, jet motion, that guy will run. Yeah. He'll go the other side and the other backers with jet. That's tough. That's really tough. So he's running this way, and the other two backers are trying to boss a bow away from that. Mm -hmm. All right, because they go the weak side, bow, you know. You know what bow means? Yeah. What does it mean? Going to a weak side. Boss away oh, weak. Oh, boss yeah. away weak. We spell so it. Ball. 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 No, it's the ball. It's ball with the ball. The bang, the bang, the bang. 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 My bang. name is Okay, hey, stay with me, Lane. <laughs> yep. Stay with me. Okay, so we get <clears throat> we Indy against Indy. Let's take a peek at this. Who'd we say? One more time. Who'd we say? On their defense that we can't let wreck this game, the number Jerry one. Hughes. Jerry Hughes. So here he is. Watch him here. Watch him here. Bam. Oh, oh. retrace. Oh. 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 That quarterback. Yeah. Matt Ryan's in dipshit, though, right, Coach? Unbelievable. <laughs> Jeez. What do you think, Jalen? Come on. Oh, no. Jay, hey, Hertzy, what do you think they're rotating to? What do, they end up, what do they end up doing here? Run it back one time. Would have been a touchdown. Hey, what the hell is he doing, Coach? Watch what they're, watch what they're doing. What do, they end up with split safety, middle open, or middle close? Middle close. close. Thank you. Middle close. Boom. That's a great play. Bad play. Let's by move the on. Yep. Yeah, great play. Or... Get his hands down. Hey, look. They do a couple things well on defense. Huh? When you look at the stat, it doesn't look like they're good in the red area. Okay. okay, they're like six in the National Football League in the red zone. Oh, that's so we got to really yeah. execute once we get down there, okay? They're good there. And the hallmark of a Lovey Smith coach defense, it's effort. It's running to the ball, relentless. 
Okay, and it's about scoring on defense, and it's about the program. It's about the ball. Yes, you love it. Okay, when he was head coach in Chicago, Fair those down. defenses he had back there with Erlacher and Lance Briggs. Oh, yeah. Peanut, oh. peanut Bunch, Tillman. Oh, oh, no. That was him. Oh, yeah. That was him. Don't we you know. think for one second he's not going to have these guys jacked up, Lane. Yes, coach. Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> Five, yeah, coach, game. whatever. <laughs> Bullshit on you. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. Fucking lame. I'm telling you. I'm locked in, Coach. Yes, Jerry Hughes is fucked this weekend. I want tonight. to stay positive. I want to stay upbeat with you guys. You right, make let's it take hard. a look. What do we say about their best player on offense? What number is he? 31, 31, Coach. Multiple hats. Gang tackle it. This guy's a beast now. North, north south runner. He Jeez. can put a foot in the ground. Boom. He can get rolling. Jump cut. Plays behind his pads. That guy's a He's legit. Good player. He's legit. What do we say about the fullback? <laughs> what do we Stout say about 34 Harris? Watch him. You guys, oh, he's a defensive guy. They moved him over. He's not going to be any good. You tell me. Boom. Huh? Boom. You tell me. Good pop. Good safety they got that too. right tack. This right guard's been out. You're not going to see him against the Steelers. Can. Okay, he's back. He was out for a couple weeks. 60s out. This is a rookie, Brown. Mm -hmm. he's, they had two first-round picks. Okay. Okay, Brown, he's a Texas A&M kid. He struggled last week against Tennessee. Sure. They, they got after him pretty good. Jeffrey Simmons and then they got, they got yeah. Tunzel. They got Laramie right at left tackle. Mm -hmm. He's texting the Thank you, Laramie. Dolphins GM. Yeah. Thank you, Laramie. Save me. Pierce. Sweet gas mask. Yeah. Yeah. All Amen. right, let's take a look at it. Well, this don't matter. Both these guys ain't playing. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck, Coach. This is what that's I'm talking great, about. That's a great job. That's another thing. Video people. Hey, he, he, ha, ha. Okay, yeah. we're just going to float around through this thing. I'm going to put two guys on the tape for coach. Look like a freaking fool. I'm telling you. I can't have it. I'm telling you. Can't have it. God damn it. It don't catch up until it catches up with you. That's right. Be where your feet are. Sorry, Stay coach. connected. Stay engaged. All right, let's do the work. We'll break. We'll go see our coaches right now. Let's have a great Thank week. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Woo. That was Rocky incredible. Yeah, Cannot -E wait to hear... Uh, <laughs> What he has to say about the Houston Texans team meeting room here in about 30, 45 minutes. That should be fantastic. Then he'll give us his pick. Obviously, Coach P has been hot. And then something that needs to happen because Darius Please. has missed the last two yeah. days. Hey, here we go. Coach here we go, P, coach. if you hit this, 10 people will be randomly selected to win $500. Who retweet this video, say How something nice to How somebody, and put their cash tag. Uh, let's just, you just. Oh, I know I need one. Oh, I need, yeah, this one's good. Boom. Oh, oh we have a second. Nice this is for 10 people to win $500. Money. Oh, oh. 10 That's people one. win $500. <laughs> if Chuck Pagano. Oh, there's one more. Well, Money ball. Ball. I know. Ball. Ball. <laughs> this is definitely the ball. Ah. Oh. All right. We'll be back in about five. I thought you were going to another ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was about to Chris Angel another AJ ball right there. Oh, yeah, the head. The head. What does everybody want? Hey! Oh, yeah. Al Snow used to say that on he did. Raw every Monday. Come walking out. Yep. What does everybody want? Everybody in the arena would scream, Head. Hey. Scream it. What does everybody need? Head. Hey. Hey. It was awesome. What a time to be alive. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. All right, let's take five. I think Von Miller will be joining us on the other side of the break. Coach P, who just broke down everything the Eagles are going to do against the Texans. They seem to be ranked very low in a lot of things, that Houston Texans team. Yeah. How will they be able to battle on this Thursday night football out? Two of their biggest weapons, we shall see. We'll hear from Coach P later in the next hour about how he is going to address the Houston Texans team. We'll be back in five with Von Miller. Be a friend, tell a friend. Take five. Bye. Bye. What is it about this spectacular game that we all love? The passing, the running, the hitting, the kicking, the scheming, the drama, the athleticism? Let's go, let's go. Right here, big drop. I think it's a combination of all of those things, but I believe it all boils down to this. The competition level is fucking awesome. For the win with two seconds left. A finger can literally be the difference between a W and an L. What a turn of events! It's what makes football wildly fun to watch and in turn, wildly fun to bet on, but I digress. The reason I'm doing this segment every week is to hopefully grow the respect for the game. 
and we give love to the players who make all of this shit happen. Not just their skill and their amazing playmaking ability. What I really like is the finish, man. Not a lot of guys will be able to make that six points. This will be all about respecting these guys' big fucking brains. Strong like bull. Woo. Smart like tractor. You gotta be smart in this game, man. Coaches usually get all of the credit in this beautiful minds of football space, but I want to shine a light on the players' brains. Let's go do this thing, baby. Let's go. Stuff like Mahomes and Kelsey cooking up a last-second drive in one of the best playoff games of all time. They play it like that. That seam is open. That's ball go down immediately. Yep. Bills rush four. Mahomes throws. Kelsey open inside the 40. Breaks the tackle and down. And stuff like this, all from week one. How about scary Terry McLaurin recognizing a corner is playing lazy cover two technique all game, telling everyone and their mother about it. Gotta let us run by that dude, bro. This cover two, bro, they playing it so lazy. They're playing lazy over there all day. Then, in the fourth quarter, when it matters, Carson Wentz hits Terry behind that lazy cover two corner. Taking a shot down the field, there's McLaurin, out of the dead, and in! That's big brain football. Come on, man! Hey, I've been lazy all day. All day. How about Sunday night in Dallas? Tom Brady asking Mike Evans, what you want, babe? And Evans calling his shot. Give me the fade. Yo, Tom said, what you want? Tom said, what you want, babe? I said, fade. He knows the man across from him and knows how to beat him. I know how to get him. He tried to do that little stab. Yeah. My slow blade. Back out. I slapped him so hard right now at the line. Watch me see him. I slapped him. That's some beautiful big brain football. Hard to beat in the air, Mike Evans. Which brings us to our main feature this week, Josh Allen. He doesn't just have a big arm. He doesn't just have big gawness. He has a big old brain, too. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Up 14 against the world champs, third and four. He's across the line from a man who called him trash just four years ago. Allen knows that that particular man peeks and cheats himself, a big brain player trying to gain an advantage, often with eyes more on the quarterback and less on the receivers. He's thinking you ain't gonna throw a ball deep. So five is, five is literally looking and not even worried about you on the trips. Allen knows Jalen Ramsey loves sitting on routes, especially on third and four, the bunny down. So he tells his guy, Mr. Minneapolis Miracle himself, Stephon Dix, hey dude, don't run the called route, just go deep. Can you take us through the touchdown, just what you saw on that play? Josh told me, show me just run. Allen's hunch that five would peak and Diggs could get behind him paid off like a same game parlay. Their corners were really looking at the quarterback and Diggs just ran a heck of a route. Zone cover, Jalen Ramsey was trying to read the eyes of Josh Allen and let Diggs go past him, and Josh Allen soars it over Ramsey's head. The look on Josh's face when he runs up on Ramsey is quite a, what was that, pal, moment. I'm sure he's saying something like, I knew you would do the exact thing you just did, so I told my guy to adjust, and we beat your ass. That's not trash, Jalen. That's not a garbage pick. No, no, that's big brain football. Look him off, and he's going to it was simple. I knew it. It was simple. I said, right, go. I hang my hat on as a player that he got that dog. You know, it's just like I'm frustrated with flying cars because I'm obsessed with that. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I want a flying car. Hey, I mean, me too. What I got is my phone instead. It's like, well, the future is on your phone really right now. It's not like literally in front of you. You can't get into a flying car. But, you know, your phone has it all. It's like, I don't want this phone. I'm not gonna have this phone 14 hours a day like you young people do. No, thank you. Like, I'm not from that generation. Like, you know, give me a flying car. You know? <laughs> and, and, and honestly, when we shut down the Mars missions, you know, we were supposed to be going in 2024 and, and we shut it down. But a lot of people don't realize is, you know, from here to the moon is 208,000 miles roughly, you know. Two hundred. So you can think about that. Well, in this country, you know, a long road trip could be four thousand miles, and you know how far it is to Australia. You know, so two hundred thousand miles. You know that you think about that. And, you know, that's far, but but like Mars, think about this is two hundred and fifty million miles. 
250 million miles. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's a little different thing because, you know, when you go, you know, it, it takes about anywhere from, you know, nine to 11 months to get there, depending on the <laughs> Are you going to the fucking Mars? And so, Jim, are you going to Mars? It sounds like you're- <laughs> I wish I was, uh, I, you know, maybe you have, I think you have a chance to do a show from there when you're 80, back. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 Howdy, so, guys. Vaughn, oh. every time that uh, – oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, the way. There, there it is. There it is. Hey. hey. <laughs> it's a weird thing because where you have to sit in comparison to where the phone is lined up, so we appreciate you figuring it out. But that's what you yeah. do. That's how heady of a guy you are. It's how smart of a guy you are. What? That's why Greener Pastures Chicken is Hell the yeah. best chicken in, right. on earth because you've got a big brain. Vaughn, we appreciate you joining us each week. This has become a joy. This has become a real thing to look forward to. You had two tackles against the Packers. You had a bunch of pressure. It seemed like you guys were disrupting Aaron Rodgers in that Packers offense. How do you feel about this uh, offense coming out of the bye? Do you guys feel like there's still a lot of growth, or do you feel like you guys are humming where you're, where you're probably going to be for the rest of the season? Hey, uh, first of all, you know, thanks uh, for having me back on the show again. You know, this is one of my highlight highlights of the week. Oh, you know, hey, come over here and talk to you and AJ, mm -hmm. man. I appreciate you guys, man. This is dope. Fuck you guys. Um, <laughs> and then uh, back, to, back to our defense. Um, you know, I, I feel like we've, we've been going up. We've been trending up. Um, you know, if, I, if I'm picky about, you know, our defense and our game, you know, the way they ran the ball on, on us uh, oh, yeah. Sunday night football. 200. I, I don't think that was up to, Vaughn, they, I don't think that was, yeah, yeah. I don't think that was up to our standard. Um, I forgot about but that. But then again, you know, we won the game and we still had success and we won in, we still won in a dominating fashion. But, you know, you want to you, you wanna debrief and kind of, you know, tweak some of those things. And, you know, that's what we did all week. Vaughn, what's your your defensive coordinator, Leslie Frazier? They show him a bunch in the sidelines, and that dude is so stoic, so just in control. What's he like as yeah. a coach, like in the meeting room, on the field? Is he always that way? How you how you guys see him on TV? He's like that twenty four seven. Um, he's like that in the meeting room. He's like that at practice. You know, not a big yeller. He he is the exact same guy, no matter what's going on. And you know, granted, I've only been here a couple of months, um, and we've had a lot of success. We've only lost one game. So it's kind of you know you don't you don't really know, but I know of Coach Frazier, and I know that's that's him, and you know everybody respects him. You know he used to be a, a player. He knows what it takes, you know, on and off the football field to win championships. Um, he knows what's necessary to get his point across to guys, and even though know, he's an older coach in the league, he's still on some of the new fashions. He's still in the analytics. He's still in the in the breaking teams down. He knows about you know the new offenses that these teams are running. Man, and it's really an honor, an honor and a privilege to be a part of this defense with Coach Frazier. Listening to you talk about that Buffalo Bills team and your experience there, and you mentioned you've only been there for a few months. It feels like you've taken like a fish to water to being a Bill and being a part of Bill's Mafia. What have you learned about some of your teammates on the defensive side of the ball, maybe from training camp until now, now that you've got to play half a season with a lot of these guys? What have you learned about the defense that you're a part of, which was incredible last year? I think they were number one defense in the league last year, yep. only gotten better with your addition, obviously. What have you learned about the crew that you get to go play with every single era, Sunday, Monday, Thursday? Thursday. What? Fridays are coming next year. Yeah. You get it. Sundays, though, we'll say, just for the sake of the conversation. You know, I've been in the NFL for 12 years now. And, um, you know, even though I haven't been on some of these teams, I kind of know about a lot of these teams in the league. If I don't, I, of course, you never know until you get in there. But, um, you know, I, I, I want to be a GM when, it, when I'm done. So I kind of got, like, this, this vision on, like, what good teams are made of, what got good locker rooms look like. Um, I've been on a football team since I was in the fifth grade. I know I've said that before. And, you know, I just kind of got like this feel of what of what a good football team looks like. And, um, you know, before I came here, I was very familiar with a lot of these guys. And, you know, I knew that they had to have a great team. I knew that they have to have they had to have a great locker room and great leadership to have to have a successful team here in Buffalo. I knew it was more than just great play on the football field. I, know, I knew that there's nothing to do here but hang out but be with each other. And, and I was right, man. You know, these, these guys are a special group of guys. They got a great mixture of, of older guys and younger guys. Um, I'm, I'm in a D-line room. I haven't been in a D-line room my whole career. It's, it's a lot of us in there, and I'm enjoying it, man. Like, these guys are so funny. You know, it starts with, with Ed Oliver, and, you know, he kind of has, like, this this uh, this funny rivalry with, with Greg Rousseau, and Greg is a quiet guy, and, you know, Ed is, like, the loud outspoken one, and they have, like, this, this back and forth all the time, and it's hilarious, and, and then you got, you know, Tredavious White. He's, he's more stoic and more chill. Then you got, you know, uh, Jordan Poirier. That's my golfing buddy. You know, he takes everything serious. The guy he is on the golf course is the guy he is at work as well. 
and it's just a great <laughs> mixture of everybody, man. And I, I'm really enjoying being here. It honestly feels like I'm in college all over again. Oh, that's sure, I love you. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they've built a great culture. They've built something that every team is looking for, every great team is looking for. And the man that put that together, obviously the man that signed you to your deal and has been the patient one with Josh Allen is Mr. Bean, you know, general manager mm -hmm. Brandon Bean. He opened up about the trade process and the trade window uh, process the other day. And you as a future GM, I'm excited to get your take on how transparent he is with everybody. Here's Brandon Bean, general manager of the Buffalo Bills, talking about the entire trade situation in the NFL as a whole, and then what the Bills were thinking whenever they are thinking about adding a running back, inevitably being Naeem Hines. Listen to this transparency, which I think is a big deal in building a culture. I know it started with McCaffrey. Uh, yes, that was the last draft. I was there in Carolina. Know him well. You know, when you hear he's on the block, um, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence to not look into that. Um, the process of how we look into things from a scouting standpoint is our scouts are, they have teams they're responsible for and they're tracking everything. And when you hear buzzes out there on Twitter, on, uh, in the media, whatever, that a player may be available, that's their job to turn on the film, evaluate them, and then look into them. And there are times when things get put out there that the Buffalo Bills are after this player. Sometimes I'm not even aware, and I say that in the sense that a scout may have, you know, we may have a scout and he's in charge of the Denver Broncos, and he may call his contact at that team and say, hey, is, you know, is this guy even available? Should I even mention him? Should I not? Sometimes you never even hear back whether the guy's available or not, and then you read two days later that we went after him. And so I say that just to help us all how the process works, you know, the, the Al, that leads me to Alvin Kamara. You know, that was the scouts looking into, you know, they put something out, you know, maybe Philly was in it or someone, I can't remember the team, and checked into it, never actually got an answer whether he was available or not. And then Sunday it's reported on one of the shows that we were rebuffed. Well, <laughs> I never spoke to their GM about you know, that's just how the process works. So I want, you know, for all of us, that's how we work internally. Um, I know you guys have a job to do, but sometimes when you hear we're involved. Now, again, I did on Christian McCaffrey, I did speak to the Panthers GM, never made him an offer, but did stay in touch through the process. And ultimately, uh, it was going to be more than we were going to be able to do. Okay, so Vaughn, there was a lot there. It was two minutes. That's a long video. I apologize for making you an no, incredible good. guest to have to sit through that. But when I watched that, I was like, man, this is what mm -hmm. I would want every GM to be like. Like, hey, yeah. I heard there was some shit saying, I didn't even know we were even doing that. So, like, I'm not lying to you whenever I say, I don't know, like, this is how the process goes. What has your relationship been like with Bean? You want to be a GM in the future? Have you tried to take some stuff from him? And how do you think he has done as building that culture? It seems he's done a great job. You know, 100%, man. Um, you know, Bean is, 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 is special, man, and that's why they call him Big Baller Bean. Um, he's a great leader, and he's a great communicator as well. And on top of that, he's approachable. You can sit down and you can ask him anything about anything, and he'll be able to communicate that to you in a way that you can understand. And, um, you know, he's not cryptic about anything. You know, he's not lying, he's not lying to guys about this and that. Or He is, he is up front, and he, communica he communicates, and he delivers his message in a way that you can really understand and that you get. Um, like I said, I, I wanted to be a GM uh, by, the, by the other guys that I've seen, you know, John Lynch, John Elway, George Payton. But really being around Brandon Bean, like, he makes the job look so, like, cool and, and attractive. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Um, he is, like, just a he cool does. It's like guy. It's like he, he is, like, su he is a superstar um, GM. And, um, you know, see him walk around the, the facility and you can ask him about anything. Not even football. You can ask him about about golf, life, Loves whatever, golf. man. Yeah. And I yeah. think what makes him, you know, who he is, uh, amongst a lot of special things that, that go into making uh, Mr. Bean what he is, he is, a, he is a natural born leader and he's an excellent communicator. And on top of that, his delivery is special as well. So you can talk to him about, you know, Joe Schmo at, uh, at the University of Texas and he will deliver it in a way, he communicate in a way where you can understand it and you'll get it. And um, it's just been an honor and a privilege to, to be around him as well. And he's, all, he's aggressive, too, which players love. I yeah. mean, you guys brought in a guy, Naeem Hines. You're going to get to watch him, I think, over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. Here in Indianapolis, 
He was fucking special, dude. He's fast. He can do everything. And it seems like he'll fit right in in the culture. Everybody loved him that I ever talked to him. It just wasn't a fit here in Indy anymore because, you know. Sheesh. You know, you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. <laughs> Darius has a question for you, Vaughn. Uh, D-Buck, go ahead. I'm going to ask you uh, actually about one of your old teammates. You with your GM hat on. What's your thoughts on that um, Bradley Chubb? Trade and uh, more importantly, what type of dude are we getting down there, in Miami? As a Dolphins fan, hey Chubb, is, uh, Chubb, you know you talk, you see him on interviews, and you know you see him, you know talking on, on whatever you know a uh, fundraiser or show that he's doing. And he he seems and he comes across as this very you know soft spoken like guy, but he has a switch when the game starts, and um, you know for me, me playing on on the side of him, like. It is, it is a guy, like, you want to go out here and you want this guy beside you. Like, you want to be in an alley. You want to be in a bar fight with, with Bradley <laughs> Chubb. Like, he is right. going, he's going to leave it all out there. And he's going, he's going, he is going to trash talk. He is going to get in guys' faces. Okay. It, don't matter if, it don't matter if we winning or losing. Like, he, he genuinely loves the game of football. Not just playing on the football field, but everything that comes with it. He embraces the, um, the aggressive nature that you have to have. You know, he embraces the challenge and the competition, and it's just a switch on game day. That's really, really the only day. Well, a couple of times in practice, like I've seen him go crazy on guys on practice. But, you know, him going to a great team like that, I talked to him a week before when, when the trades was talking, or like when the trade rumors were, were coming about, and I just reached out to him and we talked about it. And um, I told him that when I got traded to the Los Angeles Rams, like it refreshed me. Mm-hmm. You know, at first, you whenever you get traded, you feel like, dang, it's my fault. Like, it's my fault while we weren't winning. I didn't get the job done. You know, as a competitor, you feel like, OK, like it was my fault that we weren't able to win. Just just me. And I was talking to him about that and, and he felt the same way. But right after that, I told him that once you get on that new team, which is just the next day, once you get on that new team, and you get in a locker room with all of those guys and you get around those coaches and they they need you. They brought you in for a specific reason. Like you have a purpose. You have a redefined purpose on, on what it takes to be successful on this new team, which which most of the time is going to be a winning team. And, you know, he went from the, he went from the three and five Denver Broncos to the five and three Miami Dolphins. And they are loaded all over the place. Corner yep. to corner. You know, they already had Agba on the other side. Offense is loaded. Two great wide receivers. And they were just missing him. It was, it was kind of similar, you know, to my time with the Los Angeles Rams. It, it was kind of similar. He comes, changes number. He's in South Beach. And just immediately it, it refreshes you. It, revi- it re-energizes you. And it really brings you back, man. I'm excited to see, you know, this Bradley Chubb with the Miami Dolphins. He, he's going he's gonna to be unstoppable, man, because he laid it all out there for the Denver Broncos each and every game. Yep. And to take his talent, to take his talent and his aggression to a team that's successful and good already, and he's not the only one that you got to scheme around, like, it's going to be special. I hate that they're in a division with us, but, you know, for Bradley, man, it, it, he's going to have a he's gonna have a special, you know, the, whatever it is, however long he's there for the next six years at least. He's going to have a special time in South Big Beach. money. Yeah, hey, congrats on the money. Yes, sir. Woo. Got AJ. Uh, you mentioned, uh, obviously, you, you want to be a GM someday and trying to figure out, like, how to put a team together. And you've been in a bunch of locker rooms. What is, like, have you figured out any kind of formula that you would want to, like, try to put together? What kind of players are, are that? Like, a good mix of young, old? Like, what does it mean? Dogs. I think, you know, I think for any leader, um, for any guy that's in a leadership position, you got to have people around you that, that are experienced just as much as, as you are. You gotta have guys that's that's gonna work, and they're and they're they're trying to elevate themselves. You, I I feel like you want to have guys that you want to have scouts around you that want to be the GM one day, and you want to have assistant coaches that want to be a head coach one day. You want guys that that want to elevate and grow, and in turn, it's gonna make everybody better. And I think once you surround yourself with with high performing, high quality guys, it's just like you know iron sharpens iron, and that's what I've learned from you know all the GMs that I've been around. They're not the one guy that's making all the decisions. You know, they put people around them that they truly trust. Um, they put hard workers around. They got guys around them that want to elevate and become the best at their field. And I think once you build a team full of those guys that you respect their opinion and you respect their decisions on stuff and they respect you the same way, that's that's where the magic grows. You know, every team, we, they didn't start here with a great quarterback. You know, they didn't start here with, with an amazing team and just slowly but surely – you chip away at it. You get coaches that can come develop guys. You're, you're successful in the draft. You bring in high quality, you know, free agents. Not just, you know, the top guys, but you got to bring in great locker room guys. You got to bring in a good mixture of dogs. dogs. You got to bring in a good mixture of smart guys. Nice. You got to bring in a good mixture of, of uh, potential and, and talent that can, 
that can uh, one day be, you know, uh, realized. And it's just, and of course, you got to have guys in the locker room that's really, that's really ready to buy in 100%. And that's the head coach's job. So it's, it's a mixture of, it's a mixture of everything. And you got to have, you got to have legendary people around you that push you, you push them. And that's, that's where the magic happens, in my opinion. In your opinion. Yeah, you've only won a couple different Super Bowls at two different organizations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. potentially going to win another one, <laughs> you know, at another organization. Yeah. Going to see another successful operation. <laughs> uh, Vaughn, every time we talk to you, I'm blown away uh, just by, you know, and I think this happened with Aaron when we were talking to Aaron week in and week out. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's actually pretty charming mm-hmm. and funny, funny. <laughs> and smart, <laughs> deep thinking. Mm-hmm. It's like it sound. I sound so like – rude to say this to your face but it is like i did not expect you to be this deep thinking of a human whenever it comes to (laughs) the sport of football but it's clear that that's why you have so much success you love the game of football it sounds like you love the sport of football everything it's brought and it fucking shows man you are dominant on the field it's been a lot of fun to watch you this year at buffalo and thank you for allowing us to talk to you each week last question here from boston connor for you as we move forward yeah vaughn now that's november it seems like the odell watch is kind of really zeroing in are you still talking to him every day day and do you still have the locker next to you saved for him or has that ship kind of sailed for you i've never lied to odell in my entire life um you know and and it's a tough situation for me because he's not just a guy that i he's not just some colleague around the league that i want to get on my team like he's he's i don't think i don't even think blood can make us you know any any closer so of course, I want him on my team, and of course, I'm Jesus. doing everything in my ability to make him feel comfortable with the Buffalo Bills. But at the same time, I'm his brother too, and I want him to make the best decision for Odell and for his, and for his son and for and for his his mom and his family. I, in my personal opinion, I feel like that's you know the best decision with us. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like you got to separate business and family at the same time. You know, I've given. I've never lied to the guy a day in my life. I've given him the best recruiting pitch that you possibly can give, you know, one of your brothers. He understands, and I think I think he knows. But at the same time, you got to do what's best for Odell Beckham, and we we'll just wait and see. Hopefully, it's you know here with the Buffalo Bills. You know, I I still strongly feel in my heart whenever it's time to you know to pull the trigger on the thing that he'll be with the Buffalo Bills. I know that um, he's looking at our team and he can see himself fitting here and fitting there, fitting in this locker room and fitting in this community. But at the same time, there are other good there are other good teams out there as well that you you just you just you just never know what's going on. But I've Always. given him the best the best recruiting pitch that I possibly can give him. Of course, I want him here. Of course, I'm still keeping in touch with my guy. And uh, it's just one of those things. The ship the, the envelope is not sealed until it's sealed. So we just had to wait and see. Well, good luck. It sounds like he's going to be a bill. He's a bill. I mean, the way it sounds like, especially with how good the team is, the team's rolling, the offense could use another weapon. Why not? Every yeah. team that's at the top needs another weapon. You bring in Naeem Hines just the other day. He's going to be another added weapon in there. I hope it all gets worked out in a beautiful fashion for you guys because it seems like your team is filled with nothing but gentlemen and people of high class. We appreciate everything that you've done for us this season, and uh, good luck this weekend, brother. We can't wait to chat with you next week. Man, I appreciate you guys. It's an honor and a privilege to be on this show weekly, man. Right. You know, AJ, <laughs> Pat, all the guys in the back that make the show what it is, man. I, I appreciate you guys, man, and I'll see you guys next week. Hey, you're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, Vaughn Miller. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. Great guy. Vaughn Miller is awesome. And unbelievable at football. Hey, he's going to be a GM and a good one, I think. Now, he laid out a lot of things that are going to be difficult to accomplish. You know, a lot of the hiring of the elite people around you that want to become the top of their position, like that's – you're going to have to – Finding that talent is a difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. I assume Vaughn will be able to do it. But then also rounding up all that talent, and then once they do leave, getting it again, I think that's sustained success. I would assume Vaughn Miller has the ability to do that. I can't wait to kind of watch him take over the world. AJ, I can't wait to watch that guy take over the world. He can do it every once. I mean, Vaughn's a great like spokesman for the NFL. If you're the NFL, you want Vaughn on as many mm-hmm. interviews and podcasts as you can get. The Paffle. Yeah. Hell yeah. Here we go. Uh, but let's take a break here, and then on the other side we'll have Coach P's keys for the Houston Texans, and then Coach P will give his pick. Before we head to a five-minute break, after that incredible conversation with Vaughn, which we appreciate. Hell yeah. Love you, Vaughn. Shit. It's time, Diva. Come on, Diva. Diva. Let's thank her. Your whole life is going to be up to this moment. What's that? First one's going to make it. Yeah, Phil is not here. We don't know where he went. We have no idea where he went. Hmm. 
I assume he went on like a run or something or did Probably something like that. Oh. He had a meeting set up here with somebody who's I've never met before. Nope. We didn't know it was Where's coming. Pants from DB, but he is here. You do look super cool. Every day you look super cool. What are those pants? Are those Yogers? These are uh, Joes. 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 Cargo Joes. Hey, they look fucking sweet. You know what else would be sweet? You make this shot. We'll give ten random people five hundred dollars who retweet this tweet, say something nice to somebody, and put their cash tag in the reply. D butt for a tweet. Oh. Darius Butler, UConn Husky, a team that is getting back into the game in football. Oh. It did hit the glass, though. We're getting closer. We are calling where it's hitting. This time, a Splash City. Ooh. Oh. Oh. All right. Ooh. All right. <laughs> next one. Next shot, best shot. That's right. Oh, you're <laughs> just taking it. No, out. no. I respect that. Come on. Because there's five balls you can putt right down there. Or them books. You haven't putts since yesterday. Here we go. Here we go. Here we Here go. Here we go. Five, now five we five go. Five. AJ, how many is he got to make? Remember, now listen, let's hold him to a standard. Two. If we were to say two, Four. see, see, the, see yeah. I think you're mocking him now. Yeah, Four. Sure. I messed up. No, no. That's a tough putt. I've seen how that breaks. Three. Man, breaks Four. I think you have to go three out of five here. Three out of five? You got that. Yes. Three out of five three if Darius right. Brother goes... Three out of five from about eight feet where Tiger Woods went. Fifty-two uh -oh. percent. Well, like, just just getting a feel for it there. First one doesn't matter. Only need to make three. There it is. There's one. Bang! Oh, oh. Here you go. Four hey, around the bat. Rim job for AJ Hawk. One oh down. yeah. Ooh, a little um. bit of a push, or was it a break? We don't know. Not making Darius Butler. A little bit further than his last putt. Oh my God! <laughs> Sweet Jesus! It's been a rough couple of days for Darius. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, got robbed. All right. Made oh. one. Hey, made one. Hey. All right. Go. All right. That's All right. good news for next week when he yeah. comes to town. Exactly. Yeah. He's walking out. All right, D butt. See you, man. Appreciate everything, D butt. Love you, D butt. Love you, D butt. Huh? He's going towards the basketball. Uh, oh, 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 the phone. <laughs> no, 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 flipped it off. Yep. Right in the kitchen. <laughs> yep. All right. That's a tough walk. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go, go That's back. a tough walk. All right. Let's refocus. Here we go. Let's recenter. Let's, re uh -huh. let's re energize. What? And let's re enter ourselves into NFL conversation on the mm -hmm. other side of this five minute break. Whenever Coach P comes up and tells us what it sounded like in the Houston Texans locker room Monday morning as they're preparing for this evening's matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Lovey Smith as Coach Pagano on the other side, and then he'll give his prediction. We'll give our prediction, and we're getting the fuck out of here. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Take five. Five. Hello and welcome to the special investigative report. Much has been made in the media world on the life and charitable donations of the man Pat McAfee. Especially lately, with the rise of the ever popular Pat McAfee Show. A show that in his own words, stinks. We thought it privy to dive into the inner workings and machinations of this tiny business, this small regional show that has reached international discourse. We sat down with the suit himself, Bruce Brown, to figure out what, where, when, why, and how they're able to give away so much money, so much money to the viewers of this incredible program. So yeah, when you enter a Pat McAfee show giveaway or win a FanDuel merch picks contest on Sunday, essentially, um, you know, the entire hashtag will be downloaded into an Excel file and the winners will be randomized within that. 
um, and then we do a quick scumbag check, basically click on the profile and, and make sure you know you aren't a robot or blocked by Pat. And then it'll be transferred over to Dirty Gertie, who creates the Winter Wednesday graphic, which then runs on the show each Wednesday in a commercial break. Um, if you win over $599, um, we're going to need your email, or you can email giveaways at patmacapishow.com. If it's under $599, all we need is your cash tag. And if you win merch, obviously we need your size, address, and what you want from the store. Usually I'll just reply to you on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions about any giveaway, whether it's cash that you either are, are waiting on or, or merch, yeah, you can just reach out to me on Twitter or email giveaways at patmacapishow.com. Please give us about one to two weeks to sort out your prize. That's typically how, how long it, it, um, it takes. But again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. We reached out to PMI's money man himself, CFO Phil, for an on-camera interview. Regretfully, he declined the segment, but he did give us the salacious, juicy details. In an email correspondence, CFO Phil replied, $2.6 million year to date. Too much money. There you have it. $2.6 million given away, a pissed off CFO, and a show that quote unquote, stinks. Good night, good morrow, good luck, and good fortune. When are we going to watch that? What is it? What is the show? Um, it is Max. Jude? It is. <laughs> Please. Max is homesick from school. Right. Oh, Jude. Oh, Godspeed. Jude. Doesn't sound very NFL players won't be the only great thing you'll be able to watch on TV. I cannot uh, say anymore, but perhaps I'll be on. Max, what's the name of the show he was on? Max. Say it, Max. Tell us Max. Max. What say was it, Max. Take down. Can you? Okay. Oh, you just... <laughs> Thank you, Max. That was awesome. What is it? Something take down? Tailgate takedown. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. Can't wait to watch that. Connor, your question. We're going to have a major conversation after this. You just sent him away for six months in summer. He would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, your question for. Uh... Hey, welcome back to the program here on this Thursday Night Football Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. It is time for us to learn what it sounded like in the Houston Texans meeting room on Monday morning in preparation for this Thursday Night Football prime time on prime game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. To make it feel as if we are in the team meeting room mm -hmm. alongside the Houston Texans listening to Lovey Smith, it is time for Coach P's Keys. With Chuck Pagano. Yeah. Yeah. We're in Houston. We're in Houston. Monday morning. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Good morning, man. Good, Good morning, morning coach. coach. I know everybody's disappointed. Um, I told you from day one I was going to be honest with you guys. Always up front, forthright. Thanks, Lovey. And that was bad. <laughs> I didn't expect that, Coach. That was that was that was that, was, that, that ain't us. We suck though. Well, well it kind of is. I think that might that, be that us. That wasn't us. We're better than that. Are we? You guys are better than that. What? Three and seven. we have to do better. He's not. So here's the great thing. Not. Four days. All right, we got an opportunity to redeem ourselves. Hell yeah. Let's take a look at these guys. Hell Enough yeah. needs to be said. Everybody knows what happened up Jeez, front the line of scrimmage. Good. We got out physical. What? Beat up. What? Missed 100 tackles. What? Control, what? couldn't catch. What? what? I'm telling you, you're better than that. I still believe. I hope. I don't know. Let's take a look at these so. guys. We know they're undefeated. Oh, Jesus Hell. Christ. I did not know that till right now, Coach. They're undefeated. This is a good football team. Let's take <laughs> a look. Offensive keys. Oh, man. The best. oh no. Not much to be said. Jesus Christ. That's a this lot is of where it starts. What the fuck? Hey! <laughs> Hey, <laughs> we can and we will. Okay, we have Lose. to. Yes. All right, we have to. It's a lovey guy. Every so goddamn player on the defense. What coach. the fuck? They got a good squad. Hmm. They got a good defense. This is run by Jonathan Gannon. Listen up. Jonathan Gannon's the D.C. They're a 3-4 outfit. Gannon. Okay, so it's five down. All right, five down look. Mm -hmm. All right, you're going to see. <clears throat> 
I'm going to give you some tips on these guys, but let's let's talk about. Okay, they got they got some beasts in here. Cox, Bullet. Hargrave, Bullet. Sweat, Bullet. Miss Sweat, you. Miss you, Devon, Graham, Bullet. everyone they have. Coach. Number seven, Reddick. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he leads them in Song. sacks. Jeez. I mean, they all got three or four sacks. They got 22 as a unit. It's a damn good unit. And the secondary? They just traded for Robert money. Quinn too, Coach. Coach Mr. Yeah. Takeaway Slay, three mm -hmm. picks. Barry, Brad Berry's got, he's got, I think, th two or three. Gardner Johnson, they traded, they got traded from uh, uh, New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. Traded for him. Coach. He's got four picks. Epps got a couple. They all got him. Coach, Edward you believe in, in us middle. this week? It's not <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. We got a, I, mean, I told you I wasn't going to lie to you. Well, I want, I want like you to you know what you're, right what you're up, <laughs> uh, up against. Davis? It's coach. You're going to have a day. You're going to have a great day. All right? You're going to have a great day. More, you're going to come through for him. Hell you're going to yeah. play your ass off. Oh, yeah. Dorsett, opportunity. Been waiting for this one. We're going to hit you deep. We're going to go deep on these guys. But we got out physical, and we got to run the ball. Now, these guys are ranked third, all right, in the league, total defense. Oh. Points are fourth. Jesus Christ. You look up and down the deal, and they're top three or four in every category. How do we have a chance? Top three or four in every – but here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to tell you this. Uh -huh. They're 29th. Listen to me. What do we do best? Run. Lose. We run the football. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this guy, Sorry, man. Sorry, Coach. I Jeez. got hope. I'm taking notes, Coach. I said Cut run. that guy. I said run, Coach. <laughs> Fuck the notes. <laughs> <laughs> we need some damn metal and some damn backbone and some freaking grit. We need more players, Coach. Okay, so listen up. We need Start listen up. Again. We run the ball. Miss we these. have to run it. These guys give up. Listen to this. We miss Jack, Coach. Five points. Stop. Listen. <laughs> what <do we> do? <laughs> Laramie. You high again? <laughs> Five point. <laughs> Five point <laughs> one five. AJ. Five point one five for rush, 29th in the league. Can we not take advantage Terrible. of that? They Hell can't no. stop yeah. the rush, coach. Let's protect. <laughs> we got to win first down. Look, a punt is okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Hell Davis, yeah. we yeah. get in trouble. We get in third and long. It's going to be a long day. We got to say manageable stuff, all right? Any drive that ends in a kick. And coach. look, a punt is okay. Yeah. If, don't try to force something. Just let's take what they give us, and if it's not that they got six, they're number one in the league right now in takeaways. They got 14 of them. They're plus 14 Jeez. turnover margin. Jeez. All right, what are we? that's I big. Take care of the damn football. Let's go. Defensive keys. Yeah, fun and good. <laughs> keys of victory. After last week, we got an opportunity. <laughs> tackle, tackle, tackle. Jalen Hurts. Come on, Pat. Dog. Miles. What are we? Player. Player. Mm -hmm. Brown, only three touchdowns last week. Oh, yeah. Is that good? Three touchdowns. Okay. Pascal, don't sleep on Pascal. Score no. touchdown. Right, he's got some chemistry with this, uh, this yeah. coordinator, this head coach, right? Nick Sirianni. Been here now. The head coach for them. I think he calls a play. Shane Steichen is the offensive coordinator on paper. But I think Nick Car he brought him from where? Indy. Indy. He brought him from Indy. He was a good player for Indy. Yeah, scored yeah. a lot of touchdowns. That's why they right? got rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, Laramie. This goes Goddard. Okay, there's. It's Hurts. All right, Sanders, wide, Goddard, wide, Brown, wide. Devontae. Oh, Jesus. They got a lot. They do. We got to tackle. I don't know if we got big, hey, number one RPO team in the league right now. Number one RPO team. They do a great job with that. All right, we got to be on point. We got to be on point. Win first down. Okay. We can't have second and 12, okay? We can't have penalties. We can't be second and 15. We got to be second and five. Well, guess what, Coach? We're probably going to be. Run Coach, we need they're them giving up. So listen, listen. Should we punt on third? If they're, one if they're giving up, we we thought about it. Coach, okay, we if they're giving up 5.15 per rush right now, 29th in the league, you're mm -hmm. telling me we can't stay ahead of the chains? We can't win first down? You're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Right. We, damn right. Yeah. What about on defense? We definitely can't. Yeah, we want them we in second and 15. Yep. Yeah, that's there. right. Yeah. <laughs> You're damn right. Hell yeah. You're damn right. Let's yeah, go. That was Way a to test. stay with them. Let's yeah, go. Gotcha. Stay with uh, yeah, them. We Two gotcha. takeaways. Hell we yeah. We got to hold We're them. We're not dead yet. They're really good on first down. Well. Okay? And we got to be two. We know that. Okay, two turnovers. Let's get them. That's Special it. teams, all right, 100% field goal operation. Jeez. All right, let's create short field with a big return. Covey, you're our guy. 6'6". Six, six. All right, Covey's their guy. 
All right, 6.6 .6 for punt return, 23 average there. Damn. That's okay. Sippos, anybody know Sippos? No, he never punts because uh, the offense is so good. He doesn't have to do it a lot. No. Mm. Okay, but when he does, he's average, all right? 40.3 net. All right, and Elliott's a good kicker. He's been around for a while. He's mm -hmm. one for one, 50 plus. Okay, so let's, let's do our job, all right, in special teams. Let's create a short field for our offense. Hell yeah. All right, let's create a short field. Mm -hmm. And then hand that ball off to 31. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on, Romeo. Come on. Come Coach, on. Coach, you want two takeaways? Coach? Yes. We got like two all One here. thing we do good, okay? Remember, one thing we do good here, we take the ball away. We take care of it. We don't give it up we either. Do? We're high. We're highly ranked okay. as far as takeaways now. We're plus three. They're plus 14. We're plus four. Plus three in turnover margin. You guys know that? That's pretty good. Pretty you guys, good. all you read about is all, all the bullshit they write about how bad we are. Then. We I don't understand good, it. Aren't we? Look at us. I don't understand Five. it. We tied with the Colts. Plus three. All right, let's take a look at these guys. Sure, they suck. That was crazy. Okay, so here's some here's some tips for you. Here's some tips. All right, with this with this defensive front. If that middle, it's mofo. You know what MOFO stands for? Motherfucker. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Middle of the Middle field opens. This is probably oh, why wow. we're 1 5 and 1. Yeah. Okay? Because, it, it, you know, <laughs> bull crap like that. That means the middle of the field is open. <laughs> I suppose. Coach. Are you kidding me? Coach, we so, talk. So if the middle of the field's open, okay, and they're going to disguise, they do a good job with it, it ends up being open at the end of the day, four man rush. All right, and they're going to play mm. mostly quarters behind it. Oh. Okay, and then they're also going to give you, Davis, they're also going to give you some variations. They'll play a little bit of six, which is quarter, quarter, half. Why is he rubbernecking? That's just his neck. What's Davis, that? Coach, that's just his neck. What's wrong with What's you? What's he doing? What's he doing? Why are you looking down your nose at all of us? Talk to Coach. Okay. It's Coach. we got to get a medical guy in here. Check yeah, so check it out. Coach. If the, hey, if the, the, middle, if the middle ends up closed, let's take a look at the tape here. Davis doesn't right. deserve that. No. Run it. Needs Doug, Coach. What'd they end up? Open or closed? Open. Okay, middle open, four man rush. If it ends up being closed after disguise, post snap, ends up being closed, you could get more rushers. All right, you could get some five man swill stuff out of these guys. They love swill. That's double edge uh, pressure, five, off the, uh, five man rushing. Watch, watch Cox here. Run it back, please. Watch Graham over here. Hargrave. Dog. Here's Reddick. Keep an eye. Reddick can go now. He's going to chop that arm. Speed to power. Then club. Retrace. Top of the pocket. Sack. Four. We got to protect Davis, man. Can you're coming off injury, right? Yeah. Can we get after it? Yes, sir. Can we get after these guys? Quiz and Barry. Yeah. Where's Quiz? Right here, Quiz. Coach. Come on, man. Come on, hey, coach. Quiz. Make, coach. Let's ID these guys. Let's make the right declarations. Coach. Let's get us in the right protection, and let's block. Coach, we tied the Colts, and the Colts beat the Chiefs. We can beat anybody. Let's Hell go. Yeah. There we go. Damn right. I love that. Thank you. We didn't beat the Colts. Way to be awesome. Let's go. Tie the Colts. Let's go to the next one. Is Cox. this the next one? Yep. Tie the Eagles. Okay, no, let's see what happens, teams. okay? What they do, they do a nice job here. Let's see what this is. <clears throat> they missed this because of the pressure. Mm -hmm. Boy, All right, they got middle closed. Brought the safety down, only rushed four on this one. Why they only rush four? First and second down, you can hang your hat on what I told you. Middle open, four-man rush. Middle close, good chance you're going to get swill. Swill is Sam and Will off of both edges. Swill. That's five-man pressure, and they love to play three under three deep. Okay, we've talked ad nauseum about three under three deep coverage here, right? Yep. Right. All right, we understand what that is when we rush five. This is a third and five situation, so they end up playing. They like some one hole, all right? They like some one hole. Where's Stevie Nelson? Stevie, what, what one hole? What is that? What is that? Talk to the guys about one hole. What does one, that mean? Man to man, inside defenders. You play outside leverage. Use your hole player. Um, usually called a shorter down. So if you cut me, you take my guy. I turn into the hole player. Gotcha. And we cut one loose here. So we've got well, some mess injury. routes in the game plan. Okay, yeah. Davis, we got some mess routes. Try to get some guys picked off. Go ahead and look at the rush again. Laramie, we got to do a job now. Come on, can. Quiz, we up for it? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. How about that rookie Brown? Where are you at, Brown? Yep. Brown. Hell yeah. Right, yep. Come on. I don't care about rookie this, rookie that. It's eight weeks in. Hell yeah. Okay? Season You're seasoned vet, vet right now. You've got to show up. Were you proud of your performance last week? I'm proud every day, Coach. I think right. what he was saying is you're bad last week. You didn't play no, well. we struggled. But you're going to come back. You got an opportunity. I'm oh, sorry, you weren't bad. This. You struggled. Okay, got an empty set. We all struggled. Let's see what we got here. You're still in the NFL. 
CJ, Howdy. GJ. Oh, we got a chance. Set him up. Run it back. We got a chance, Davis. Look yes, at coach. this. Look at this. Empty coverage. They're, what, what are they playing? Two. Yeah, no middle. They're play, playing two, but what happens to our middle paint guy? Drop. AJ. He's sitting. He's sitting way too low. You gotta be deep. You gotta be deep in that. Look at what they ran on offense. Okay, we're gonna put this in. It's a copycat Perfect. league. Go back to the uh, wow. beginning, please. Did he tip it? Jake. Yes. Yep. He got a hand on it. Right, Edwards. Hey, go. TJ Edwards, a ball player now. All right. Watch. They're gonna do a little stick nod here. We've got this in our package. Great play. Uh -huh. Hey, get him to think, hey, we're running a little stick route, all right? And it's the nod, okay? He's got to be disciplined on this. That's why they got the two curl window players in this two deep, oh, two deep scheme. Four-man rush with middle open. We got to make this throw and catch right here. Yeah. These opportunities, we got to make these throw and catch. Take advantage of these. He did a nice job tipping this. And wow. Chauncey, mm -hmm. right? Gardner? CJ, yeah. GJ. CJ, GJ. He's picks. a ball player. Four Man. picks for them. That's great. Let's go to the next one. Great route. Stay with me, guys. Hey, hell yeah. we've got Let's a go. great opportunity in four days. Hell yeah. Redeem ourselves. We're going to win. What do we say they love? RPOs, right? Yeah. Yeah. What do we say? Can Sanders play? Yeah. 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 Miles I'd can say. play. we Football. got a gang tackle. Football. we got a tackle, period. Right. we got to be willing participants oh. in the run game. Jesus. Singletary, you got to be a consistent tackler. I agree. Need you Singletary. Come on now. You, we know you can cover and ball hawk and all that stuff. I'm gonna come Stevie, downhill. we, we got to have you guys. Come Owens. Downhill. Come all over. Boom. Yep. Mm. Run it back. They got a lot of good players. They got, they got two guys in the same gap. That ain't going to work. No, it's not. That ain't going to work. Gap integrity. And this guy, no, it's gap integrity. Amen. And what happens is, what happens is, is you think, oh, I got to be a hero. 52 here for Tennessee. I got to be a hero. And what he does is he's supposed mm. to be over here, and then oh. all he does is do this. No Pete. All right, and now we got two in the A gap, nobody in the B gap, and 26 is gone. Do your job. Yes, coach. That's all we have to do is execute and do our job. Holy hell. Oh. 23. Who? Yeah. Come on, buddy. No, 23 is all right. There. 52. He's expecting, yeah. he's expecting that so, ball to come back. It's a D back. lineman, right, AJ? Wake yeah. up. Yeah. That ball is, look at it. That's I wonder a good we gap. got our issues. You guys don't even know who's supposed to be where. I play corner. Let's go to the next one. They could press the hole. Got no all 11. Let's go to the Two next one. guys stay out there. Oh. He can run. Oh, Number 11. How many touch, touchdowns AJ Brown have last Three in the first Three. half, coach. Three. Damn. The guy's a dog. Deep as the deepest, wide as the wide. He doesn't even think it's coming to him. Boom. But if we got two guys back there, gotta win. Owens, we got to make that play. Yes, coach. Come on, Stevie. Derek, you guys are good Pressure. enough to make these plays. Let's don't let these shot plays happen, these big plays. Let's take Brown out of it. Let's make them beat us with somebody else. They got to beat us with Sanders. They got to beat us with Goddard. All right? They got to beat us with Devontae Smith. Right. We can compete with those dudes. We can. are all pretty good. Hey, like I said. Yeah, you said it. We got a great opportunity. Yeah, we do. Okay, nobody's happy with our record and where we're at. We can't change any of that. We can't. Till, till Thursday. But on Thursday night, I guarantee you, there is nobody. Nobody's going to give us a chance. No. 14 point dogs. I don't know what that line is. 14. 14. 14. 14. Oh, you got, okay, that... That's part of the problem. Yeah, I hammered the I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> we got a great opportunity. Nobody's going to give us a chance. Let's go see your coaches. We're going to walk through this about recovery. They got to travel. We don't. Let's shock the freaking world. Hell yeah. yeah. Yes. Let's shock the world Woo! Thursday world. night. Hell yeah. Because nobody's going to expect men. it. Hell yeah. Nah. Nobody's going to expect it. Nobody. No one. Not even us. Uh, Not even you. See your coaches. Yeah. All right. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. Big love. All right. Chuck, you were Coach Sirianni. You were Coach Lovey Smith today. All week you had a chance to dive into the film for both the Texans and the Philadelphia Eagles to put together what you thought each coach would be saying to their team to get a big win on this Thursday night. Who wins? So, you don't have to pull it up right away. Okay. If you just look at all the numbers, mm -hmm. right, the comparisons, Sure. You know, Philly's offense versus Texans defense. You know, Texans offense versus Philly defense. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of single digits, you know, for Rankings. Philly, and there's Rankings. a lot of big numbers on the other side. Show you. Rankings, yeah. You know, there's a couple areas. Red zone defense, Houston's good. All right. I got a feeling with those wide receivers out, they're going to try to pound the ball with, mm -hmm. with uh, 
Dobbs? 31? No, Romeo. 31. Romeo. Pierce. 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 Romeo Dobbs. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Dobbs. He plays for another team. Plays he's a good player, Packers. too. We no, could he's, use him. He's a, he's a stealer, is he not? No, no, he's, he's back, back here. There's back a lot of things going on. Oh, yeah. Chase Claypool <laughs> does a bear. But run so, fair enough, they gotta try to okay. they got to try to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, dink and dunk, throw some perimeter string, screens, try to take a shot to Dorsett, whatever. D- Philly's defense, um, they're really good. Their offense is really good. Mm-hmm. Those comparisons, I mean, Let's take a look. We're so fucked. I just think, again, this is, oh, oh. the dog mentality. Hey. Hey. That's like, so, hey. Hey. I, hey. Hey. I, think because, I think because of their leadership and the town, they're a talented team. We know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably the best team in the National Football League right now. Yeah. One of, yeah. one of two or three, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. These guys, yeah. the Bills, the Chiefs. Right. Yeah. Patriots. Vikings. No, that's Bears. bikes, cowboys. I mean, that's top five, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because of this and their leadership, they're not going to fall asleep on this. Okay, there's no way in hell because they got this process deal. It's all about process. It's one day at a time, one game at a time. Their whole deal is, hey, pit, screw pit. It's on to the next one. Spark. They All they want to be is 1-0. and Not the dog. That's their culture. It's really good. The other thing about their culture, huh, everybody laughed. Yeah. Right? Everybody right. laugh when they talk about flowers and the, the roots and the good. watering. You know? I love flowers. And we know how they train. Dogs. Right. We know how they train. Right. Rock, paper, scissors. That's right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think right? I just saw that. When they oh, evaluate, yeah, no. they laughed at that too, right? We're at the combine. Uh-huh. And yeah. they do that yeah. at the combine. Oh, and yeah. Check see what a guy. Rochambeau. Huh? Yep. Rochambeau. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he actually beat. So. Nick Sirianni. You guys want to do a best of one right now or what? Best of three? Best one, of three? Two, three. Shoot. Oh. oh wow. Nighty night, coach. Uh. Sorry, coach. <laughs> so, having said all that, I just think there's too much. I think they got too much leadership. I got them 35 Jesus. to 7. Wow. That's, that's quite a cover. That's an alternate spread. Yeah. Chuck, you don't know anything about that, obviously. No. You like the Eagles. You like no. the dog mentality. You like what they have in their jib, the cut of their jib, uh, to go ahead and put a game away that they should put away. And there's too I, many injuries. I mean, they're missing too many guys yeah. for Houston. And and a gonna, those Street. coaches, Lovey's <laughs> going to have them ready to play. They'll be ready to play. Yeah. And those, they're professional athletes. Uh-huh. They've got a primetime game. All right. They're at home, all that stuff. They'll be ready to go. I, and it'll be, I think it'll be close but for a minute, but I think they'll just pull away in the end. Yeah. Just, they just don't have enough dudes. Well, congrats, Steve. Yeah. Good congrats way, Bill. We appreciate you, Chuck. Now, let's send, this, uh, let's send this incredible right, Coach Us Up Chuck Thursday, Coach P's Keys Thursday, Thursday Night Football Thursday, November 3rd off in a beautiful fashion. We have not had a single winner in the last few days. That is abnormal. If you did see the piece earlier, we have given away $2.6 million this year yeah, in these contests yeah, and giveaways yeah, yeah. on Twitter and on Instagram. I learned that number just yesterday alongside everybody else. It's a good time. It's a great time. And we'd like to give away more, maybe 10 winners of $500 if you make one of these shots here, Chuck. AJ. Say throw up, or, coach? Putt or putt? I think you should throw, then shoot the basketballs, then putt. It's whatever it takes. Not real good with the hoop deal. Okay, so you want to throw th- the football. You're, you're, throw, a, you're a football guy. Throwing the ball. Yeah, yeah you're a okay. football guy. So Ten people win $500 randomly. Who not only retweet this video, but also reply with saying something nice to somebody and their cash tag. Oh, oh no. Okay, hold on. Maybe pick up the putter. Maybe we should. Come on, coach. Come on. Come on, Come on. 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 Oh, oh no. Jesus. You're turning into a Texan. Yeah, the stink of Texas. <laughs> this is not good. Off on you. <laughs> this one's going in. Come on, Dougie. Uh, here you go, here you go, here you go. Here you go. Yep, yep, put it, put it. Fuck that football. <laughs> here we go, Chuck. <laughs> on this Thursday night football, Thursday, November 3rd, if Coach P's Keys host, Chuck Pagano, can go three of five on the putting green here, we will give ten people five. Nice. Oh. Oh. Is that how it's been? It is. Oh. Get some of them gummies. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, if Chuck can make uh, the last three putts here. Yeah. Come on, Chuck. Putt from the old tees. <laughs> well, oh, Coach Peace Keys are still good. Yeah, yeah. Great. great speed. Great. Coach Peace Keys are still good. Great speed, Love though. Love you guys. Good, good <laughs> <job>. <laughs> Love you, Coach. Love you, Coach. Safe travels, Coach. 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 Jesus. Hey, it's not. Mm-hmm. Listen, not just you. Yeah, I think Phil, Phil might have hit him. 
think Phil came hmm. in like Sage. Just yep. Just something. Phil's got Sage something gets the bad on. stuff out. He came in and he brought the CFO. The first, yeah. 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 Spray. You know what I mean? Like the. Yeah. Psh- yeah. 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 It's not good. No, it's not. There are a lot of people saying uh, D Butt was tanking because they saw how much money was given away. And I wouldn't do that to the people. Whoa. No. Well, D Butt. Sure? What Connor does street. is for the company. He. he Amen. <laughs> Can't have him doing anything because he's doing it for the company. Always. He knows any money that's given away in a contest is not given to Connor and the boys. Well. And not just you. Team. Well, you know, you also think oh, about. Oh, he's a team guy. Some of the, sure. you know, maybe if we're going to Arizona for the Super Bowl. Hold on. Let's see what that costs. Maybe, you know, we take some of the giveaway money. Use it for the Super Bowl. You know, I'm, I'm always jet. factoring in everything. It was a sweet jet y'all took to uh, L.A. Boom. Right. Exactly, d Are you in that jet with us I or no? No, I was. Maybe that was a good early. team, camaraderie. You should have came out with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah everything was perfect except for that, You're right. that yeah. one thing on the jet, which AJ. AJ references a lot. What? Some what? might say that the music selection on the Whoa! Jet. Whoa! I would not Whoa! say that. Oh, I love Gum's Ooh, music Ooh, more than anybody. The guys that's been fucking shit. exported from America. Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason to bring it That's the last thing he knew. There's no reason to bring it out. I pound Gumpy. Music has has good music more than anybody else. Do you? Yeah. Seems like you just brought this up so we can maybe have a conversation about Gump's ear and the tones that he enjoys. No, I brought it up because I made me think of the Super Bowl, and every time AJ comes here on a Friday, he says, "Hey, remember how bad Gumpy's music was on the plane <laughs> over Whoa, to AJ, the I'm Super like, Bowl?" Saying that about Gump, Gump doesn't deserve Come that. On. Gump's got the golden yeah. ear. Yeah. yeah. I was too busy dominating Euchre. I didn't even hear the music. Cheating That's right. in Euchre. That's if right, AJ. You weren't winning. You didn't win. You, didn't I win. See every, you were cheating. We won every single game. You didn't win. What are you we talking about? You guys, you guys cheated and, and lost. You didn't, didn't win. Okay. AJ's in a power stance yeah. over my we shoulder won. as I'm sitting down. Oh, I got to stay out of the floor. I got to stay out And he's sweating over the top of me. Dealing eight cards at once. Get the fuck away from me. You're like apples or watermelons. I'm not looking at anything. You guys are so stupid. I'm not looking at anything. you have. Our rules, yeah, you can't look at the fucking other people. Yeah, you can't, can't look at anything. <laughs> can't just do that. I can give four cards, one card. I can deal however I want. As long as you guys get five oh, cards. Oh, the dealing was the least of the fucking... Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the dealing was the worst I've ever seen in the history of the game. And remember, <laughs> game was created in Pennsylvania, if you do recall. Uh-huh. Euchre created okay. by the Pennsylvania Dutch well. state that I'm from. Uh, yeah. Dr. Oz also from that That's state. Right. We That's just right. <laughs> uh, but I didn't learn until I came out here. Didn't you? you cheat dealing, you try to look at cards, and you bully people. Yeah. The table talk that you do is just it's absurd. Despicable. You just absolutely, you know, because Marcus Freeman goes, if I had to compare him to uh, his toughness, it would be to A.J. Hawk, you know, because he's so tough. <laughs> he plays cards with everybody in Ohio, and they're like, hey, A.J., you can fucking just cheat the entire evening. That's pretty much what he did on the entire what flight. What do you do, fight me? Still, exactly. He actually said that to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. what, do you, what, do you, what do you do, fight me? Like, oh, what do you do, fight me? Okay. <laughs> no. And then he would go on the loose. That did uh, happen, didn't yes. it? I forgot well, all verbatim. Minus, minus the losing. All that happened minus losing. We definitely won. No, no you lost. You too, lost. On top Debbie of it. knows. Yeah. I'm a very good partner, very positive. I pumped yep. Debbie up the whole time. If I had a man, go with it, Evie. Evie would bring me back. Evie, if you're good. thinking of heart, go with it, man. Go, do it, man. <laughs> go with it, man. Trust your gut, yeah. dude. Your gut instinct player or diamond. Go for it. It's like you can't say that. Can't do that. That yeah. is not legal in the no. game. No, I That's would just... never. I never called out any suit. I would never say the suit. All right, we are not talking about the same situation. <laughs> yeah. Ours being reality, yours not. But I'm excited for the next. You need to make your way to. I'm India. making it. I was out early. For the Pro Bowl on that side, oh, Vegas okay. stayed okay, out okay. there and then went to LA. That's okay. why I missed. Need you to come with it. The plane is hilarious. Yeah, I mean, awesome. We so get a fun. commercial yeah. airliner basically, mm-hmm. yeah. and um, it's just yeah. us on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was incredible. AJ still found a way to make it uncomfortable though. Didn't we? Biggest fucking plane in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's standing <laughs> on my shoulder. Will you stop <laughs> looking at my goddamn moving the chair the every ride. second, dude. That chair is rocking back and forth. Bro, he put yeah. He took his shoes off, right? Power mm-hmm. seat. He's like this, standing in the fucking aisle. <laughs> and then out, out of nowhere, I'm just like looking at my cards, fucking leg on the fucking arm. I'm like, you can't, can't happen. That cannot happen. You cannot be doing that. I understand what you're doing right now. I don't like can't it. Have. I don't like it at all. I can't be hey. doing it. Hey, I really do appreciate you letting me on that foot. Yeah, 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 I bet. All right. Get your fucking foot know. off of my... I thought I might have taken a nap or something beforehand, and all of a sudden I was standing for four and a half hours dominating Euchre with my partner, Evie, so I had a dominating. great time. Yeah, you were in yeah, a delusional yeah. state if you thought you were dominating. You were getting dominated by Connor and I, what? because that's what we do in the skies. Goddamn right. Haven't <laughs> lost in the skies ever. That's not true. 
Says who? Fox Fox said you today, actually are the only one that knows losing. What? That's, that's that was the you. Houston Texans. That was one of the best. You. What are we best at? <laughs> and you said yeah. losing earlier. Jeez. Just ha- too quick. You know, I can, I forget what locker room we're in sometimes yeah. during yeah. that. Yeah. You having that on. I mean, I, uh, Chuck had the battle today. Thanks for the team. Yeah. Way to go, Chuck. Yeah. Way to battle. Speaking of battling, we learned a lot of things. Did he sway you in any way? What are you thinking for this evening? Oh. AJ Hawk, your official pick. Darius, you will be next. You're in the <laughs> on deck circle. AJ, your thoughts. 14 points is a bunch. Chuck going throwing it at 35 to 7 up there. Didn't make me feel great about my pick, but I'm sticking with Houston Texans plus 14. Buffoon. I like that. They find a way. Okay, you call me whatever you want. They're going to find a way to figure it out. Easy, dude. I did. Yeah, calm I'm down. Buffoon. He doesn't want to fight you. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do, no, fight I'm me? Good. You remember when he said, what are you going to do, fight oh, okay. me? Okay, fight me. Man. I forgot about that. I forgot about him saying that. You can't, you can't just pick up two cards and make them both Trump. What are you going to do? Wait, fight me, fight me? Uh, <laughs> you Is got, that what I mean, we're doing on a plane? You want to take us outside? <laughs> we're going to fight on a plane? Way off. Is that what you're we're going to do, AJ? Off. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, AJ. AJ, whatever game you want to play. That was an awesome. That was an awesome, like, 20 minutes. You asked me to play. I wanted to go sit in the back and maybe just hang out, and you guys asked me to play, and then you get have problems with how I play. <laughs> you know, we didn't know what we were signing up for. We didn't know what we were signing up for. We apologize. You do make it entertaining, though. Oh, yeah. Because there's no way anybody else plays cards the way you play cards. No way. I assume you've been kicked out of plenty of cards games. Yeah. <laughs> I assume that's the way it goes. <laughs> but you like the Texans. Darius, are you on AJ's side, or are you on Chuck's side? 14 point spread on a primetime game a is a lot of points but for a primetime matchup. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I mean, Ooh. this is one in what, yep. 30, 32. Uh, give, me, give me the Eagles with the points. Eagles minus okay. 14. Darius is on Chuck with the side, Eagles yep. minus 14. Can we put up the standings between me and AJ on our weekly picks? Uh, what we what is currently taking place and how we're doing? Because every Thursday is obviously the start yep. of our entire weekend slate. This has been something we have done here for the last few years. This is a segment, if you will, that we run. I'm currently three, two, and okay. three. You've won the last, like, three, three weeks, I feel like. Yeah. Was- this is what happened last season, too, if you do recall. You started out the first four. You were very hot. Oh, yeah. I'm due. I am due. Well, that's what happened last season. I had a little bit of a run, and then you had a little bit of a run. And we're like eight and seven, seven and eight, seven and six, six and seven, yeah. every single – it makes no sense how we're so, like, kind of close. Three ties is absurd. Yeah, it's bananas. But <laughs> I will say, give me the Eagles. Fucking let's go. Yep. Yeah, but give me the Eagles. Yep. So we're, we're either starting tonight 0 1 or 1 0, you and I, as we look at week nine of the NFL season, in which we're allowed to use graphics and logos again. Woo. We are very, very thankful for that situation. Big thanks to NFL Films. Big thanks to Darius Butler for your work the last two days. You have crushed it for us, pal. Yeah, Big thanks to Chuck Pagano with Coach P's Keys. Von Miller has become an incredible treat every single Thursday. Can't thank him enough for joining us. TVG Mike, Breeders' Cup this weekend. Same with Bruce, Dirty, Bill, Phil, everybody in the back. I can't thank you all enough. Hell of a fucking week. Tomorrow I'll be live from Georgia. Oh, yeah. 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 Georgia. 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 Spending on my... One verse three. That's a big deal. Huge. Yeah. Pump for that game. One verse three is going to be massive. Jeez. Can't wait. That to place will be on fire. Yeah. They will be juiced. They announced the picker yet? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know who the picker is. Georgia. Ooh. Should be, be ugly. Zach Brown? I don't know. Zach yeah. Brown is down in Atlanta. He is awesome. a Georgia guy, isn't yeah, he? No, Atlanta's not. He just did the Tom National Green Champ. Champ. Ooh. All right. Let's, uh, I don't know who it's going to be. I'm excited to find out as well. And uh, we'll be back Tyler Perry? Okay. Oh, He's a compound oh, down yeah. there. Did you just want to get in the fact that Tyler Perry has a compound down there? So you just he figured. has a whole movie, a movie studio that was like an old army <laughs> barrack that he made into a studio. The guy's amazing. What about I agree. Gambino? Are sure. we just thinking of people from Atlanta? Yeah, yeah I thought AJ was going to yes. say the CEO of Chick Fil A. That's it. Coca Cola is down there too. Yeah. I think. Coca Cola. Waffle House. Home Depot. Uh, maybe Ar- Arthur Blank. Home Depot. Oh yeah, Arthur Blank. Maybe, maybe. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. Come back home, Matty yeah. Ice. Yeah, he's got nothing oh. to do this weekend. A lot of Georgia Bulldogs Go that they can pick from. I'm excited to see who it is, the guest picker. Going to be an electrifying weekend. I'm so lucky to be a part of it. And I'm also so lucky that the man, A.J. Hawk, drives over every single Friday to host the show. I'll be calling in. You all will crush it. Let's have an incredible weekend. Let's win all of our bets, except for you tonight. Let's win all of our bets this weekend. Let's take all the FanDuel's money, and let's come back on Overreaction Monday and have the greatest Monday in history. Thank you all so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.